Hello friends. This is Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto gained new powers from the Hyogaku, Naruto XDBZX Bleach? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Six-year-old Naruto Namikaze was currently climbing a mountain. Not just any mountain, but the Hokage Monument. With one arm tied behind his back. Now this is an extreme jonin exercise so why would this six-year-old be doing this? To test himself. To see if he can go beyond his so-called parents. Ever since Naruto and his twin sister Mito, who was a minute younger than him were born they were cursed. Or well he was cursed. His sister got everything she wanted, no matter what. While he was ignored, all the time. Now let's take a step back and find out why he was being ignored all the time. Six years ago. Are you sure Serutobi? I can do it. Minato said holding his newborn children. He was currently riding on top of Gamabunta's head with his predecessor, the Sandame Hokage Hiruzen Serutobi standing next to him. Yes I'm positive. I can't ask you to abandon your children and wife. I will seal the soul and chakra into the young ones. I wish to join my wife and these bones are too old for fighting any longer. Hiruzen smiled. Minato looked away and nodded. Thank you for everything old man. Minato smiled sadly. Hiruzen nodded before casting the Shikifuan and summoning the Shinigami. Both men glared into the eyes of the nine-tailed fox that attacked their home not paying attention to the Shinigami who was looking at the blonde-haired boy. I sense great hidden power within this boy. Could he be the first? The Shinigami asked while looking at Minato and his eyes widened. How is this possible? Could have they really come to this distant planet? His power is dormant and may not awaken but this boy. His sister doesn't have the same but can be just as strong. The Shinigami nodded before gazing at Naruto and awakening his power the baby cried. The Shinigami smiled inwardly at the baby's wail. That wail held power. Great power. Turning its head the Shinigami sighed before sealing the soul of Kayubi into the baby Naruto and the chakra into Mito. Out of the corner of its eye the Shinigami saw something wave and tore it off the baby Naruto but made sure he kept his power. Sighing in satisfaction the Shinigami took away Hiruzen's soul for it to be judged by Kami. Minato sighed in relief now that it was over, though he never noticed his son's hair gain black strands. An hour later Minato told the village what happened and how his daughter saved the village by having the demon's chakra sealed within her and the soul into Naruto. Both parents were happy to be a family and continued on with their lives. Four years later, Father, are you gonna train me too? The four-year-old Naruto asked with a huge grin. He has been waiting forever for his father to train him and his beloved little sister. Mito who was by his side was also smiling waiting to train with her Aniki. Hmm. No I will just be training Mito, Minato said. Naruto looked confused as did his sister. Hun, what about me father? Naruto asked. I need to train Mito because she needs to learn how to control the Kyubi's chakra. I'll train you when you enter the academy, Minato said. But what does that have to do with me? Naruto yelled. Naruto, watch your tone and apologize to your father. After go to your room, Kashina said walking towards them. Naruto looked bewildered while his father waited. Too san can't Naruto ni kun train with me? I want him to get strong too. Mito smiled at her big brother who was surprised. His little sister wanted to train with him. Naruto gave a small grin before looking at his father who sighed. Fine, we can. Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, never mind. Have fun Mito chan. Naruto forced a smile at her before walking off. Ni san, she called after him. Both of his parents looked on with disinterest while Mito was confused. Didn't he want to train with her? She felt alone right now because she and her brother did everything together. When they were babies they even slept in the same crib and if they didn't Naruto would cry till his parents put him with his sister. They were inseparable. She always felt safe around her Aniki. She didn't know why but she was a little mad at her parents but shrugged off. As Naruto walked away he glared at his parents back with little hatred before catching his sister's worried gaze. Naruto's heart lightened and gave her a grin. Mito smiled at him with a nod before going back to her parents who were none the wiser at what happened. 
Naruto continued back to his room with a smile. It was always his little sister that cheered him up when he was down. But soon his smile became a frown. Mito got everything she wanted. When they would go out for dinner they would choose her suggestion over his. Mito would sense his feelings and offer him a chance to choose. Naruto took that chance once and regretted it. His parents seemed agitated but he didn't care as he had fun with Mito. But then he never got the chance or wanted to choose dinner again. He also noticed how the villagers liked his sister more than him and his parents were no different. They would see her as a hero while he was just the soul. Shaking his head he went to bed. Present that night was the night he met Kayubi for the first time. At first she was stubborn but after she saw his memories she opened up to him. That's right. The Kayubi no Yoko was a female. Not that he minded. Since that day she trained him. He also trained himself which he was doing right now. Since his parents wouldn't help him he would take matters into his own hands. However he couldn't wear weights since it would stunt his growth but the training exercises he did made up for it. The boy was more interested in taijutsu than anything but that didn't mean he didn't try ninjutsu. He worked on his chakra control which was at best mid chunin level. He was also a fuinjutsu specialist. His level was intermediate but he was learning. No thanks to his father or godfather who also took a liking to his beloved sister. Since that incident their relationship didn't wane in fact it got stronger if that was even possible. Mito started hanging out with him more and wanted to skip training to play with him but he told her she needed to get strong so they could protect each other. That was the only reason she continued training to help her Aniki. His parents took notice but didn't comment on it. Whenever they went out as a family Naruto would be behind them glaring at their backs while they paid attention to Mito. Not in any way shape or form was he jealous or felt angry at his sister. He just wished he was paid more attention also. But the only attention he received were glares and beatings from the villagers his father protected. He could beat them back but just withstood using it as training his endurance and giving him another reason to hate the village and his parents. He had few friends very few. Sayuri Uchiha who was the younger sister of his brother figure Itachi Uchiha. Both children of the clan head Fugaku Uchiha and his wife who was his mother figure Makoto. He really didn't mind Fugaku and Fugaku didn't mind him. When they saw each other they just gave nods and kept moving. Makoto treated him like his mother should have. He actually started calling her Ka-san much to her joy. Next to Mito, Sayuri was his best friend. She was the first person in the academy who accepted him since he was always quiet and never talked to anyone besides his sister who was outgoing. The whole class loved her while he was a bug. The only person seeing potential in Naruto was Aruka Yumino the class teacher. Naruto flipped on top of the Shodime head and untied his arm and sat down looking at the village with his emotionless eyes. Tomorrow was his birthday, a day he hated the most because he was ignored. Mito received a batch full of gifts from everybody while he received a couple and they were half-assed at that. The festival was also tomorrow, something he won't be attending. Every time he went with his family, he was ignored and unwanted. Shaking his head he grabbed a towel from his back pocket and wiped the sweat of his body. He was currently shirtless only wearing a pair of black shorts and with ankle gauze wrapped around well, his ankle. Standing up he walked down the mountain using chakra and made his way to the Namikaze compound. Kashina Namikaze was currently cooking dinner for her family. She didn't know why but she felt empty. She looked to the side at the family picture. She smiled then frowned a little at seeing her son. He was a little bit away from the family with a frown on his face that would put Fugaku to shame. He was looking at the camera with emotionless eyes with the most perfect impassive face ever. She was broken from her thoughts when Naruto walked into the house. He had his orange tank top while holding his arm. If she looked closely he was also limping. He walked in the kitchen not even sparing her a glance or acknowledgement. Naruto are you okay? She asked. I'm fine. Naruto said quickly and went upstairs to his room. She frowned at the tone and frowned even further when his door was slammed shut. She went back to doing the dishes thinking about her son and how it seemed he wasn't part of the family and didn't smile unless it was at Mito. Mom, is Naruto ni home? Mito asked walking inside. Yes, why weren't you with him? She asked. Well he didn't come to the academy today. I was worried, Mito said. The girl had grown since her training started. Her hair was as red as her mother's and long too, 
so she kept it in a ponytail. She was an inch shorter than her brother and still had some baby fat. He didn't go to school. Naruto, she called. The boy heard his name and walked downstairs. Hi Mito-chan. Naruto grinned at her making her smile then frown. Big brother how come you didn't go to school with me? She asked. Naruto gazed at her his smile gone. Because school is a waste of time, he said seriously. What is a waste of time? Minato asked walking in the room. Your son, didn't go to school today. Kashina said not knowing the quick glare the boy sent her, but Mito did and she frowned further. You didn't, so what were you doing? Minato asked. Naruto looked at him and unbandaged his arm much to everyone's confusion. What they saw made their eyes widened. Naruto had a serious burn on his arm and if they looked closely he was also bruised. I was taken out of school by those people you call villagers. They did this. Is that good enough for you? Naruto asked with a half glare. Naruto. Kashina whispered in worry. Naruto glanced at her and bandaged his arm back and walked off. This is nothing. He muttered going back to his room. Minato was confused. His son just walked away from them like it was normal. He had been worried all day about Naruto being different than everyone else. And he was right. His son was different. I'm going to see if big brother is okay. Mito said walking off. When she was gone Kashina returned to the dishes. I talked to Jiraiya today. Minato said. Oh, what did the pervert want? Kashina asked with a raised eyebrow. He wanted Mito to sign the toad contract, Minato said. Kashina eyes widened and looked at Minato demanding answers. Minato nodded and told her what happened. Flashback. The fourth Hokage was sitting at his desk filling paperwork. But not just any paperwork, the paperwork that concerned the villagers and his son. He didn't tell his wife because he she would get mad so he kept it to himself for now and knew Naruto had been doing the same. He had no choice but to let them go and charge a fee. Minato just hoped his son would forgive him and the villagers would move on. Yo Gaki. A voice said from behind. What is it Aero Senen? I'm busy. Minato said not looking away from his work. Jiraiya grumbled about no respect and spoke. I talked with the toads. They told me about the child of the prophecy and I think it's Mito. Jiraiya said. What about Naruto? Minato asked. Well has he talked to the Kayubi? Jiraiya asked. I don't know. I don't what that boy is thinking anymore. When he was younger he was an open book but now it seems he shut off all connections. He doesn't even acknowledge our presence, just Mito, Minato said sadly. Well at least he didn't meet it yet. Wouldn't you want him to meet it as a child or older? Anyway can I let her sign it? Jiraiya asked. Minato nodded. Jiraiya grinned and left for research. When the old pervert was gone he turned back to his desk and smiled at his family picture which was on his desk. He thought about his family and how happy they were. He looked closely and saw that Naruto wasn't smiling or anything. He looked, dead. As he gazed at the picture he remembered all the times his son asked for something but they ignored him and asked Mito what she wanted. The dinner requests became less frequent since his request was granted before they just stopped. Naruto would not show his face in the house instead being in his room or outside somewhere. At dinner time he would be so focused on his food unless Mito asked him something but when he was gonna reply he or Kashina would interrupt and ask Mito instead. The girl would get mad at them and ask Naruto again but he would just ignore her and leave. He cursed himself that he would treat one of his children better than the other. Packing up his stuff he went home vowing to be a better father to Naruto. Flashback end. So you also think Naruto isn't a part of the family, Kashina said. Minato nodded at her which made her sullen. Looking back at the picture she remembered how when the family went out Naruto would be a couple feet behind them. Or when he came home he didn't say hi or anything and just dropped his stuff and left the house. When she did see him he was reading which was good since Mito started to take reading seriously since her big brother by a minute was doing it. Snapping out of her thoughts Minato said, after his birthday I'll start his training, Minato said. Oh he would love that. Kashina smiled. I hope you will. Minato smiled. Kashina smiled before asking with a frown. Minato what are we gonna do about? Wait did you know about this? About Naruto getting hurt by the villagers? She asked in a heated tone. Minato looked away making her eyes widened. How dare you? How dare you hide? Naruto did the same thing. He didn't even tell me about it. Minato replied. 
Yes but I'm his mother, I should know if something like that happens, Kashina yelled. The two continued to argue till dinner was ready. As Naruto came down he noticed that his parents were smiling at him while his sister had that grin on her face not that he minded that but his parents were another story. Narrowing his eyes he grabbed his long sleeved jacket zipped it up and walked off, I'm going out, he said making everyone's eyes widen. Naruto where are you going? Kashina asked, out, he said heatedly, what about dinner? Mito asked. Naruto stopped and looked over his shoulder. I'll eat at the Uchiha's. Naruto said walking off not sparing them a glance. Minato and Kashina were in shock while Mito looked away sadly. But everyone perked up when Naruto came back and unzipped his jacket and sat in his seat. I forgot that Makoto-chan is cooking sushi for Sayuri. Eeyu. Naruto shuddered while eating his food. Minato was about to comment on his son's near absence but pretended it didn't even happen as did Kashina, for now. Mito-chan. What was the lesson Uruka sensei had? Naruto asked. Mito smiled and answered. He was teaching us about the parts of chakra and elements. Mito said. Then it was a waste of time, Naruto said. Hoping to get his son talking more he said, what are the lessons still boring? Yes, Naruto said simply. Well the theory is quite, number. You misunderstand. The lesson is a waste. It's a waste because I already know it. Along with the rest of the year. Naruto said wiping his mouth and standing up. He put his plate into the sink and started to wash before Kashina said, It's okay Naruto I can wash it. She smiled, I know, but don't want to be a bigger burden that's all. Naruto said not even looking at her. After he was done wiping his hands he kissed Mito's forehead and headed out. Now I'm leaving. Naruto closed the door leaving a shocked Minato and Kashina. Mito sighed before finishing her food. I'm going to bed she said and walked away. The next morning was greeted with the Namikaze family sitting in the living room for a meeting. Bogus. That's what Naruto thought. Instead of sitting in between his sister and mother he leaned against the wall with his arms crossed. Good morning everyone. I want to say happy birthday to both of you. Also Naruto your mother and I will be starting your training tomorrow. Minato said hoping this would work as did Kashina. Mito sat there looking at her brother knowing this was far from working. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the ground. Train me. Now of all times you decide to train me. I refuse. Naruto said with a glare. Hun. Minato sputtered. I refuse. Why would I want your training when I can train myself? Something that I have been doing for the last two years. Continue to train Mito. Naruto growled before walking off. Kashina was in tears while Minato looked away, ashamed with himself. Mito on the other hand felt pity but not for her brother. But for her parents, she tried to stop this but a seven-year-old can only do so much. Naruto walked out of the compound grumbling with a glare. How dare they try and teach him when he bugged them but chose his sister instead. It infuriated him to no end. As he was walking Naruto tripped over something. Rubbing away his pain he looked at what he tripped over. On the ground was a bluish kind of orb which seemed to glow. For some reason he felt drawn to it and picked it up. As he kept holding it, it felt as if he was getting stronger. Hyu-chan, do you know what this is? Naruto asked. I have no clue Naruto-kun. But your power is increasing just by touching it. I want you to hold it to your chest. Kayubi ordered. Naruto nodded and held it to his chest. To his and Kayubi's surprise the rock phased through him like it was some kind of ghost. What the hell? He gasped. I can't see it anywhere. Hyu Chan do you know? Naruto asked. I do. It is in your body. B. Looks like it found its new container. A voice said. Naruto looked up to see a woman with white hair and piercing violet eyes. She was wearing black Hakama S and a white tank top that showed her generous bust that was at least a D cup bordering on DD. What do you mean container? What was that thing? Naruto demanded. Calm down Naruto. That rock you were holding was called the Hyogaku. The woman said. Hyogaku. What does it do? And why me? Naruto wondered while Kayubi was trying to ponder on who this person was. She had a feeling but couldn't put her finger on it. The Hyogaku grants a person's deepest desires and brings power. It only chooses people who want power but for the right reasons. You were the first on this planet since I came here. The woman explained. So it could tell I wanted power hun. What's the catch? 
Naruto narrowed his eyes. You're smart aren't you? The catch is you come with me for training when you pass your genin exam. There I can train you. She said. Naruto eyes lightened up at that. Someone was willing to train him besides Kayubi. He asked Itachi but the Uchiha was way too busy to train him, even though he really wanted to. There was no way he was asking his parents anymore. Naruto thought about the pros and cons. The good side was he would leave this stupid village and become more powerful while the bad side was he would leave Sayuri, Itachi, Makoto and worst of all. Mito. Naruto sighed this would be hard on her the most. But he couldn't stay here. We'll come back for her. The woman said guessing on what he was thinking. Naruto looked up at her. Her power is dormant but if we train her later she can become as powerful as you. But I want you. We will come back for her later. She said. Naruto nodded. Then I accept. Naruto said. The woman grinned at him. I'm glad Naruto-kun. By the way you can call me Rika. Meet me at the valley of the end in six years when you pass your genin test. Oh here is a gift from me. Train with it. Become one because it is a part of your soul. Rika said putting her palm against his chest. She drew it back and what followed was a black katana. Naruto eyes widened at how long it was. Once she was done pulling it out she handed it to him. The blade itself was black and at least 8 inches. The cross guard was a black swastika. Naruto gripped the red grip that was on the 4 inch long hilt. At the end of the hilt was a chain of 9 links. This is your weapon, your soul slayer. Rika smiled. Naruto was so surprised he didn't even register was he just said but Rika did. Zanjetsu. He breathed. Rika nodded. Train with it Naruto. Meet me in six years and your power will be ready to burst. Now I must go. Happy birthday Naruto-kun. Rika smiled before vanishing. Naruto looked up to not see the person who gave him this awesome present. Naruto. Go home and come into the seal. We need to talk. Kayubi said in an urgent voice. Naruto raised a brow but shrugged. Darn I don't have a sheath. Naruto muttered before his eyes a black sheath encased his sword. Naruto grinned before getting some long thick string and tying the sword to his back. Nodding satisfaction Naruto ran home to talk with his inner best friend. When he arrived home he passed by his parents who caught a glimpse of his new weapon. Naruto. Minato called. Naruto stopped and walked backwards to face them. Yes. He asked in annoyance. That sword where did you? It was a present from a friend. Now if you excuse me I'll be in my room. Naruto said in a cold tone before walking away muttering about something incoherent. What are we gonna do about him Minato? He hates us. Kashina asked with tears falling from her face. We try and bring him back. We've neglected him too long. We will do anything to get him back. Minato said. Okay. But first we must get ready for the party. Kashina smiled wiping her eyes. They both nodded and got started. Naruto was sitting on the floor Indian style while his new sword was resting on his lap. His arms were folded and his head was down trying to concentrate. After a few minutes he entered the seal. Opening his eyes he was not where he thought he was. His mindscape was a green field for Kayubi not some rural city. What the hell is this? Naruto demanded. So you are my new partner. I must say you resemble Ichigo a lot. But I think it's because you are his reincarnation no matter if you are from a different planet. A voice said. Naruto whipped around to see a tall middle-aged man with long black hair and with unkempt facial hair. He was wearing a white undershirt with a tall collar with a black overcoat over it along with a gray pair of combat boots, and a black pair of S with a dark pair of narrow sunglasses covering his eyes. Hey I know you, you're Zanjetsu. Naruto pointed. Yes I am, it is nice to meet you after so long Naruto Namikaze. Zanjetsu said noticing a flash of hate from the surname. I would say the same but I don't know you. But how do you know me and who is this Ichigo person? Naruto asked. Zanjetsu nodded before waving his hand. Behind Naruto was a screen full of Ichigo's fights from when his mother died to when he killed Aizen. Not that long ago on a planet that is similar to yours called Earth Ichigo Kurosaki and his friends were dragged into a spiritual war. This is the result. Please view his memories. Zanjetsu said. Naruto nodded and gave his full attention. For two hours he watched everything his incarnation has been through. And how he killed Sosuke Aizen and died along with his friends. 
When it all ended Naruto turned to Zanjetsu with a serious face. How can I be his reincarnation if he is from a different planet as you say? It makes no sense, Naruto said. Reincarnations are made everywhere. For example your reincarnation could be made two galaxies away from where you were born. The bottom line is you're a new Ichigo but you are your own person. The Hyogaku can bring you your dormant power. And I will help you. Zanjetsu explained. Naruto sighed this was too much to bear and put on one kid. Reincarnation. Normally he wouldn't believe it but he has a giant fox sealed into his gut and his species can do stuff normal people would never believe. I comma I believe you Zanjetsu. Naruto said. Good this makes things easier. Kayubi said walking up from behind. So you believe this too hun? Naruto muttered. Yup. So from now on you just won't be training under me, but under Zanjetsu as well. That way you will be able to use him correctly. You better go. Someone wants to speak to you. Kayubi said. They can wait. Naruto said. It's your sister. Kayubi said. Naruto sighed before leaving the two alone. Are you sure it is wise to leave him to me? He may not come out in one piece. Zanjetsu smirked. Yes, but there is something I must take care of. Kayubi said with a faraway look. Oh and what is that may I ask? Zanjetsu wondered. Naruto may be Ichigo's reincarnation but I don't need it to be another moody kid. Naruto has locked away his true personality when his parents started to neglect him from his sister. I think it's time to release it. Kayubi said. Yes, Ichigo was a bit emo and I hate to have another partner like that. But release it when the time comes. I think he should keep this personality till it is time for departure. Zanjetsu suggested. Kayubi nodded. Yeah, I'll just loosen it then. She smirked before vanishing leaving Zanjetsu alone. Are you gonna come out now? Zanjetsu asked to no one. So you're Zanjetsu. It will be fun to see what he can do. A rough voice said. It reminded Zanjetsu of Hollow Ichigo's voice. So you're his inner Hollow then? Zanjetsu asked facing another Naruto. This Naruto's skin was pure white while his hair was black with white strands here and there. His sclera was black as was his pupils while his irises was gold. He wore the typical Arankar outfit except his sleeves were rolled up and his jacket was part way unzipped letting Zanjetsu see the gothic number zero on the right side of his chest even though it was barely. Last what annoyed Zanjetsu to no end was the arrogant smirk. The same smirk Hollow Ichigo used to wear. Most of his mind is in your control. What do you hope to gain? Zanjetsu smirked. Actually I'm not really in control I just control his dark thoughts and turn it into power. Naruto said. Why are you here? Zanjetsu asked with narrowed eyes. I just came to see if he was really gonna gain power. But I will fight for his body soon and destroy this planet. Naruto laughed while fading away. Zanjetsu was troubled. His inner hollow shouldn't be here unless he already existed in some other form. Then he came to the conclusion of Dark Naruto. He guessed when he revealed Naruto's connection with Ichigo to Naruto transformed into Naruto. With that he started to go deeper into his thoughts. Meanwhile Naruto opened his eyes to see his sister in front of him with curious eyes. Nisan what are you doing? Mito asked. Naruto stared at her for a couple of seconds before falling back comically. Ah, Mito, you can't be in someone's face when they first wake up. Naruto pointed at her. Mito giggled. Sorry Naruto ni, she said. I sweat you and Sayuri chan are one in the same. Naruto grumbled. Anyway what is it? He wondered. Well mother and father wanted me to tell you to get dressed we're going to the Hyugas for, sorry not coming. I got plans. Naruto cut her off. But Nisan, why won't you come with us? Hanada will be there, she said. That weak Hyuga girl, why do I care if she's there or not? Naruto said coldly. Hun, is that what you think of her? She asked in disbelief. Of course, and tell her to stop stalking me. It makes it harder for me to train when she does. Naruto said. But she likes you, how can you say something like that? Mito asked. Because I can, and so what? I don't like her. If she wants to get my attention in a good way tell her to stop that stuttering nonsense. It's unfitting for a future clan head. Naruto said. By this time Kashina and Minato were outside the door listening in. So she can act like you. You're gonna be clan head soon also. Mito yelled. You think I want to. 
I hate this stupid clan and village. Why the hell would I want to be clan head when I'm rejected by my own family? If I had the choice I would burn everything to the ground. Now get out, Naruto yelled. Mito stared in shock as tears started to fall from her eyes. You hate us, she whispered. Naruto turned away from her. Leave Mito, Naruto said coldly making her flinch before running out the room. Kashina went after her daughter tears falling down her face as well. Minato stayed by the door with an ashamed expression. Why are you outside my door? Do you need something? Naruto asked in that calm yet cold voice. No just get dressed we're leaving in ten. Minato said walking off. Naruto sighed in annoyance before grabbing some clothes. He felt bad at yelling at Mito but she was annoying him to no end. But it was true. He hated this small clan of four people. Well he hated his, parents. His sister he would always protect. But he also hates the village. After getting dressed he looked into the mirror. He narrowed his eyes as he saw some of his bangs with black strands and his hair was a still blonde but more black than before. He wondered what was happening to him but shrugged off thinking it was the Hyogaku. He inspected his clothing. It wasn't like the kimono his father wore. Far from it in fact. He wore black sandals with black SA mesh shirt and a short orange jacket. He messed with his hair to make it more messy. Nodding to himself he left his room to see his sister was wiping her eyes. But she had a red kimono on with blue swirls. Her hair was let down like Kashina's. He refused to call her his mother. That was for Makoto. He passed her by without a word and went downstairs. He noticed Minato was wearing a traditional white kimono but stitched to his back was Namikaze. Kashina wore the same kimono Mito wore. Naruto why are you wearing that? Kashina asked noticing her son's clothing. Naruto glanced at her before leaning against a wall with his eyes closed and arms folded. Because I refuse to wear the same thing he wears. It ridicules. A Saiyan should always be ready for battle. Naruto said before his eyes snapped open. What the hell did he just say? Saiyan, how did he? Naruto where are you going? Minato wondered as Naruto ignored him and rushed to the bathroom. He slammed the door shut and locked the door. Going through some hand signs he placed a sound barrier. As soon as it was done he screamed in pain as the lower part of his body started to hurt. Ah, Naruto screamed matching the same screams Naruto was going through. Kayubi and Zanjetsu watched in confusion while above in the heavens a certain white-haired woman smiled in glee. It was happening. Naruto screamed once again in more pain before his body shook and something shot out of the back part of his s right above his butt. Naruto fell to the ground as he started to. What the hell was that? He asked. He slowly stood up and something knocked over the soap dispenser. Looking in confusion he picked it back up and turned and caught something brown. What the? He muttered before high eyes widened as he saw a brown tail. What the hell is this? Naruto screamed as he grabbed the tail and grunted in pain. He let go of the tail as the pain went away. So if someone grabs my tail then I hurt. Naruto guessed. How the hell was he gonna explain this to the two adults outside when he didn't know what happened his damn self? But he guessed it came with saying he was a Saiyan, whatever that is. Sighing to calm himself down his tail wrapped around his waist like a belt. After getting rid of everything to the bathroom he left to see his, parents, looking at him curiously. Bathroom, let's go, Naruto ordered leaving the house. The parents sighed before looking at Mito who was sad. They all left the house following Naruto, but soon he was following them ignoring all the glares by sending his own amount of glares and ki. The four traveled to the Hyuga compound where they were greeted by Hiyashi himself. Minato, I'm glad you came. Hiyashi smiled. Minato nodded with his own smile while Kashina turned to her kids. You two go and play. We will leave in a while. Kashina smiled. Mito nodded while Naruto had other plans. Excuse me Hiyashi-sama, is there anywhere I can train? Naruto asked politely. Yes, just go straight and make a right. There will be some training space. Hiyashi informed. Thank you. Naruto bowed before walking off. He is quite the looker isn't he? Seems he can't stop training either. Reminds me of you Minato. Hiyashi joked. No, he doesn't. Not at all. Minato sighed before setting up his false smile and continued with the party. While Kashina stared after her son in sadness, she would check on him in a few hours or so. 
It's been an hour and Naruto was meditating learning all there was need to know about Soul Reaper power. Zanjetsu would start teaching him Shunpo. Something that was much faster than Minato's Horaishin no Jutsu. As soon as the lesson was over Naruto opened his eyes and was immediately aware of his surroundings. It's rude to spy on someone Hinata. Naruto said in a cold voice making the hidden girl flinch. Naruto stood and began stretching when Hinata showed herself. N Naruto kun, wya aren't you it, would you stop stuttering? It's annoying, how am I gonna hear what you're saying if you're stuttering and quiet? Speak up, Naruto glared, Hinata kept jumping every time he raised his voice and was hurt he would say that. No matter, I'm not at the party because I don't like parties, and second I didn't want to come anyway. I could be using this as training which you are interrupting. Naruto said. That's enough Naruto. Mito said. Naruto turned his glare to his sister making her tense a bit. What do you want? If it's to get her out of my face then hurry and do so. Naruto spat before turning around not expecting a rock to hit his head. Why did you throw that? Naruto glared. Stop being a meanie. Mito glared back. You're really testing my patience foolish little sister. Naruto said, Mito glared harder while Naruto had enough and sent his killer intent at her making her and Hinata freeze. Naruto, Kashina yelled upon feeling the small dose. Naruto turned his gaze at his mother and it increased making her freeze. She couldn't believe it, there was no way her little boy had this much killer intent at this age. Can I help you? Naruto asked, Kashina remained calm and stared back. Why are you treating your sister and friend this way? Kashina wondered not knowing she struck a nerve. Friend, friend, Naruto yelled making her step back a inch. What do you know about me having friends? Hun, Naruto yelled not knowing that his eyes flashed teal. You think you know everything about me because you conceived me. Is that it? News flash, I have one friend, and she isn't here right now. What makes you think I want to be friends with this weak Hyuga? Naruto glared his key rising by this time Hinata passed out and Mito was close to it. Gah, Naruto roared looking at the sky. He sighed as he calmed down. The night sky was really calming him down. Then he glanced at the quarter moon. He felt a rise in power but it died down. I'm going to the compound. Naruto said as he walked away. Naruto wait. Kashina called after him but he ignored her and kept walking. Hey what's going on? I heard yelling. Minato said. We're going home, Kashina said as she grabbed Mito's hand. What, but we, now, Kashina screamed tears falling from her eyes. Minato stepped back then came back just as quick. Does this have to do with Naruto? He asked. The woman flinched and turned away. I'm leaving, she said walking off. Minato sighed as Hinata stood up. H Hokage saw Sama. Does na Naruto kun H hate me? She asked wiping her eyes. Minato turned around to see she was crying. No, he is just angry at me and he doesn't hate you. Minato smiled. Hinata nodded satisfied with that answer. Minato sighed as he walked back home. The guests would be arriving soon and the festival already started. An hour later Naruto was leaning against the wall watching his sister open her batch full of presents. Naruto-kun, a voice called. Naruto turned his head to see Sayuri along with Itachi. Hey guys, Naruto grinned, happy birthday, I hope you like it. Sayuri handed it a wrapped gift while blushing. Naruto grinned at her while taking it. Thanks Sayuri-chan, Naruto grinned, this is from me, Itachi said giving Naruto a shirt with the Uchiha clan symbol on the back. Thanks Nisan, Naruto smiled. Naruto then opened Sayuri's gift to see it was a picture of them together. Unlike the other pictures in the house Naruto had a genuine grin and had his arm around Sayuri's shoulder. They took that picture a week ago. Sayuri was also smiling her long dark indigo hair pulled into a braid while she matched his grin. Thanks Sayuri-chan, Naruto hugged her making her blush. Without knowing it Naruto channeled some Reiatsu into her. Sayuri gained a warm feeling and started to hug him back. Hey everyone now it is time for Jiraiya's present. Minato called. Naruto let go of Sayuri and watched with narrowed eyes as the white-haired man walked over to Mito. Here ya go Mito, I'm allowing you to sign the toad contract so you can train under me. Jiraiya grinned, it grew bigger from hearing Tsunade growl. She was mad because she wanted Mito to sign the slug scroll. 
The guests were in awe that Jiraiya would allow that, even Naruto making him turn away and walk off. Itachi noticed this and wanted to go after him but saw his father walk off also. Mito signed the scroll next to her father's name and looked up. Hervey Grandad what about Naruto ni? Shouldn't he sign the scroll too? Mito asked. Jiraiya looked confused but remembered his talk with Minato. Yeah, want to go take it to him? He asked with a smile. Sure, I'm sure Nisan will be really happy. Mito grinned and went to look for her brother. Tsunade did as well, she wouldn't lose Naruto to the toad contract either. Naruto was sitting on the porch in the backyard looking at the night sky with a glare. Something troubling you kid, a gruff male voice asked. Naruto looked away and spotted Fugaku leaning against the wall with his eyes closed. No, is there something you need Fugaku-sama? Naruto asked politely, just wanted to give you your presence that's all. Fugaku shrugged, Naruto eyes widened. Hun, Naruto asked, what never heard of gifts? Fugaku joked with a smirk. No it's just that I didn't think you would give me one. Naruto said. Well I like ya kid. You got the spirit of an Uchiha and you make my daughter happy. Plus you don't annoy the hell out of me like your father. Fugaku muttered. Naruto smirked also. Thank you Fugaku-sama. Naruto bowed. Here, these are some fire jutsu from the clan. Use them well. See ya. Fugaku said giving three scrolls and left with a wave. Naruto smiled at the man's retreating figure and set aside the scrolls. Nisan. Mito called from behind the big scroll in her hands. Yes Mito what is it? Naruto asked. A pervy granddad wanted me to give you this. He wanted you to sign it also. Mito said pushing out the scroll. No thanks. I refuse to sign something because someone is guilty. Naruto said. Mito huffed. Brother would you just take the scroll already? She said forcefully. Get it away, Naruto yelled smacking it away while glaring at her. Mito stared with wide eyes tears about to spill. What is going on here? Tsunade asked, standing in front of them. Naruto turned his glare at her. What you want me to sign your stupid scroll to? No thanks, Naruto said walking off. Naruto where are you going? Tsunade asked in astonishment. Why are you such a jerk? Mito screamed making Naruto stop. Ever since they said no you've always been like this. You always put on that fake smile and act like you're not in pain. You were hateful to everybody but the Uchihas and me. Why can't you? Quiet, Naruto whispered his tone cold. You may be my little sister but you know nothing. You know nothing of the pain I have been through. Six years. Six years of neglect and now you all want to notice me. Fat chance. This village will burn to the ground sooner or later and when your precious Hokage can't save you then you will all perish. Naruto said darkly glaring directly at his father who was standing in front of him. Naruto closed his eyes and walked past going to his room. What is wrong with him? Tsunade asked in a whisper. Minato was frozen. That glare. That glare was made from pure hate. Looking over to his daughter Mito was silently sobbing. The whole house heard Naruto's speech and were taken back. Eventually they all jumped when someone came tumbling down the stairs. And stay out, Naruto yelled before his door slammed shut shaking the house. Even the door started to crack. Everyone looked to the person on the stairs. It was man wearing a chunin uniform. He eye was black his lips were swollen. Blood was oozing from his head and his right arm was twisted the wrong way. The only person to do this was Naruto. Everyone looked at Minato who was looking at the direction Naruto was. His family was breaking apart. It's been six years since he gained the Hyogaku. All he had to do was wait two more days till he got the hell out of here. He's been training non-stop and it seemed he got results. He grew at least two inches taller. His hair was not only blonde but blonde with black streaks running almost everywhere. His body put on some more weight due to him always working out. The muscles on his arms grew as much as they could for a 13 year old and he officially gained a six pack that was unnoticed unless he had his shirt off. However he was still lean not an overactive muscle builder as it would ruin his form. Now he was skilled with zanjetsu enough to nearly achieve bankai. And he was no pushover in kenjutsu that much was clear. He is able to take on three anbus in a kenjutsu match but what really was his forte was taijutsu. Ever since his seventh birthday he was interested in taijutsu. He took on more than one style. 
His recent favorite style was the Seru Ken, from the Serutobi clan. He also learned Ryu Ken. He was able to create moves from learning that style. It also helped he had fire, wind and lightning affinities. But there was something he was working on. Darkness affinity. Having hatred for his parents and the village allowed him to learn how to use it. There was one time that power tried to consume him but it didn't. He was strong enough to beat it away and gain full control over it. After doing that everything else was easy. He learned and mastered Shunpo also. Yup his power has grown. After the birthday incident he was able to make up with his sister and take back everything he said about her. She also forced him to apologize to Hinata which he did. But he wasn't apologizing on what he said more like how he said it. His parents weren't even in his radar. Even though they tried and still are to make it up to him which wasn't happening. He didn't care what stuff they gave him he still would never forgive them. Alright kids in tomorrow the graduation test will commence. I want all of you to practice and study hard so you can become genin. Dismissed. Uruka said. Naruto stood up and carried his bag over his shoulder and walked off. Nisan. Mito called. Naruto glanced behind him to see she was running towards him. Yeah, he asked in a bored tone. Are you going home? She asked. When you mean home the Namikaze compound? Then yeah, Naruto said. Great then we can walk together. She grinned. No way. I'm walking with Naruto-kun. Ino yelled. No way Ino pig. I'm walking home with Naruto-kun. Sakura yelled. Bill bored brow. Ino growled. Pig. Sakura growled back while lightning shot from their eyes. Would you two shut up? Everybody knows that I'm walking with Naruto-kun. Amy said. No way. Ino and Sakura yelled. A uh guy's Naruto-kun is already gone. Another fangirl pointed out making the three turn in his direction to see he was indeed gone. Naruto sighed as he and his sister walked to the compound. Ever since his eighth birthday he had to deal with the horror which were fangirls. They were the paperwork to the cage. You should be happy girls are noticing you. Mito giggled. Naruto glanced at her then forward. No, I can really care less right now. Naruto shrugged. Oh come on, every girl thinks you're hot. Even Sayuri. Mito grinned, and every boy thinks you're hot too. Have you ever noticed why the guys only look at you once then don't ever do it again? It's because, yeah I know. Mito cut him off. It was true, Mito was just an inch shorter than him. Her hair was now to her mid-back and wasn't in a braid. But that wasn't the main thing that got the boy's attention. It was her assets and her ass. She was now at least a high B or low C cup. No doubt probably from their mother. Her ass was also gained shape. It was no longer flat like it used to. It was now round. Her nice long legs also complemented it. Her outfit was no better. She wore a long sleeve orange blue zipper shirt and a black skirt that stopped at her thighs. She also wore black boots that stopped right below her knees. Naruto wore black anbu s with black sandals and black shin guards. Around his waist was an orange sash. He also wore a black sleeveless fishnet shirt under a fully unzipped orange high-collared tracksuit jacket. The jacket had black lines running down the arms. If he didn't have his jacket on he would have black forearm guards on. His hair was now like Minato's but he planned on changing that soon. Normally he would be sporting Zanjetsu on his back but couldn't bring it to school. The two finally made it back to the compound or home as Mito would call it. Mom we're home. Mito called. As she was setting down her backpack Kashina walked out of the kitchen. Hey kids how was school? She asked with a smile. Waste. Cool. They both said at the same time. Mito looked at her brother who was walking upstairs to his room. Well did you guys learn anything? Kashina asked hoping to get Naruto in the conversation. Well Uruka sensei said graduation was tomorrow. But it will be a piece of cake right brother? Mito asked as Naruto was walking to his room. HN, he said as his door closed. Mito rolled her eyes and saw her mom looked sullen. I still can't believe he doesn't forgive us. She said quietly. He will but you have to keep trying. Mito smiled softly. Naruto flopped on his bed his jacket covering the chair next to his desk. Sighing to himself he fell asleep waiting till dinner was ready. Naruto dinner's ready. Mito sad knocking on his door. A second later the door opened to reveal Naruto with bed hair. Mito blushed lightly at seeing his arms. 
Without a word Naruto made his way downstairs and sat in the seat he had since he was a little boy. Right next to his sister and across from his parents. Hey son, father, Naruto replied. Mito sat down next to him and they all started eating. Are you two ready for graduation? Minato asked. Yup, soon enough I'll become a genin. Mito grinned. H.N. Naruto said while chewing his food. Hey dad once we're genin we have a three-man team right? Mito asked. That's right. Minato nodded. Well then do you know who I'll be paired up with? Mito asked. Not really since I don't know who passed or not. Minato shrugged. Well I hope Sayuri and Naruto are on my team. Mito said. Naruto had his eyes closed as he kept eating. Who do you want on your team Naruto-kun? Kashina asked. I don't really care. As long as they're not weak and can hold their own then I'm fine. Naruto answered his eyes still closed. I think you will be paired up with Hinata and Kiba. Since you are the rookie of the year, Kiba's the dead last next to Shikamaru and Hinata is average. Mito summarized. H.N. Then we have a problem. Naruto said. What do you mean? Minato asked. This was good. Even though this was a bad topic at least they got their silent son talking more than a few words. Hinata was supposed to be the clan head of the Hyuga clan correct? And Kiba is the same for the Inazuka. Naruto stated. The parents didn't like where this was going but nodded anyway. I heard that Hanabi, Hinata's little sister is going to become the new clan head since her older sister is too weak and timid. Hiyashi said so himself. Naruto said still eating with his eyes closed. Man that's terrible. Hinata must be sad. Father isn't there and thing you can do it about it. Mito asked. Minato shook his head. Oh, well then how about soccer or Eno? Mito teased. Naruto stopped eating and glared at his sister. Don't even joke like that. He said seriously. Sakura as in Haruno. Kashina asked. Yeah. Mito said trying to avoid her brother's glare. Then she must be the daughter of Sakuya Haruno. And Ino is the daughter of Inoichi Yamanaka correct? Minato asked getting a nod from Mito. Then why is it a bad thing Naruto-kun? Kashina asked. Naruto turned his gaze at her and answered. I'll put it like this. I will take Hanada Hayuga any day over those simple-minded weak fan girls. Especially the billboard brow. I swear she must have her own orbit. Naruto muttered before standing and cleaning his plate at the sink. After he was done he dried his hands and turned to his family. I'm going to bed. Good night. Naruto said before leaving. Minato and Kashina sighed while Mito just shook her head. The next day Naruto was walking to the academy with his sister behind him. Sayuri was also next to her. The two were talking about the graduation test while Naruto was just silent. We'll pass for sure. Sayuri grinned. Yeah, then Uruka sensei will have no choice but to put us on the same team. Mito grinned. Sayuri nodded before looking at her secret crush. To be on the same team with Naruto is her dream. Naruto felt her stare but didn't comment instead quickly glanced at her. The girl had also grown. She was the same height as his sister. Her dark hair was to her mid-back while she had a bang covering her left eye. She had an hourglass figure also. Her ass wasn't like Mito's but her ass made up for it. She was at least a high C cup or low D cup. Not to mention long legs. She wore a tight blue short-sleeved shirt with tan shorts. Last were the silver shin guards. All right class settle down, Uruka ordered. They kept talking but when Naruto walked in the room everyone shut up and sat down. Uruka sighed in relief. Both girls behind him sat in their seats while Naruto stared among the seats none were open besides the one next to Hinata. Naruto stared impassively before looking at the seat which was in the back. Muttering to himself he walked over to that seat much to the Hyuga girl's disappointment. All right kids time for the written test. Take your time and good luck. Uruka smiled before passing out the tests. Five minutes later Naruto stood and handed in his test and went back to his seat. They all stared at him while he leaned against the back of the chair and closed his eyes. Forty-five minutes later the class turned in their tests and headed outside for the shuriken throwing test. One by one each student went till it was Mito's turn. She stepped up and threw all the shuriken in one go striking each target's center. She smirked while looking at her brother who was next. He stepped up and looked at it with a bored expression. He managed to get all the shuriken in one hand and flung them with a quick flick of the wrist. 
One thunk was heard as all the projectiles were in the dead center of the target. Naruto turned around put his hands in his pockets and walked off without a word. Later all the kids joined him in the room. He would have heard the muttering about his skills if he honestly cared. Naruto Namikaze please step up. Uruka called. Naruto stood and walked to the front. Please form a henge of the Hokage. Uruka said. Which one? Naruto asked. The fourth. Uruka answered. Naruto gave a short nod and without hand signs transformed to look like his father. Uruka looked impressed and checked him off. Now do a henge of someone of your choice. Uruka said. Naruto nodded once again and transformed to Ichigo. Good. But may I ask who is this? Uruka asked. Someone I've known for a long time. Naruto said in Ichigo's voice before reverting back to normal. All right then. The clone jutsu please. Uruka said. Naruto nodded and formed ten shadow clones without hand signs. What in the world? Naruto are those? Yes. Cage Bushin. Naruto answered. Okay please do the substitution. Uruka said. Naruto sighed but did it anyway replacing himself with Kiba who was picking his nose. After he realized what happened he blushed from embarrassment. Go back to your seat nose picker. Uruka smirked. Kiba nodded and gave a glare to Naruto who ignored it and walked back down. All right then. Here is your headband congrats. Uruka smiled. Naruto picked the black headband and stared at it with an impassive gaze. If things were different, thank you sensei. Naruto bowed before tying the thing to his neck and went back up and gave a small smile to his grinning sister who was sporting it on her forehead. Mom were home and were graduates. Mito grinned. Kashina came downstairs and smiled at her children she was surprised when Naruto didn't rush upstairs like always but chose instead to lean against the wall. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you too. Kashina grinned. She noticed Naruto had a far away look and guessed he was thinking about something very deeply. Yeah, Naruto knee was even better than me. You should have seen him. He threw the shuriken with one hand easily and made shadow clones and, wait. Shadow clones. How did you learn those Naruto? She asked. Naruto glanced at her. Kayubi. Was all he said making her freeze while her daughter tensed. Kayubi. You can talk to it. She asked. It's not an it mother. It's a she. And yes I can. Ever since father neglected my training. Naruto said coldly. Naruto sighed and went upstairs. When he came back he had Zanjetsu strapped to his back. I'm going out. Don't wait up. With that he left the house. Its signature is close. Tell me again Zanjetsu why they exist on this planet. Naruto mentally asked. Hollows exist everywhere Naruto. As long something can die it's possible. Plus the species on your planet are nearly exactly like humans except you use chakra in large doses. Zanjetsu answered. Naruto sighed as he landed on a roof and crouched down while glaring at the group of hollows looking for food. This is where you die for real. Naruto muttered before jumping of the building while unsheathing his sword. On his way down Naruto vertically slashed a hollow's mask making it vanish. The other hollows turned their attention to him as he stood glaring at them. Why are there so many? Naruto thought. He had to deal with some this morning at the crack of dawn. Now he had these. One of the hollows lunged at him but before it could even roar it was beheaded by Naruto. The others roared before charging him as well. He smirked before gripping his Zanpakuto tighter and spun around while slashing. After five minutes Naruto was alone before he felt something very wrong. Snapping his head to the sky he saw a garganta open revealing three manos which stepped out into his world. What the hell? Zanjetsu. Naruto ordered. Think Naruto. Those are Mano's grande. They will be hard to defeat. Zanjetsu said. Naruto glared at them before jumping from building to building and stood right in front of one's face. Hey you bastard. Go back. Naruto yelled. The Mano's looked at him before opening its mouth to launch a sero. Naruto's eyes widened before leaping back. Getsuga Tensho. Naruto yelled launching his attacks at the hollow. The sero stopped while its face was being bombarded by the dark slashes. Naruto kun behind you, Kayubi warned. Naruto glanced behind him and dodged the Sero that hit the Manos he was dealing with before. As soon as he was out of the way he flew higher into the sky. Getsuga Rukin. Naruto yelled while falling down and slashing the giant hollow in half. 
Both Mainos faded away only leaving one more which was headed towards the Hokage Tower. Sorry bub, but not on my watch. Naruto yelled while using Shunpo to appear in front of the hollow. Die, Naruto roared while using a unsaid Getsuga Tensho. Naruto put so much power into the technique the Mainos leaned back before vanishing. Naruto ed as he stood in the air but tensed when he heard clapping. Very good Naruto-kun, you seem stronger, but the Hyogaku can do only so much. Naruto spun around to see a teenage girl who looked about 15 with an annoying smirk. She had long silver hair with black streaks running though it, which was tied into a ponytail and a bang covering her left eye. Her right eye was a pupil less gold amber. She had a nice tan, also supple pink lips. She wore tan s which stopped at her bandaged ankles, but had no shoes on showing off her cute medium-sized feet. The woman was adorning black nail polish on both feet and fingers. She wore a sleeveless black shirt and around her neck was some kind of necklace but was hidden under her shirt. Naruto gazed at her eyes which held amusement, happiness and small seriousness. Then he saw it. Tucked in her black sash was a katana which gave off some spirit energy. You have a Zanpakuto, who the hell are you and how did you know I had the Hyogaku? Naruto demanded readying himself. The girl shrugged, I know things what can I say? She smirked. And the sword? He asked, I also possessed the Hyogaku before you. She said, Naruto narrowed his eyes, but Rika said I was the only one on the planet it chose. Naruto said, Oh I'm not from this planet. I'm from a different planet not that far away from this one. But enough talk, show me what you can do. She grinned before flashing in front of him. It was only his skill that Naruto was able to block the oncoming blow but barely. The girl had a huge smirk while she was pushing on him. Naruto however looked annoyed and kicked her away. Why are here, and who are you? Naruto demanded. So demanding aren't you? She chuckled before appearing behind him. Naruto saw it coming and ducked while bringing his sword upward in reverse grip. The girl flipped backwards barely dodging. So you are skilled. Good. Keep me entertained. She roared while charging at him. Naruto glared while charging at her back. The two clashed causing a shockwave. The two pushed against each other before they leapt back. I will ask once more. Who the hell are you? Naruto yelled. Nake. Benihime. The girl said. Naruto cursed as a red blast shot at him making him flip over it and swing down while yelling, Getsuga Tensho. The black blast shot at the girl who sliced through it like butter. Using Shunpo she appeared before Naruto and sliced his abdomen causing blood to spew. Naruto grunted in pain while jumping away. Is that all? She smirked. Naruto you must use Bankai. Benihime is a powerful Zanpakuto once used by Kazuki Urahara. Zanjetsu reminded. You mean the shopkeeper? Naruto asked getting a mental nod from Zanjetsu. Fine. Hyu-chan you mind helping me? Naruto asked. Of course. The demoness replied. Naruto nodded. Bankai. Naruto shouted causing black and red energy to wrap around him. After a few seconds Naruto was revealed. Instead of the black jacket like Ichigo his was crimson due to Kayubi. The blade of Zanjetsu was also crimson while the hilt was pure black. Naruto's hair grew a little longer while his eyes were now slitted. His orange jacket burned into flames and was replaced by the one he currently wore so the only thing remained was his fishnet shirt. The girl narrowed her eyes before saying, so this is your bankai. It seems different than Ichigo's and similar at the same time. I'm guessing Kayubi's doing. That statement gained widened eyes from Naruto. Who are you? He asked calmly yet coldly while pointing his sword at her. She smirked before flashing in front of him. Naruto narrowed his eyes before blocking. His right hand was the one gripping Zanjetsu while his left was held by his side. The girl attacked him with a barrage of strikes and Naruto stood there blocking them all. Having enough Naruto sent her back with a push of his spirit energy. Your speed is impressive Naruto-kun. But not enough. She said pointing her sword at him a silver ball of energy appeared at the tip and grew. Naruto narrowed his eyes before he figured what that was. Saro. She yelled launching the blast at him. Naruto stepped back a bit waiting for the attack to hit. Once it was close enough he shifted into reverse grip and swung up shouting. Backlash wave. The Saro shot into the air before exploding. Naruto glared at the girl. Are you trying to destroy this village? He asked. 
He got no answer so instead he decided to attack. Shifting back to regular grip he brought the sword up and swung down. Wind scar, he yelled. The girl appeared in front of him and plunged her arm in the dead center of his chest. Naruto's eyes widened while coughing up blood. The girl glanced at him and ripped her hand out. Before he fell she gripped his neck and was surprised by the grip he still had on Zanjetsu. Wake soon, Naruto-kun. She whispered before they both disappeared. Mindscape. Naruto opens his eyes expecting to be in his mindscape but was surprised to know he and the city was submerged underwater. Struggling to try and breathe Naruto sees the surface and quickly swim towards it. But before he is out, is pulled back and thrown into a building. Opening his eyes he sees a dark figure which is wearing a hooded cloak. Calm down, it is painful to watch but you should be able to breathe. The figure said, Naruto narrowed his eyes but tried anyway. Once he was able to the figure said, How's that? Naruto glared at him but asked, Where is Zanjetsu where is my partner? Naruto asked, Well at least you didn't call me old like Ichigo did. The figure smirked while pulling out his sword. Tensa Zanjetsu. Naruto's eyes widened. How the hell do you have that? Naruto asked. This seemed very familiar but he couldn't remember. Can't remember. Good then it's working. I hate for you to know how to ruin my fun. The figure said. Naruto glared at him while the figure pulled of the hood revealing a young man with curly black hair. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Wow you really don't remember. But just like before this is your first time coming to your mindscape in Bankai. I should thank that girl. The man muttered. Before Naruto could comment he flew at him. In pure speed and training Naruto pulled out his own Tensa Zanjetsu and blocked. I know, your Tensa Zanjetsu aren't you. Naruto said while TZ Tensa Zanjetsu pushed against him. Not giving a worded answer TZ swung upward causing an explosion to hit the surface. Real world. The girl saw Naruto's shoulder get cut and frowned. So you have started. Good. I need you to be powerful once we leave. The Hyogaku can't do everything. She said to herself. Mindscape. Naruto skidded back on top of a roof. Damn. Zanjetsu why are you fighting me? Naruto demanded. Because I feel like it. Was his answer as he charged and swung for his head but Naruto ducked under and flipped away. Where is Kayubi? Naruto wondered. Focus. Or I won't teach you anything. Zanjetsu ordered before appearing behind Naruto and kicking him aside. What the hell are you talking about? Naruto grumbled while standing from the rubble. You can't fool me Naruto. I know what you want. You don't want just power. You want power and more. You want to use the power to destroy what you hate and protect what you love correct. You want to learn the final Getsuga Tensho. Zanjetsu yelled. Naruto's eyes widened before glaring. How? He asked. I know everything. What you truly desire. Well I can't teach you that. Zanjetsu said. And why not? I need the power to destroy the village and protect my precious people. Naruto stated. Zanjetsu clashed with Naruto quickly while pushing against him. So what? I don't care what becomes of your precious people or destruction. Zanjetsu said before blasting Naruto away. The building exploded as Naruto flew out and Zanjetsu followed. Do not misunderstand Naruto. What you want to destroy and protect is not what I want to destroy and protect. Zanjetsu said. Naruto crawled up of the floor but was still on all fours looking at the ground. What do you mean? Naruto muttered. About. Zanjetsu asked. I mean. What the hell do you mean about what I want is not what you want? What about the training and crap you put me through? You said you would lend me your strength like Ichigo. Was I wrong? Answer me. Zanjetsu. Naruto yelled now standing up and glaring at his opponent. Fool, look at this world. This world was once full of tall buildings. Taller than Ichigo's were. And now they are reduced to nothing. The sky has gone dark and the building have downsized. The rain has stopped falling and now we are underwater. Zanjetsu said as Naruto looked around with wide eyes. Are you really that scared? That weak. You comment on others weakness but you don't realize your own. It's because Naruto. You are giving yourself to hatred. Zanjetsu glared before appearing in front of him. How can you ever gain true power when you wallow in hatred and despair? All you want is revenge. You hide your true self because you are afraid it might disappear. I can't leave you like this. Zanjetsu said before plunging his fist in Naruto's chest. 
Naruto coughed up blood. Right here and right now Naruto, I will draw out the source of your despair. Zanjetsu said while ripping out his hand making Naruto scream in pain and cough out something white which landed on the ground in a plop. Naruto looked behind Zanjetsu to see a white figure. As it rose it spoke. It's been a while hasn't it, Naruto? How long eight years? The person said in that raspy hollow voice. Naruto paled as he observed the figure. It was wearing the same garb he wore except the color scheme was white except for the horned mask which was black. Naruto knew that mask. That was a full hollow mask instead of the one he used in desperation. What's with the face? Don't you recognize me? The person asked moving his hand to the mask to reveal a piece of his face. Once the piece was removed it revealed his dark hollow self. No, no, why the hell are you here? I locked you up that day. Naruto said. Did you really think that weak cell would hold me? I've been influencing you since. Then once you gained Zanjetsu I merged with your inner hollow. D.H. Naruto said. I see. So you're the reason I'm so angry. What about the mask? And how the hell did you get a tail? Naruto demanded seeing the white tail that was behind him. Oh, so you don't remember. You used that mask when seeing the full moon. On your ninth birthday. Don't you remember? You didn't want to join the party so you left the village to train. You accidentally looked at the moon while training with your hollow mask and you became the hollow form of your ape self. Zanjetsu explained. Naruto's eyes widened. He didn't remember that at all and Kyubi didn't want to tell him. Hey, where is Q-chan? Naruto demanded. Oh she is hanging around somewhere. You should hear her. D.H. Naruto smirked under the mask. He snapped his fingers to hear roaring. Let me out, Zanjetsu, Naruto, Kayubi roared. The hollow snapped his fingers again to hear silence. You bastard, Naruto growled. You were so afraid of your destructive impulses mentally you can't properly hollow fee. Zanjetsu said trying to get back on track. So what now, do you want me to fight him? Naruto glared. No you fight us as one. Zanjetsu and DH Naruto said before breaking apart and formed into one being. What the hell? Naruto gasped while gripping his sword tighter. Before him was Tensa Zanjetsu but into Naruto's clothing but with shoes and half of the mask was on the left side of his head. Originally we were two as one. And both of us, are your own power. Zanjutsu glared. Naruto stepped back while his grip tightened if that was possible. This will be fun doing it a second time. Now, let's go Naruto. Show me the power of a Saiyan. Zanjutsu yelled while charging at him. Naruto was shocked at his speed and was blasted into deeper into the water. Still won't fall eh, Naruto? Zenjutsu said. Naruto's hair was now a sopping mess as it covered the right side of his eye and his forehead. Hell number. You will teach me the final Getsuga Tensho. Naruto said. Do you even know what happens when you use that technique? Zenjutsu asked. Hun, there is a side affect. Naruto asked. Of course. The side affect is you lose your Shinigami powers. Plus I said I wouldn't teach you it anyway. Zenjutsu said clashing with Naruto. Naruto pushed him back and started striking him repeatedly. Why do you need that move anyway? For what? What enemy do you need to destroy for you to use that technique? Ichigo had to fight Aizen but what about you? Zenjutsu yelled as he blasted Naruto away. Why? Why do I need the technique? Do I really hate Konoha that much? that I need to waste my power. No, Naruto snapped his eyes open and flew higher into the air. Zenjutsu watched as an aura started to engulf Naruto. I won't let my dark side win. There is no way. What happened to me for me to hate this much? Go away. Go away. Naruto yelled as his key flared. His slitted blue eyes started to turn teal as his air started to float. Ah, Naruto screamed while his hair turned golden and the black streaks turned silver. His tail unwrapped itself around his waist and it turned silver and gold also. GGRRAAAAHHH. Naruto roared as his mindscape was exploded in a white light. After the light faded Zenjutsu stared at the glowing Naruto. His eyes were a pupil less teal his hair was golden with silver streaks while around him was a gold aura that looked like flames. His muscles grew a little bigger also. So you've done it. You achieved Super Saiyan. Zenjutsu smirked. Naruto's face was stoic as he was thinking. If he really wanted to defeat me he would have done so. 
he wouldn't have let me achieve this form and beat me from the start. That's how strong he is. If he didn't want to teach me he could have kicked me out and hide. So why? Naruto thought. But was cut short when Zenjutsu charged at him. Naruto would normally block but let go of his sword instead and was stabbed. How sharp of you. The final Getsuga Tensho is not something that can be acquired, only be accepting the blade. Zenjutsu said. Naruto looked impassively. It doesn't hurt, he whispered. Of course, this tense as Anjetsu is yourself. If you accept it there is no reason to feel pain from being pierced. You sure are slower than Ichigo. But unique, Zenjutsu said while a tear dropped. Are you crying? Naruto asked. Naruto, you and Ichigo are different yet the same. You want to protect what's dear to you. Do you remember what I said? About what I wanted to protect? Zenjutsu asked. Yeah, Naruto said. It was you, Naruto. You and Ichigo, Zanjetsu said. What is that supposed to mean? Naruto asked. The meaning will come straight to you along with the technique. But if you use this technique, you will become Getsuga. A voice said shocking both. They snapped their heads to see Ichigo. So you're my reincarnation hun. Well then, I'm Ichigo Kurosaki. Ichigo said. I Ichigo, how are you here? Zanjetsu asked. That's not important. What's important is Naruto still needs your power Zanjetsu. And that is only if you two become one. Ichigo said. What? They both said. Naruto, there is no point in using final Getsuga now. You must know that. It's a waste just for you to lose all your spiritual power. So instead you two must become one. Here, Ichigo said, throwing them each an earring. Those are Patori earrings. When you put those on you two will become one being permanently but have your separate minds. Now hurry, Ichigo said. Well, Naruto asked. We were already one. I don't mind a bit. Zanjetsu said putting on the earring on his left ear while Naruto put it on his right in a two seconds they both combined. Ichigo covered his eyes to see Naruto now was back in regular form. His hair was a little curly but still the same. He was also a little taller not by much though. He wore Zanjetsu's cloak also. So we're one now. Cool. So now I'm Naruto Zanjetsu. Naruto smirked. Yes but soon you will become Naruto Zanjetsu Kurosaki. This is my gift to you Naruto. Since I'm already dead it won't matter much. Take those off and put this on. Ichigo said tossing him another earring. Two fusions. Is that even safe? Naruto asked. Yes. You will gain my power but my mind won't enter. Ready. Ichigo asked. Naruto nodded before they both put the earrings on. The two flew towards each other and slammed, becoming one. Once it was done Naruto was wearing the darkened crimson bankai cloak without sleeves. His hair was just like Ichigo's now, longer and spiky and covered part of his right eye. His whisker marks still there but faint. Naruto looked at his hands and channeled his spirit energy and formed Zanjetsu. He dispersed it and formed a pinwheel. That's my full bring power hun. Naruto muttered, dispersing it. Naruto closed his eyes and focused. Once he opened them he was right in front of Kayubi. She looked at him and tackled him. Are you okay? I was so worried. Kayubi said. I'm fine Q-chan. But I need to talk to you about my personality change. Naruto said. You want it now? She asked. Yes. I still want this but not that much. Once the Hyogaku is released I want it. Naruto said. Kayubi nodded before Naruto faded out of the seal. Real world. Naruto fluttered his eyes open to see a white ceiling. He sniffed the air and guessed he was in the hospital. Turning his head to left he saw the girl he fought on the chair reading some kind of magazine. So you're finally awake hun? She asked while flipping a page. Naruto looked at her with uncaring eyes then back to the ceiling. Who are you and why am I here? Naruto asked. Well I brought you here because that hole I put in your chest was gushing out too much blood for me to properly seal it. As for who I am, it's a secret. She grinned. Naruto gained a tick mark but calmed down. Was this a part of your plan? For me to meet Tensa Zanjetsu? Naruto asked. I guess. All I know was that I was supposed to put you on the right path. The girl said flipping another page. Right path. As in what I want to destroy and protect. Naruto asked. You got it. So what do you want to destroy and protect? She asked, her eyes scanning the page. 
Naruto thought about his life and how he hated his parents Konoha for choosing his sister over him. His reason for power was to eradicate the objects of his hatred and loneliness. And to protect the small group he held dear. But now he wanted to destroy his foes so that in a way he is protecting his precious people. Did he still hate his parents? Yes, but to the point he wants to destroy them, maybe. My foes, he said. What was that? She asked. I want to destroy my foes. The ones who pose a threat to my precious people. Naruto said. Good answer. Now here is the final question. What are you gonna do now? Will you stay here and get a little stronger? Or leave this world and gain way more power and protect more than this planet? She asked. Naruto sighed inwardly. I refuse to stay here. There is no way I am happy here. But maybe I can restart my life elsewhere. Naruto said. It's possible. She said. Naruto looked at her meeting her eyes. It's very possible. Because I've done it. I have restarted my life. And now I'm more happy than I ever was. But I will be more happy when I kill him. She said with narrowed eyes. Him? Naruto asked. Yes. Frieza Cold. Youngest son of King Cold and brother of Cooler Cold. He destroyed my planet just because he was bored. She glared at the ground. Naruto eyes widened when he felt her key rising and fast. He took away the little friends I held dear. And my brother. Just because he was bored. She growled causing her key to rise and the room to flash. Naruto opened his eyes to see her hair was golden while her eyes were teal. You're a Saiyan, Naruto guessed. She looked at him and nodded. My mother was sent to my home planet Tarok when she was a baby. She was different from other Saiyans apparently since her hair was silver instead of black. So they disowned her sending her to the most dangerous planet in my system. She gave birth to me but died after five minutes. My father was the one to take care of me. He had a son by another woman not that long after. She passed to take a breath. Her silver hair returned as her key dropped. Kian was my first friend because I was treated differently due to me having a tail. But soon I gained some friends but one day that bastard that was my father ripped off my tail and it was the same day Frieza came to destroy the planet. I barely escaped due to me finding my mother's space pod. I watched as my planet along with my brother was destroyed. She explained. What about the Hyogaku? Naruto asked. I guess I always had it since I was born. Once my planet was destroyed I was so angry at Frieza I became a Super Saiyan and gained Benihime. Rika trained me in the arts of Shinigami but said me learning my Saiyan powers was my own. So I searched the galaxies to find the next bearer of the Hyogaku and found you. She explained. Naruto took all that information in. What about me? In my mindscape I was able to become a Super Saiyan can I do so now? Naruto asked. She shook her head. No, you only have the potential to become a Super Saiyan. Something major must happen for you to become one. She said. Naruto nodded. Then something struck his mind. What's today? He asked. Friday. Why? She asked. Naruto shot straight up and channeled chakra into his arm. Within a second a scroll appeared. Naruto unsealed the scroll and put on his clothes. What's the rush? She wondered blushing slightly at his muscles. Today is when I get team assignments. But most importantly when the Hyogaku leaves my body. He said before jumping out the window. The girl watched as he left leaving her alone in the room or so she thought. It's almost time. Will you learn with him? A familiar female voice asked. Yes. You said if I found him I won't be alone. The silver haired girl said. And you won't, but you have to go after him. The voice said. The girl nodded. I will be at the valley waiting. Don't be late, the voice said before fading off. Naruto barged in the classroom quieting everyone down till, Nisan. Mito yelled. Naruto glanced at her then at Sayuri who also looked worried. Naruto you're late, you're never late, something happened. Uruka asked confused. Naruto looked at him and shook his head. Well then go take a seat. Uruka ordered. Naruto nodded and walked off to sit with his sister who was glaring at him. Where have you been? Mother and father were worried about you. I was worried, Mito said. Sorry, I had something to take care of. Naruto answered. All right now let's start with team assignments. Team 1, Uruka started. Naruto was only half paying attention as he was thinking how he was gonna get out of here. Team 7 will be, Naruto Namikaze.
Hinata Hayuga and Sai. Your team sensei will be Kakashi Hitaki, Uruka said. Naruto glared. Oh he was defiantly leaving. Team 8 will be, Mito Namikaze, Kiba Inazuka and Shino Abarame. Your sensei is Kuranai Yuhi. Team 9 is still active. Team 10 will be Sayuri Uchiha, Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akamaiki. Your sensei will be Asuma Serutobi, Uruka said. Team 11 will be Ino Yamanka, Sakura Haruno and Yusuke Urahara. Your sensei will be Anko Midirashi. Uruka finished. There was protests going everywhere till Uruka yelled at them. Now listen, this is all the Hokage is doing if you have a problem take it up with him. Now before your senseis come you have an hour to get acquainted and have lunch. Dismissed, Uruka said. Naruto stood up to leave glancing at the emotionless pale kid Sai. But was stopped by Hinata who looked like she was trying not to blush. N Naruto-kun, I was w wondering, no. He said and passed by her making her frown. Mito and Sayuri followed him wondering what the hell was wrong with him. He was on a team with Hinata he should at least be friends with her. But then again he was barely friends with anybody. Naruto shunshined home and walked in the house. Naruto. Kashina called at seeing her son. Yes what is it? Naruto asked. Where have you been? We were worried sick. Kashina said. I told you not to wait up. I went out for training and I fell asleep. Naruto said waving off her worry. I need to get somethings. Naruto said going to his room. Once the door was closed he looked over his room and started to seal his things into the many scrolls. He had prepared for this since he turned seven. So he was beyond ready. After sealing his things and sealed them into one scroll he picked up his backpack and quickly left for his father's library. He looked up all the jutsu he could use. He skipped over Horishin since he had Shunpo. He also skipped over Rasengan since he learned by himself. So he took a couple of fire jutsu some wind and lightning. He also took that jutsu his supposed to be sensei created. Lighting blade. Why his father had it? No clue. But he was grateful he did. After sealing the scrolls in another scroll he made his way to the fuinjutsu section and took the mastery scrolls. Once everything was sealed he put the three scrolls in his backpack. Putting the bag over his shoulder he left the office and was in the living room, his mother in the kitchen. I'm leaving. Goodbye mother. Naruto said while putting his headband next to the family picture on the half wall. Looking at it once more he faced down and left. Okay bye. Kashina said when walking out not seeing her son. Shrugging to herself she went back to doing the dishes but something was eating at her but didn't know what. Naruto jumped from roof to roof careful not to encounter Anbu. Naruto glanced at Mito and Sayuri who were strolling home no doubt looking for him. Naruto looked away and continued on. Mom have you seen Naruto? Mito asked walking in the house. Kashina walked out the kitchen. Oh he just left. I think he went back to school. Kashina said. Mito looked confused before heading upstairs to his room. Since his seventh birthday she hadn't been his room due to it being sealed or locked so she just knocked. Getting no answer she opened the door surprised to find it open. What she saw scared her. The room was more plain than it was the last time she came in here. But what were on the walls were formulas of seals and such. Looking at his desk she could see papers scattered all over the place. Going to look she saw that they were plans for new jutsu and such. Looking over the desk more something caught her eye. Picking the paper under the mess of the rest she was now looking at a drawing. An incredible drawing at that. It was of the moon in the night sky. Trying to look for more she found his sketchbook in the trash with another book but it was black and smaller. It was most likely a journal of some sort. She flipped through the sketchbook and surprised to see lots of pictures of him and herself along with Sayuri. When she got to the middle of the large sketchbook she saw the nine-tailed fox but on top of its head was her brother and he was grinning like a fox. Turning to the next page she saw Naruto again but instead he was sitting against a tree with a red-headed woman sitting between his legs. She looked sleep as did Naruto with a small smile. Around them was a beautiful field of flowers and such but once again she saw the full moon. After a few more pages she stopped on a page where Naruto was sitting on a rooftop surrounding by other buildings. On the side standing on the tip of a building was a middle-aged man in some kind of black cloak and glasses. Then looking again on Naruto's back was the sword he always carried. 
and once again he was staring at the full moon with an impassive gaze. Mito what's taking you so long? Sayuri asked as she came up the stairs. Mito ignored her as she turned to the last page and gasped. The picture was of a burning Konoha in the night. Naruto was sitting on the edge of the Hokage Tower looking at the village with his impassive face. Behind him were two people who lay dead. Their parents. Blood trickled out of her mother's mouth with her eyes closed while her father's chest was impaled by Naruto's sword. But then she caught something. Looking at the village she saw a ape-like monster destroying the village while the same full moon was out. What are you looking at? Sayuri asked as she was in her crush's room. Mito handed her the book and picked up the journal. She read most pages about how he hated Konoha and stuff like that then she stopped on his seventh birthday. I met this weird lady today when I left the compound. But before that I tripped over this awesome looking rock. The woman said it was called the Hyogaku and I was its new container. She said it would bring me power and in six years I would be more powerful to fulfill my dreams. She gave me my new sword Zanjetsu. Apparently Kyu-chan doesn't mind Zanjetsu. He told me how I was Ichigo's reincarnation and stuff. His memories are so cool but were painful since I felt every pain he felt. The woman told me her name was Rika and said I should leave the village when I graduate. Then I could accomplish my dreams. But it would be hard leaving Mito-chan and Sayuri-chan. I love them both but I must fulfill my dream that way I can be complete. As she read on Mito's eyes widened. Today was the day he was leaving, mom. Mito screamed and ran downstairs. Sayuri looked confused as she looked at the picture but jumped when her friend screamed and ran downstairs. Soon she joined her. What's WR? He's gone. Naruto's gone. We have to search for him. We have to find him. Mito cried. What do you mean? Kashina asked trying to calm her down. He's left the village. We have to find him before it's too late. Mito said. Kashina's eyes widened before she left via Shunshin. Minato was having a decent day despite the fact he had no clue where his son was and probably would berate him for putting the weak Hyuga on his team. But he believed Naruto should make friends with her and get closer. Minato. Kashina yelled barging in the office. The man jumped from seeing his wife barge in like that. What's the matter? He asked. Naruto is gone. He left the village. We have to find him. Kashina said her eyes beginning to tear. Minato got serious before calling Anbu. I need three teams to go look for my son outside and inside the village. Nako, get me the Jonin now. And tell Kakashi that it is in order. Minato barked out. The Anbu nodded and went to do their jobs. Within five minutes the Jonin sensei along with Itachi were in the office wondering what the commotion was about. Listen up. Naruto has left the village and needs to be found immediately. We can't let him go. I have reason to believe he has already left the gates but I'm not sure. So I'm sending you all outside to look. Dismissed. Minato yelled. After they were gone he looked over to his wife who was sobbing quietly walking over to her he hugged her. It's okay we'll find him. Minato reassured. I just can't believe this is happening. I'm such a bad mother if this is happening. Kashina said. Don't pin all the blame on yourself. It's my fault too you know. I'm the one who neglected him over Mito. But we will find him. Minato kissed her forehead and flashed home. The sight he was greeted to was Mito readying herself with Kanai and such. She tied her hair back in a ponytail before glancing at her father. I'm going to find him with Sayuri. She said. Fine but take this. I'll be right behind you. Minato said handing her a Kanai. She took it and pocketed it before running out the house and jumped from roof to roof. Meanwhile at the gate Kakashi summoned his tracking dogs. What is it Kakashi? Pakun asked. I need you to find Naruto sent for us. He's gone missing. Kakashi said. Pakun nodded as he sniffed the cloth Kakashi gave him. He's gone north and seems pretty far ahead. Pakun said as Thujanan nodded and ran out. Mito and Sayuri weren't far behind. Naruto hopped from tree to tree. He glanced behind him now knowing the situation. Before leaving Naruto planted a clone so when it dispelled he was informed of what was going on. Naruto looked forward and sped up. Forming a hand sign he said, Taiju Cage Bushin no Jutsu. Within seconds there were at least 100 Narutos. I want 25 of you to spread around the forest and mark our scent. I want another 25 to scatter the forest. We need to confuse the ninja dogs Hitaki has. 
scatter. Naruto barked causing the clones to get to work. His trail has changed. No, it's everywhere. I can't pinpoint the real one. Pakun and the dogs snap their heads around. So he's trying to throw us off eh? Fine, Itachi. Kakashi ordered. The Uchiha nodded before activating his Sharingan. His chakra is everywhere. It seems he has created an army of clones. I can't pinpoint the real one. Itachi said. Then we will have to scatter. Each of you group up in two and take a ninja hound. Howl if you encounter the real one. Try and persuade him into coming back and don't do too much damage. Spread. Kakashi barked causing them to also get to work. Naruto stopped as he decided to rest. He was sure he threw them off. But he had to be careful as there was Jonan and Anbu looking for him. Well don't I feel loved. Took 13 years to notice me. Pathetic. Naruto muttered to himself as he took off once again. As he kept jumping he wondered where he would go from here, after he left. He finally came to a clearing and sighed as he stood and began walking but had to dodge the kunai that nearly hit him. Back flipping he faced three Anbu root. Who the hell are you? I'm positive the Hokage didn't send you with the masks or anything to go by. Naruto glared. Naruto Namikaze you are to come with us. You are not permitted to leave the village. Orders from Danzo Sama. The root Anbu said. Danzo, what the hell does that old fart want with me? Naruto demanded. That is classified, the second said as he charged at Naruto. The boy grunted in annoyance before using Shunpo and kneeing his attacker's ribs. Naruto back flipped and did a hand stand as he kicked the Anbu's chin repeatedly. With one final kick he was into the air. Disappearing in a blur Naruto appeared in front of the first and uppercut him. Sure you can. Naruto yelled as his opponent was launched into the sky with flames. The third Anbu charged ready to strike with his blade but was cut in two by Naruto's pinwheel technique. After he was done the boy ran out the fields to complete his journey. Not knowing he was being followed. As Naruto continued to run he was smart enough to turn around mid-jump and blow out, fire style, great fireball jutsu. The ball of flame flew towards Itachi who was able to duck under and chase Naruto who hurried ahead. I knew teaching him that was a bad idea. Itachi mused before speeding up. Glancing to his left he saw Anko was looked like she was in deep thought. Probably wondering why Naruto would leave her, he thought. Naruto landed on the first Hokage's stone head and looked around. He was here the valley of the end. Sighing to himself he jumped over the Madara's head and kept walking but stopped when he heard. Naruto. He wondered how the hell they all caught up to him so fast. Then he realized. They probably used reverse summon or some crap like that. He wouldn't know since he didn't have summons. Yet. Naruto's anger got the best of him. Why the hell would they care? Why would they care now of all times when now he wants them to leave him alone? Turning around he faced them. All their eyes widened including Nito and Sayuri who were hiding waiting till it was the right time. If the Jonin failed then they would step in. The right side of Naruto's was covered by his hollow mask. He mentally grinned. If he had full control soon then he would be a wizard. Awesome. Well if it isn't the Jonin. Naruto smirked. Why? Anko asked quietly but Naruto heard her as his attention was directed at her. Why are you leaving? Aren't we your friends? She screamed. Naruto stared at her with his impassive look. Yes. That is the reason why I'm leaving. Naruto said. Bullshit. If I'm your friend and you have others then you would stay. Anko yelled surprising the other Jonin as they did not know the connection Naruto had with her. Not even Kurenai. Wrong. If I stayed then I would have killed you all. With no remorse. So let me go. Naruto said while turning around and continued to walk off. That's when Itachi snapped. He channeled chakra to his feet and jumped to Naruto. The boy saw a shadow closing in and decided to make use of it. Itachi suddenly was pushed back and fell into the water. Why? Because his shadow repelled him away. Naruto smirked as he continued to walk but cursed when a giant snake smashed where he was standing. He was forced into the air right above the snake summon's head. Naruto narrowed his eyes and channeled chakra to his hand causing chirps to be heard. This was only the second time he used Chidori. He needed to master it then he would move on to lightning blade. The white lighting soon turned black with red outlines. Tensho Chidori. Naruto muttered before flying down his arms by his side looking like a bullet. 
Naruto ed his Chidori hand back and thrust it inside the snake's head killing it. He landed on the water with ease and was able to stand. Everyone was taken back by his show of skill, especially Kakashi who was surprised to see Chidori to be used without hand signs and that Naruto was able to stand on water. Naruto glared up at them subconsciously making the water spin around him. He narrowed his eyes as he dodged fireballs from Itachi, flipping around Naruto fired fireballs at him. But to his surprise Azuma came flying down at him. Naruto flipped to the side and ran up the statues. I don't have time for this. Naruto growled allowing his Ahalo mask to cover his face fully. As he was running up the statue Zanjetsu formed in his hand. He channeled lightning chakra into Zanjetsu as Chidori started to cover the blade before turning black. Naruto stopped running as he was above them all. Final Chidori strike. Naruto howled as he flew down at incredible speed stabbing the water. Within half a second the whole area was hit with his Tensho Chidori. The Jonin screamed in pain as the lightning coursed through their bodies. It was enough to wound and paralyze them but wouldn't have dangerous effects. They all fell in the water but floated above. Naruto looked at them all and tried to walk when Anko grabbed his ankle. Please Naruto, don't go, don't leave me alone, she cried. Naruto looked at her before touching her forehead. Sleep Anko-chan. I'll be back to visit you soon. Naruto whispered and pecked her lips before using Shunpo to appear on Madara's head. Brother, Mito called. Naruto turned to her his mask was gone since Anko grabbed his ankle. Mito-chan, please let me go, and I promise to visit you and Sayuri-chan soon, just please. Naruto said. But what about me? Why are you leaving? She wondered. Because I need to. I need to get stronger and defeat my enemies so I can protect you and Sayuri along with Anko. You must understand. Naruto sighed as he gripped his chest and pulled it away to show the Hyogaku in his hand. Take this. Keep it as a reminder of me. This has been with me for six years. Once it is with you, you will always feel my presence. Become stronger sister. Naruto smiled before letting go of the Hyogaku. It floated over to Mito and entered her chest. With that I will always be able to find you. Tell Sayuri-chan I said goodbye. I love you Mito-chan. Farewell. Naruto said before turning to the silver-haired girl and Rika. Are you ready to go Naruto-kun? Rika asked. Naruto nodded as Rika opened up a white portal. Then come with me. It's time for you two to start training. Rika said. The girl nodded and walked inside as did Naruto but not before giving his sister a smile. Mito let tears fall from her cheeks as he left. Your brother will be safe. In fact he will be back in time for the Chunin exams. Be ready Mito-chan, for he will be stronger than your father. Rika smiled before entering the party leaving Mito alone. Thirty seconds later Minato and Kashina were by her side. Where is he? Where's Naruto? Minato asked. He's gone. He left. But he said he will come back soon. To visit me and Sayuri. Mito smiled softly while wiping her eyes. Don't worry Nisan, I will become strong, Mito proclaimed before leaving to train. Minato and Kashina sighed in disappointment that their son was gone. The Anbu behind them picked up the Jonin and they headed back home to grieve. Naruto and the girl appeared on some land but immediately felt weighed down. If I were you I would release those weights and gravity seals. Rika smirked. No leave them on, it would be great for training their speed. A squeaky male voice said. Naruto and the girl turned their heads to see a small blue man with antennas. He wore a black-like dress whatever it was and on his chest was, King Kai. Who are you? Naruto asked. I am King Kai the funniest Kai of all the lands. King Kai grinned. Naruto gave him a deadpan look. Regite. Anyway where are we? Naruto asked looking around. This is King Kai's planet. You will be training here for a while. Rika said. King Kai nodded when he heard. Come back here you monkey. Naruto looked around King Kai to see a man with spiky black hair in an orange outfit chasing a moniki. Uh, who's that? Naruto asked. Hum, oh that is Goku. Goku, stop chasing bubbles and greet your new training partners. King Kai ordered, but I almost had him. Goku whined. Now Goku. King Kai barked. Yes King Kai. Goku muttered before walking over. This is Goku. Goku this is, Naruto Zanjetsu. Naruto answered. Reina, the girl introduced. 
Naruto glanced at her then back at King Kai and Goku. New training partners. But King Kai they're not dead. Goku pointed out. They don't have to be dead. But there is something you should know. They are both Saiyans. Half Saiyans to be precise. King Kai said. Naruto looked confused. He knew he was a Saiyan but wondered how. Um King Kai how am I a Saiyan? Naruto wondered. Your father is a full Saiyan while your mother is half Saiyan. Your grandmother on your mother's side was a Saiyan. King Kai informed. Naruto nodded. So why are we here King Kai? Reina asked. You two will be training with Goku and learn more about Ki. Goku will teach you techniques while all three of you train under me understood. King Kai asked. Yes King Kai. They both nodded. Well since everything is under control here I'll be going. I will return in a year and some change. Farewell. Naruto kun, Reina chan. Rika smiled before leaving. All right then let's get started. King Kai cheered before Naruto's stomach growled. Naruto blushed in embarrassment. Uh can I get something to eat first? Naruto asked sheepishly. Goku laughed while King Kai and Reina's sweat dropped. This was gonna be troublesome. Minato sighed as he sat in his chair. The chair he was currently sitting in was in the council room. Where said council was in outrage. Why were they in outrage? Because his son vanished to no one knows where. Silence. He commanded in a stern voice making everyone shut the hell up. Thank you. Minato nodded. Lord Hokage we have to find your son. He could have secrets about Konoha and give them to potential enemies. A civilian said. Yeah, like Iwa. Another shouted. All the shinobi in the room rolled their eyes. Hiyashi, Fugaku and even Danzo did as well. Even though with Danzo it was just an eye. Why would Iwa want anything from the son of the yellow flash? Kaharu asked. I agree. Most likely they will just kill the little lone pup. Soom muttered. Minato nodded in agreement. Hokage-sama is there anyone in the village who might have a clue where young Naruto has gone? Inoichi asked. Minato shook his head. No. I even asked Mito. She didn't have a clue. All she knew was that her brother was leaving but she didn't know where. Minato said. Well does she know who he went with her too? Danzo asked. Someone named Rika. She doesn't ring a bell. Minato said. We must be very cautious of the situation. From what I've seen young Naruto doesn't really like Konoha. Shikaku said. Of course not. Fugaku spoke with a snort getting looks from everyone. Fugaku then glared at the civil and council who cringed. He was treated with disrespect because Minato sealed the Kyuubi's soul within him. You praised his twin who holds the chakra. She probably won't be able to use it right since there is no medium to control how much chakra she uses. Fugaku said. And you. Fugaku turned his glare to Minato who winced. You ignored him his whole life along with your wife. And when he finally gives up on you too you want to treat him like everything's hunky-dory and nothing even happened. I'm surprised the Gaki stayed for so long. I expected him to leave sooner. It seems Itachi and Sayuri along with Makoto were the only people holding him back along with Mito. Fugaku said. Minato looked ashamed. The point is we need to gain Naruto back. From what Kakashi and Itachi told us he is very strong and would be a great weapon to the village. And he is the rookie of the year along with the Hokage's son. He is very valuable, Kaharu stated before flinching from Minato's glare. I agree with Kaharu. Maybe when the boy returns he can be instated in my root program. Danzo said getting a glare from Minato and Fugaku. This meeting is over. Get out. Minato muttered before leaving. As he left he thought, was I really a bad father to you, Naruto? Elsewhere, Kaya. Naruto yelled as he sent a kick at Goku's head. Goku dodged the blow and flew higher into the sky before being joined by Naruto. After pausing Naruto lunged at him as they both started trading blows at each other. From the ground Reina watched while King Kai was watching over Earth. It's been a couple months since Naruto and Reina arrived to start their training with King Kai. After a few days from arriving they both changed but Naruto was the one who changed the most. His personality made a complete 180. He was more open and grinning all the time. Yes he was still serious from time to time but laughed and joked when he could help it. The reason, because he finally released his locked up personality. The same personality he buried deep when he was 4 years old. Reina also changed from what Naruto could tell. 
At first it seemed she wanted to have fun but decided to be serious and she was a flirt. Now she was always laughing and flirting with the blonde Saiyan. Once they started training their outfits changed. Naruto wore orange s like Goku's, black boots, a black tunic, an orange vest with a black short-sleeved shirt under it. On the back was the kanji for, King Kai. Reina opted to wear a silver short-sleeved shirt, tight black s and silver boots. Her hair was tied back into a ponytail while she had two strands of hair out in the front. Ka. Goku started to chant. Me, Naruto said. Ha. Both said while getting in position. Me, blue energy started to form and grew. H. Oh no. King Kai yelled breaking the two out of their concentration. Bubbles dropped the dirty plates he was about to clean and Reina spilled her cup of tea on the ground. King Kai, what's the problem? Goku asked as he and Naruto floated down. I miscalculated, King Kai admitted. Miscalculated what King Kai? Naruto wondered as Reina appeared by their side. The two Saiyans from Earth, they're coming sooner than I expected. King Kai said getting wide-eyed looks from his three students. What do you mean sooner than expected? They yelled in unison. I'm sorry okay, I was so busy training you guys I forgot to check. King Kai admitted. Well how long till they reach Earth? Naruto asked. At least two more months. That will give me enough time to teach you three the spirit bomb and Kaioken. But Goku is the one who needs to learn it fast. King Kai said getting strange looks from the other two. Why not us? We're going together right? Naruto asked. No, you two will stay here till your training is complete. King Kai said getting a glare from Reina. But we want to help Goku defend Earth. It is gonna be our new home after all. Reina said. Yes but Rika Dono wanted me to train you two to the fullest. King Kai said. Reina was about to retort when Naruto stopped her. There is no point in arguing Rei Chan. Instead we should be speeding up the process in training. Naruto said. Reina looked at him before nodding in defeat. Goku however was strangely quiet. King Kai is there a way to contact my friends on earth to let them know what's going on. They still think the Saiyans are coming in a year. Goku said. King Kai nodded. Yes there is. Just put your hand on my back and think of a person who you want to talk to. King Kai said. Goku nodded as he put his hand on King Kai's back. Came house. In Came house bathroom was the turtle hermit Roshi or Master Roshi as Krillin or Goku would call him. He was currently giggling perversely as he was reading a Playboy magazine. Till he heard. Hello. Master Roshi. Master Roshi can you hear me? Hello. Goku asked. Roshi jumped from hearing his dead student's voice. Goku, is that you where are you? Aren't you dead? Roshi asked out loud. Oh so this thing does work. Yeah master Roshi I'm still dead but I have to tell you something. And I want you to tell the others too. The Saiyans are coming to earth earlier than expected in two months in fact. So everyone needs to get their training in or the Saiyans will sneak up on them. I'll try to get there as fast as I can. Goku said. Two months. Roshi screamed. Yeah, anyway I have to go. King Kai is getting smushed. See y'all later. Goku cheered before his voice faded away. Roshi wiped his ass and barged out the bathroom to see Krillin along with Yamcha and Purr. Goku said that the Saiyans are coming in two months. And that you need to hurry and train. Roshi yelled getting dumbfounded looks from both men. King Kai's planet. Well now that's done let's get back to training. Goku grinned. King Kai nodded after getting up from the floor. Alright the first technique I'm gonna show you is called the spirit bomb. King Kai said getting nods from his students who were happy to learn new techniques. Two months later, Naruto and Reina were busy training hoping to get stronger to help Goku who was on earth as we speak fighting the elite Saiyan Vegeta. As they continued to train Piccolo and the gang were viewing the battle with King Kai. Hey guys don't you want to see the battle? Yamcha asked. Naruto and Reina stopped for a second before looking at him. Goku will win. They said in unison before charging at each other once again. Piccolo noticed them but went back to the battle where Vegeta was launched into the air by Goku's Kaioken Kamehameha. Naruto and Reina floated down to the ground and made their way to King Kai who had a bead of sweat rolling down his face. Both twitched their eyes in annoyance as they watched the gang who doubted Goku. Why are you guys watching? Naruto asked. Because we're trying to see if the earth will be destroyed. Tien stated. So you don't believe in Goku. 
Reina asked. We're not saying that, Qian said, but the way you are watching makes it seem like you are. Reina continued. What is your point? Piccolo wondered. Our point is, that you guys are doubting Goku. While you are over here watching you could be training your asses off so you won't be useless in the future. Naruto stated. No don't do it Goku. King Kai said. What? Reina asked. Goku is trying to use the spirit bomb but he is too weak. King Kai said. Enough. Naruto roared snapping everyone from the fight. Goku will win. Stop doubting him and start training. Because if you don't you will most likely die once more. I bet if I fought all of you combined I will come out on top. Naruto said getting a glare from the Namek. Is that so? Piccolo asked. You bet your green skin it's so. King Kai, we need more training. We have already mastered the Kaoken and Spirit Bomb we need more. Naruto stated. King Kai looked at them and could tell they were telling the truth. But what could they train in? The other world tournament wasn't for another 8 to 10 years. I know what they could train in. A female voice said. Naruto and Reina's ears twitched as they spun around to see Rika smiling at them. Ka San. They grinned and hugged her. Over the past year or so they both really looked up to the Rika who they found out was the Shinigami who unlocked Naruto's Saiyan powers. Anyway instead of waiting till their training was over to see them she decided to create a bond with both of them. A motherly bond since they didn't really have that. Reina's mother died from childbirth and Naruto's ignored him. Hi there. She smiled while she hugged them back. Hey Tien who's the babe? Yamcha whispered. Beats me. Tien shrugged. Piccolo seemed very weary of the white-haired woman but didn't know why. Rika Dono. What could you offer them? King Kai asked. Training. Kami-sama wants me to put them in a dimension which is similar to the one Earth has. The hyperbolic time chamber. This will not only train them, but bring them closer. They will be put through difficult things and tested. Rika said. What about the Chunin exams Naruto has to participate in? King Kai asked. He will be out in time to take them and be back to help fight against the danger Earth will be put in. Rika said. King Kai eyes widened under his glasses. Earth would be put under more danger than it already was. Piccolo was thinking the same thing. Wait a minute. If Earth will be put under more danger then can't you tell us what it is? He wondered. No can do. That's the fun in life. Plus sister Kami's orders. Anyway, Naruto-kun, Reina-chan are you ready to go? She asked. Both nodded ready to start the new training. Good let's go. Oh and the two are right. Instead of worrying over Goku you should be training. I think he is about finished now. Rika smirked before opening a portal and left with the two half Saiyans. King Kai's eyebrow raised as he looked back to earth and gasped. Goku won. Vegeta surrendered and escaped. King Kai exclaimed. Everyone else was in shock. Who the hell was that woman? And did she say Kami? As in not Namek Kami. Naruto and Reina followed their mother figure till they were standing as a blue area. Everywhere was just blue nothing else. And the gravity felt heavy. Ka San where is this place? Naruto asked while looking around. This Naruto-kun is another dimension. On Kami's lookout there is a door where it allows you to enter another dimension for training. One day outside is one year in there. The same concept is applied also. Rika said. So we'll be training for several days. Reina asked. No you two will be staying for several years. She said seriously. Both gasped in shock. What? But Ka-san you said I would be in time for the Chunin exams. That is probably in a couple months. Naruto said. Naruto-kun. Your planet may be very similar to Earth but the time is different. Do you know you were training on King Kai's planet for at least five months? She asked. Naruto nodded. Well Earth five months passed. Your plant which is called Elam, only two days passed. She said. Naruto's eyes bugged out his head. Two days. That's really slow. Naruto said. Yes it is. But that's how we want it. Once you two come out there will be a week till the exams start. Like I said plenty of time. Rika said. Okay so how long will we stay here in earth time? Reina asked. Hmm. I say about three years. That will be about 30 years in here. She said. Now Reina's ice bugged out of her head while Naruto's jaw dropped. 30. They yelled. Rika laughed. Yes. But you won't have to worry much. Your bodies won't change in here. 
Well they will but according to Elam time. This way you too can gain more than enough experience. And if you're lucky learn to surpass a super saiyan which you Naruto don't know how to attain and you Reina don't know how to maintain long enough. Rika smirked at their sullen expressions. Naruto grinned suddenly. This means I can control Zanjetsu power. Naruto grinned. Reina nodded also but thinking, and a way for me to get closer to you, Naruto-kun. She glanced at him then back. Rika caught the glance and noticed how much love and hope there was in that one glance. She smiled. All right you two, for ten years you will train in this dimension to build strength. In the next ten will be survival. The last ten will be teamwork. I will visit you every two years. I might even send Goku or Gohan in here to join you for a little bit. She smiled. Both understood Goku but Gohan. He was just a kid. But they didn't comment on it. They knew as well the Gohan had hidden potential as well. All right now for living essentials. Rika said before clapping her hands. The ground started to rumble till three mansions and a shed grew from the ground. Both looked at the houses and shed and wondered what they were for. All right you probably wondering what the mansions and shed is for right? Rika asked getting nods from her. Kids. Okay the house in the middle is where you will be living while you stay here. In the fridge is food that will last you till the ten years are up. In the second house on the left is all the jutsu scrolls you might want to learn Naruto-kun. And for you Reina, the third house on the right is a weapon house. With all the weapons you can think of. I know how you like weapons so it's for you to use. Naruto you also might want to browse there also since with your full bring powers you can form any kind of weapon. Rika said. Both looked at the houses with stars in their eyes. Naruto also drooled at the sound of food. Since starting his training his appetite has grown. It's always been big since his tail appeared but decided to eat small since it would take longer to get away from his old family from the table. Not that he minded spending more time with Mito. It was Minato and Kashina he minded. Ka san what's with the shed? Reina wondered. Naruto looked at it and wondered the same thing. The shed is a terrain device. It allows you to choose what kind of terrain you want. Also the temperature. Rika informed. Does it include gravity? Naruto asked. Yes. But when the ten years are up these things will all disappear. Since it would be survival. The temperature and gravity can change at any time along with the terrain. Now I must go. So give me hugs. She said. Both turned and gave her a big hug as she kissed both of their heads. All right see you guys in two years. She grinned before fading away. Naruto and Reina sighed as she left them alone. Um, Naruto-kun. Reina called shyly. Naruto turned to her to see that she was looking down at her feet and blushing lightly. Yes rei chan he asked. I was um wondering if you could teach me fuinjutsu. I want to learn how to seal weapons on me. She said. Naruto grinned at her. Sure rei chan Come on let's get started. Naruto grinned and grabbed her hand. She eeped while he dragged her to the house on the left. Once they entered Naruto stared in amazement at the living room. There was a couch and kitchen, stairs that led to a bedroom. Probably for if they wanted to stay the night or get comfortable while studying. I wonder which way leads to the fuinjutsu section. Naruto pondered out loud. Reina had a full blush as he was still holding her hand. The only time they made contact like this was if they were training or she snuck up on him to flirt. I know, he said before they ran off to the left hallway. After running a couple of feet they stopped at a door that had the kanji, fuinjutsu. Naruto opened the door to see the whole room was filled with shelves of fuinjutsu. In the center and against a wall were desks to sit. Naruto let go of her hand and made his way over to the beginner section. Okay Rei chan the first thing about fuinjutsu is having excellent calligraphy. With crappy calligraphy the seal will be wrong and probably ending up killing you. So we're gonna test it out okay. He smiled at her. Okay Naruto-kun. She nodded. Naruto grinned and started to tell her more about fuinjutsu. When he set her all up he went to the high intermediate low master section. After picking up where he left off in Konoha he sat down next to her and began studying also. They both studied for at least five hours straight and felt that it was sufficient enough to take a break. Naruto stood and stretched. I'm going to meditate, Naruto said. For what Naruto-kun? Reina asked. Because if I want to master all the elemental jutsu then I need to fully open my other chakras. 
Naruto explained. Reina nodded. But the chakras I have open now are only partly open only giving me some power. Anyway catch you later. Naruto waved before leaving. Reina waved too before standing up and decided to get something to eat. Naruto was sitting on top of a point of a mountain in a rocky terrain. He was in the Indian position with his arms crossed and head down low with his eyes closed. Naruto channeled his chakra till the ground started to shake. Biofre he knew if the whole area was having an earthquake. Naruto opened his eyes and jumped from the place where he was sitting to dodge the kick Reina sent at him. Now floating in air he narrowed his eyes at her. What are you doing Reina? Naruto asked. I think that chakra stuff is crap. Instead of trying to master that you should try mastering how to become a super saiyan. Reina said seriously. What are you getting at? Naruto asked, do you remember what Ka-san said, about ascending to another level? She asked, Naruto gave her nod, well I think we should work on that, she said, Naruto nodded, but how am I gonna become a super saiyan? Naruto asked, rage, Reina said, rage, Naruto asked, yes, becoming a super saiyan is a need not a desire, how I became a super saiyan was because I was angry. I let all my precious people die and I couldn't help them. All the people I loved died. I was so angry that I became a super saiyan. I still can but it's difficult to maintain. Reina said. Wow Ray chan sounds like you've been alive for a long time. Naruto grinned. Reina blushed in embarrassment but became serious again when Naruto spoke. Well then how can I become a super saiyan? When I fought Zanjetsu I became one but I was angry that my dark side was taking over me. But, why was your dark side created in the first place? Reina cut in. Because of the Namikaze parents. They ignored me over my sister. Naruto said. Then that's it. Focus on that rage. Focus on all the things they did to you over your sister. Think about Konoha how they treated you. Think about all of that and you can become a Super Saiyan. Reina stated. Will that work? Naruto asked. I don't know. But you'll have to try. Reina shrugged. Naruto nodded, before taking a deep breath. Flashback. Ka-san. Ka-san. Look what I made. A three-year-old Naruto grinned running up to her. Not now Naruto I'm busy. Kashina said. Naruto looked at what she was doing. It looked like paperwork because there were stacks on the table. But that didn't matter right now. But Ka-san look. Naruto said trying to give her his picture. Yeah it's great Naruto but I'm busy. Kashina said not even looking at it. But, Naruto, go to your room, Kashina yelled. Naruto stepped back and looked at her with wide eyes. But Ka-san, what did I just say? She asked now glaring at him. Naruto now had tears falling from his eyes and ran upstairs while Kashina sighed in relief and returned to her paperwork. Hey Tu san can we go train now? A four-year-old Naruto asked. Minato was in his home office trying to sort some things out. Not now Naruto I'm busy. Maybe next time, Minato said. But Tu san, that's what you said last time. And the time before that. Why is it when Mito asks you and Ka-san jump at the chance but shoo me away? Naruto asked. Naruto I'm busy. Go ask your mother. He said. I did. But she said ask you. Naruto said. Well what is she doing? He asked. Training Mito. Now please. Naruto asked. She's training Mito now, why didn't she tell me? Minato asked while standing up to join them. Father, Naruto called. Sorry Naruto but I need to train Mito also. Go play with your friends or something. Minato said before walking away while Naruto stood there in shock. Flashback end. As Naruto remembered those memories his ki started to rise. His fist clenched head together while his veins started to pop. Reina watched in sadness because no one should have to gain power by remembering how their parents treated them badly. Flashback. Naruto was now five years old and was going to ask his mother if she could take him for ramen. Hey Ka-san can we go for ramen today? Naruto asked with a grin. Kashina finished drinking her juice and looked at Naruto with a raised eyebrow. What do you mean? She asked. You promised you would take me for ramen today. Remember. You took Mito without me yesterday and promised to take me today. Naruto reminded. Did I? Well how about tomorrow? Kashina asked. Ka-san. Naruto whined. Oh okay Naruto. Let's go then. Kashina said. 
Naruto grinned as he and his mother left for ramen. As they were walking the streets Naruto noticed all the glares the villagers were sending him. He looked up to his mother for safety but was disappointed when she looked indifferent like she wasn't aware of anything. Hey Kashina, a voice called. They both stopped and looked behind them to see Jiraiya walking towards them. I knew that red hair when I see it. Jiraiya grinned. What can I do for you pervy sage? Kashina asked. Oh Minato wanted you to come by the office. Tsunade is there also. We want to talk about Mito's training. Jiraiya said. Oh really I'm on my way. Kashina said. But Ka-san what about ramen? Naruto asked. This is important Naruto. Plus you can eat ramen by yourself can't you? Kashina asked. But I wanted to have ramen with you. Naruto said. Naruto this is important. Don't you want your orants to help your sister? Jiraiya asked with a smile. Naruto glared at him. Don't worry Naruto I'll be back soon. Just wait for me okay? She smiled. Naruto gave a hesitant nod. And walked into the ramen shop but not without watching his mother and godfather's retreating backs. Oh hey Naruto-kun. You wanna order something? Ayame asked. No not yet Ayame-chan. I'm gonna wait for Ka-san to come back. Naruto gave a saddened smile. Ayame nodded and walked off. Hours passed as Naruto waited for his mother to come back. He waited and waited and waited some more but she never came back. He was hungry, very hungry but he wanted to eat with his mother. When he looked outside it was nighttime. Naruto stood off from the stool and began to walk home when a something hit the back of his head. Falling to the ground with weary eyes Naruto set a rock on the side of him. Touching the back of his head and looking at his hand Naruto saw blood. Who threw that? Naruto asked and looked back to see a mob of angry villagers. We have you now demon. A villager snarled. Naruto crawled away with a frightened look but they came closer and when they finally approached he screamed for his life. An hour later Naruto barged in the house to see his parents on the couch with Mito sleeping between them. He was livid. Naruto's blonde hair had dried blood in it. He bruises and cuts all over his body his clothes were torn in places and he had a nasty welt on his cheek. His bottom lip was busted while blood trickled out his mouth. And this was after Kayubi healed his major wounds. Naruto where were you? And why are you like that? Minato asked. Naruto glared at his father. Naruto answer him. Kashina ordered. Naruto then glared at her sending deadly amounts of ki at her with the help of Kayubi. You. I waited for hours at the ramen stand waiting for you to come back. I was so alone. And you never came. You never came to at least take me home. You abandoned me. Naruto cried. Both parents watched with uninterested eyes but were listening. Then when I tried to come home, they found me. They beat me up and started cutting me. I screamed and begged for them to stop. But, they didn't. I screamed for you to come save me but you never came. You never came. I hate you. I hate you in this village along with this family. I hate you all. Naruto screamed tears streaming down his blood red eyes. They couldn't see it but his hair was turning golden and his eyes were flashing teal. Mito started to stir as she heard her brother's scream. Aniki. She muttered. Naruto quiet you're waking your sister up. Minato said. Naruto's eyes widened. Aha. Gura a a h h h. Naruto screamed in rage as his eyes turned a pupil less teal and his hair was flashing gold with a flame like aura. Both parents were stunned at what they were seeing. Mito however didn't care about the power output and saw her brother's condition. Jumping out of her parents' laps she hugged Naruto who was still screaming in rage. Aniki please calm down, please. Mito begged. Naruto didn't hear her as his whole eye socket turned blue and his hair was turning a spiky sliver. Outside of the house the sky was turning different shades and the ground was shaking. In the house everything was being blown back. Minato and Kashina had to cover their eyes, wondering what was happening. Naruto's form started to bulk as his skin started to crack. Unknown to all above Naruto's screaming form was a wild bubbling liquid. Mito hugged Naruto closer as he cried. Please Naruto-kun, come back to me, I'm sorry for whatever they did. Please come back, Mito begged. Naruto started to calm down as the flame aura started to die down. His blue eyes calmed down till his pupils were back. His silver hair started to back down and turn back to blonde. The sky turned back to the night sky and the power output died back down. 
Naruto was back to normal but he was tired. Really tired. Minato and Kashina looked in disbelief as their daughter calmed their wild son. Now seeing such talent they needed to up her training. Naruto pushed away his sister and started to walk upstairs. Naruto. Kashina called. Naruto stopped and glared at her. I'm not in the mood now, Kashina Minato. Good night Mito-chan and I hate you too. Naruto glared sending off one more burst of KI and went to his room. Both parents were somewhat affected by the lack in respect but shrugged it off as Mito looked at them in disgust and worry for her brother. Flashback end. Ha, ah, Naruto screamed while charging his rage. His hair was rising as well as flashing golden. His eyes were turning teal as his muscles started to grow. But something was different. The flame-like aura around him was a light blue while black and red sparks flying everywhere. His golden hair was now turning silver with gold in some places. Not to mention his hair was now more rigid than a regular Super Saiyan. Suddenly a flash of light and a bang of energy flashed the area. After it faded away Naruto was standing there. His hair was silver and more rigid than it was in his mindscape not to mention a little longer. The bang in front of his right eye was a little higher and thinner. Imagine Brawly's hair in regular Super Saiyan, with a bang framing the right side of his face. His eyes were a cold merciless teal. His muscles were a little bigger but not hulkish. His orange clothes were brighter thanks to the rigid aura that surrounded him. Also sparking around him was red and black sparks. Unknown to both Saiyans present, he achieved Super Saiyan 2. Whoa Naruto, this is amazing. Reina gasped. Reina, this is not my Super Saiyan form. Naruto said in a serious voice. Hun, what do you mean? She asked. This, Naruto said before taking a sigh. Within seconds the sparks stopped, his aura became more calmer as did his hair but that wasn't it. His hair turned from silver to gold with some silver strands in some places. Is my Super Saiyan form? I'm guessing the one I just used was the other level you were talking about. Naruto said in a less serious tone. So there are other levels. Ryan pondered. Yes, it must depend on how much rage you have. If you channeled your rage into power then you could probably do it also. But it has to be more intense than the first time. Naruto explained. What do you mean? She asked. When I first went Super Saiyan in my mindscape it was because I was angry at myself. I was angry at myself for not being strong enough to fight off my dark thoughts. This time it I was furious at my birth parents. How they treated their son and didn't care what he felt. How they ignored him over their daughter. Naruto said. I see. Reina said before she noticed Naruto's power died down. I may be able to achieve but I must maintain. That means training. Naruto said. So you agree with my training method? She asked. Yeah. Naruto smirked. Ha. Huh. He shouted as he transformed into a Super Saiyan. Good let's get started. Reina smirked before her turned golden in a burst. Both charged at each other and begun their sparring. Naruto managed to knee her stomach making her hunch over and smash her down with his combined fists. Reina didn't take to kindly to that and decided to charge her ray blast. Ion Ray. She shouted thrusting both hands out to shoot at her. Kamehameha. Naruto yelled shooting his blast at her. Both energy rays made contact and begun to push against each other. If they kept this up, they would be stronger in no time. Elsewhere, Mito sighed as she flopped down on her brother's bed. It's been at least two weeks since he left and since then she slept in his room. She even wore his tracksuit jacket at night so she could smell his scent. Some would call her weird but for some reason she felt way closer to her brother than a sister should. Shrugging to herself she stood up and walked to his desk. Ever since he left things changed. The house was more gloomy than it already was. Not to mention her ninja career changed as well. She was put on a team with Sayuri and Sai. Sayuri had been training non-stop and has been less social than before. She would still hang out with Mito but she wouldn't smile as much anymore. Plus the remarks Sai kept saying about Naruto pissed them both off. Sayuri went as far to punch Sai in the face. Mito stopped her before she could do any more but warned Sai if he said another thing about her brother he would be on the receiving end of her fist instead of the training post. Sai actually showed emotion no matter how small it was, he showed fear. Kakashi Hataki was their sensei. 
Instead of being three hours late like always he was actually at least 10 to 15 minutes late and didn't read his smut that much. He's been teaching them teamwork and stuff for a while. He didn't need to teach them tree walking or anything like that since all three knew it due to Mito learning from her parents. Speaking of her parents they have been depressed a lot lately. Her mother is always cleaning or taking her self-inflicted anger out on a post. And if she wasn't doing that she was going through family scrapbooks. She would look at pictures Naruto was in and noticed how he was either glaring at them, frowning or just plain emotionless. But one thing she always noticed was he was always a few inches away from the family. Her father was always in the office doing paperwork. And he actually one time finished his paperwork without complaining or taking a break. Once he ran out of paperwork he would assign missions to teams or go out to train. She also noticed how she wouldn't see Itachi or Anko around as much. Itachi would be around sometimes to hang out with Naruto but now since he was gone the Uchiha genius was doing missions non-stop. She didn't know what connection Anko had with her brother but the usual cheery crazy snake lady was seen around with a scowl or frown on her face. She left her dango half-eaten and you could hear some muffled screams coming from the T&I department. Yeah, scary. Mito noticed her brother's journal on the desk and decided to read it. Maybe if she read it she could know more about her brother than she already did. She read some of it but it was mostly when he was younger. So she decided to read when he was 12. Laying back down on the bed she began reading. Mito Chan and I just went to the clothing department. Usually I get thrown out but this girl named Lauren was pretty nice and even gave us a discount. I got some cool durable clothes plus the jacket was orange which is a huge plus in my book. Anyway Mito Chan got some clothes too. At first they were too shinobi like and Shed didn't really like them that much. So I helped D her chose something that was comfortable to wear and something she would like. Once she came out that dressing room I swear I was looking at an angel. I don't know why I felt like that but I wanted to hold her for a long time. I don't know what these feelings are but I hope I figure them out soon. Mito blushed when she read that. He thought she was an angel. Something stirred in her stomach but she decided to keep reading so she flipped to the next page. It was a few days after the clothing store. Today me and Mito chan decided to go swimming since it's getting hot in the village. We invited Sayuri but she said she wanted to hang out with Itachi since he just came back from a long term A rank mission. We wore clothes over our swimming wear. Well I wore a shirt and Mito chan wore clothes. I got some new trunks from the clothing store since my old ones are old and too tight. So these ones are orange with black flames on the bottom. Cool hun. Anyway we decided to go to a new area so it was just us. We traveled to a meadow where there was a decent waterfall and all. The place looked great and peaceful. As I was taking off I noticed Mito chan undressing. For some odd reason my heart started beating faster as I watched her undress. Even though she didn't know it felt like a long time before she undressed. It was agonizing. And that isn't the worst part. Her bathing suit was a two-piece bikini. The top was red with pink flowers adoring it. The string hung above her tan y neck. What am I saying? Oh what the hell it's not like she is gonna read this anyway. And if she does then I am already dead. I hope. Anyway it was covering her nice perky B cup. But what got me was her flat toned muscled stomach that led to her sacred area where the other piece was. A pink flower over her pink flower. Hee <laughs> hee. I nearly passed out from blood loss. Why? Because I saw how the bottom piece shaped around her round ass. It was almost like a thong. By this time my little friend became my big friend and I had no choice but to jump in the water so she couldn't see me. I hoped she didn't. But things calmed down enough for us to have fun and relaxed. But every once in a while I would take a glance at her. I wonder what these feelings are and hope they go away soon. Now Mito had a full blown blush. Her brother really thought that way about her. To say she was shocked was an understatement. She was beyond shocked. She remembered that day as well and wondered why he was acting weird. But Mito also remembered how she acted when she saw his shirtless body. Her she got a little hot just by thinking about it. Deciding to move on she flipped a couple pages ahead and skim read. She read how he started to develop feelings for Sayuri. It made her a little sad but happy when he was developing strange feelings for her as well. Then she stopped on a page. Her heart nearly stopped when she was done reading it. 
So it's been about a year since Mito chan and I went swimming together. And I finally figured out what feelings I hold towards her thanks to Kyu chan and Zanjetsu. I love her. I love her more than a brother should and I'm not sure if it's a good or bad thing. She's became more beautiful than I should realize and I just want to be with her more. She makes me happy. More happy than anybody does. I'm happy when she's happy even if she is learning something those bastards are teaching her that I should learn also. I've also noticed when I'm happy she's happy which makes me even more happy because she's happy. But I don't know how to approach her about it. I don't want to lose her because I told her my feelings. Plus how would Sayuri feel if she found out I bear feelings for my twin sister instead of her? I notice how Sayuri acts around me and how she blushes when I look at her. I want both of them but I can't. Because in the end they will both end up being hurt because I will leave soon. Mito closed the journal and put it back on the desk. She laid back down and fell asleep dreaming about her brother. Trying to find out what her feelings for him was and how she should act upon it when he returned. But lastly she was wondering if he was okay. With Naruto and Reina, both were currently sitting on a boulders having a staring contest. Naruto's eye twitched while sweat rolled down Reina's brow. They have been at this for an hour now because they were bored. It's been at nine years since they entered the dimension. And like Rika said she visited them every two years to check up on them. On the seventh year Naruto mastered all the jutsu in the jutsu mansion. He was also a fuinjutsu god. Reina also mastered some jutsu and was a fuinjutsu master but decided to not use them that much. Naruto was the same. He may know all the jutsu thanks to opening all his chakras but wanted to stick to ki since it was much easier. Reina mastered all the weapons on the sixth year. She also sealed some weapons in on her person so she could use them when the survival started. Naruto didn't master them but he mastered a few. For example he mastered a couple of weapons. The Eclipse Scythe was one of them along with Hikurasama Gama. He also started to craft his own blade but didn't have the right materials. So the only thing he has is a hilt which was in his pocket somewhere. Lastly they both mastered their Super Saiyan forms. They could transform into a regular Super Saiyan without any problems and could hold it up for a long ass time. They decided in the first year to train and stay as Super Saiyans for four years. Naruto also could maintain his Super Saiyan 2 stage as he called it. Reina couldn't achieve the form due to not having enough rage but she promised she would find a way. Naruto tried going farther than Super Saiyan 2 but couldn't. At all. He would raise his KI and strength but that was it. The boy thinks it has something to do with not being a full Super Saiyan. So right now they were bored. And they had nothing to do till Naruto blinked and said, Hey. Ray chan I have an idea. Reina blinked a couple times as Naruto started to grin. Well what is it Naruto-kun? She asked. Well you know we only have a two more days till our time is up and we need to do survival. Naruto asked. She nodded. Well I was thinking why don't we use them for vacation. We've been training non-stop and I could use a break. Naruto grinned. Well what are we gonna do? She asked. Well we could head over to the shed change the gravity to normal and change the scenery. Naruto said. What kind of scenery? She asked. Hmm. How about the beach? Yeah. Naruto grinned. The beach. Well okay. I'll go put on my bathing suit. She grinned before running off. Naruto smiled to himself. This way he could actually get Reina to be his. Since spending 10 years in here with her Naruto has gotten closer. He actually started to develop feelings for her on King Kai's planet but thought it wasn't appropriate since he was still trying to get over Sayuri and his sister. He still constantly thought about the two and planned on seeing them once he returned for the Chunin exams. He figured out a way to have all three of them. The CRA. Even though he wasn't a full-time ninja anymore he believed in that kind of thing if it was out of love and he would be able to do it. He planned on making his own clan soon and it would be necessary. Shaking his head out of those thoughts he made his way back in the house to get his trunks. There was also one other woman he planned on making his. And he would release her as soon as he was back in the real world. Kayubi. Or he would call her Kira. He named her. Because she allowed him. Flashback. It's been three years since Naruto and Reina started their training. And Naruto was currently in his bed looking at the ceiling. Naruto-kun. I need to talk to you. Kayubi said. What is it Q-chan? Naruto asked. 
Just come into the seal. It's important, Kayubi said. Naruto shrugged but did it nonetheless. Once he reopened his eyes he was standing in a green field. He walked over to the cherry blossom tree and sat next to Kayubi who had a far away look. Naruto would have thought she got more beautiful over the years but it was just his imagination Kayubi would always say. Her crimson red hair was pulled back into a ponytail as she allowed two bangs to frame the side of her face. The pink supple lips he enjoyed kissing was in a thin line while her blood red eyes her a little dull. She wore a red and black kimono that matched her collar which was the seal. What is it Q-chan? What's wrong? Naruto asked worriedly. I wanted to tell you my name. My real name. She said. Naruto looked confused so she elaborated. When the old man created us he gave us each a name. As Biju only tell our containers our name when we have full trust in them. I trust you Naruto-kun. So I will tell you. It's not really a feminine name but it's Kurama. Kayubi said. Kurama eh? Naruto mused. But, if we chose so we can change our name. I want you to chose my new name Naruto-kun. She said. Naruto looked at her for a second before grinning. Kurana. Akira-chan. Naruto I smiled. Kurana. Kayubi said to herself before hugging Naruto. Thank you Naruto-kun. I love it. She said before kissing him engaging a makeout session which Naruto was happy to participate in. Flashback end. Naruto smiled at the memory and started looking for his trunks. Not being able to find them Naruto went into Reina's room to ask her but froze once he was inside. In front of him was Reina who just got out of the shower drying her hair with her towel. He guessed she took a shower so she could be clean because they were training before engaging in a staring contest. Naruto stared at her beautiful pale body. He started at her blushing face then started traveling down. Her mounds now looked like a perky D cup. Her pink S looked hard no doubt from the cold air. Her areolas were at least 2 centimeters. Then he went farther down to her flat muscled stomach. Lower he saw her trimmed patch of silver hair then to her pink. While all this was happening Reina was panicking wondering what was gonna happen. A part of her wanted to blast him with a Kamehameha while yelling pervert but another larger part of her wanted him to act and start ravishing her body. Uh um, I'll go now, Naruto said nervously. Hira was watching the whole thing and rolled her eyes. With a snap of her fingers Naruto's eyes dulled as he stopped where he was and looked at Reina. He noticed the want in her eyes. He wanted her, she wanted him. What was he gonna do? Act on his want, duh. And that's what he did. Naruto walked over to her and looked down on her since she was about an inch shorter than him. She was frozen still while she looked up at him with an awe-stricken look. Naruto grabbed her chin and smiled at her. You're cute when you're nervous Rei-chan. Naruto cooed before claiming her lips. She tensed before relaxing. This is what she wanted. She wanted this for so long. She would be a complete idiot to deny him when he was hers. So she let go of the towel drying her hair and wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him back. Three years later, Earth, are you sure Goku is gonna show up? Yamcha asked. Of course, I can feel his energy. Piccolo said. Gohan and Krillin were watching till something shocked all of them. No way, I thought Goku killed him. Krillin yelled. That's not possible. Piccolo gasped. What is guys? Bulma asked. Frieza, he's alive. Gohan said. So Kakarot Kult finished the job eh? Vegeta frowned. Up ahead Frieza's ship landed and when it did several soldiers got into two lines on the side of the walking pad. A tall muscular horned alien wearing a brown cape and a machine repaired Frieza walked out the ship. So this is Earth. Not much from space. King Cold said. So this is where that Saiyan monkey lives. Ooh I can't wait to kill everyone he loves and holds dear and greet him once he shows up. It's just pure luck I got here before him. Frieza grinned. So dad is on his way then. Gohan thought while everyone watched Frieza. A wind blew around them making Frieza narrow his eyes so he wouldn't get dust caught. But suddenly they heard a thud. Both colds looked to their side to see one of their men was on the floor sliced in half vertically. Another second passed and the other men fell as well scaring the shit out of Frieza. Who's there? Show yourself. Frieza ordered. The wind blew harder making King Cold and Frieza to close their eyes. Even the Z fighters had too. Once the wind died down they all looked up to see two people in front of Frieza. 
It was a boy with spiky blonde hair that came to his neck and a girl with silver hair tied into a ponytail with a bang framing the left side of her face. The boy was wearing a black high-collar jacket that stopped at his mid-back. Under was a mesh tank top. Running down the side of the jacket arms were orange lines. He had an orange sash that had long ends which blew dramatically in the wind. He wore light gray S which looked like a half-deflated balloon. He wore orange and black boots. The last thing they noticed was the black sheathed katana strap diagonally to his back. The cross guard was a golden swastika. The hilt was at least five inches while the grip was red. The butt of the sword was golden with some kind glowing pink jewel in the center. The girl wore a similar outfit except her jacket was white and not a high collar. It stopped a little higher than her mid-back while she wore a black tank top that was a little tight squeezing against her bust. She wore a silver-looking sash with long ends which gave the same affect as the boys. She wore tight black ass giving a glimpse of her round ass. She wore white strapped one-inch black high heel boots. Strapped to her back was a katana with a red sheath and was the same length as the boys. Nine inches, the cross guard was a gold square. The grip was also five inches while the grip was black. The butt was silver while a red ribbon hung at the end. Who are you? Frieza glared. So you're Frieza. Wow you're more ugly in person. Are you a dude or a girl? The boy asked. Frieza glared even harder while the girl stared impassively. Naruto-kun, do you mind? She asked. All yours, Reina-chan. Naruto said. Reina nodded in thanks. She would show him how grateful she was later. Does anyone know what they're saying? Krillin asked. Piccolo did but was too shocked to say anything. Those are the brats from before. Their power is higher than all of us combined. And that's just the girl. The boy, he is on a whole other level. Who was that woman? Piccolo thought in shock. Vegeta also sensed their power but not as much as Piccolo could. He was wondering who they were. Bulma was drooling at the blonde. She didn't see his face but those muscles were eye candy. Naruto glanced behind him wondering who was I raping him but shook it off. He just hoped it was someone hot. Maybe that Bulma chick, yeah she is hot. I'll ask once again, who are you? Frieza growled, someone you took everything from. You took my friends and my brother. Along with my planet, but I thank you. If it wasn't for you I wouldn't have found my husband. And gained this, Reina said before clenching her fists. She could have gone Super Saiyan without effort but wanted to show Frieza who he was dealing with. Gra, she screamed as her hair raised from the power output. Naruto's eyes didn't leave Frieza but was watching his wife. What is she doing? Everyone asked to themselves. Vegeta was gaining a tick in his eye while Gohan was amazed. He knew what she was doing. She was becoming a Super Saiyan. Naruto glanced to a distant mountain. He channeled chakra to his eyes allowing them to become red and slitted. He raised a brow as he saw a boy with light blonde hair with mixed blue. He looked to be about 16. He was wearing a similar outfit to them but was cut short of his musings when Frieza shouted, No, not another one. Not another Super Saiyan. Everyone's eyes widened besides Naruto who directed his attention back to the colds. Vegeta was angry, Piccolo was shocked as was Gohan, everyone else didn't know what that meant even though Krillin did a little. Yes Frieza, I am a Super Saiyan but I'm more powerful than Goku is. Now I can finally have my revenge. Frieza, Reina charged at an impossible speed for anyone besides Naruto. In a blur Reina passed Frieza and was now standing on top of their ship. Frieza managed to get into the air with luck but not without losing an arm his right. Ah! Oh. He screamed as his blood gushed out his arm. Cold looked at his son then to Reina but noticed how Naruto was watching him. Who are you two? Cold asked. You damn Saiyan monkey, I will kill you and destroy this planet. Frieza yelled before bursting high into the air. Both half Saiyans watched impassively as Frieza rose into the sky. Both made eye contact and Reina nodded. I guess it's my turn to step in. Naruto muttered. Frieza raised his hand with his pointer finger pointing to space. You will feel my power. Frieza yelled while he created his death ball and threw at them. As it flew towards them it grew in size. He's going to kill us all. Krillin yelled while everyone's eyes widened. The boy Naruto spotted was going to jump in when Naruto made a step. Pocketing his left hand he pointed his right palm at the energy ball that could destroy Earth. Sending a small burst of chakra, 
Energy and Reiatsu the Death Ball made contact with some kind of invisible barrier and was sent past Frieza into space. Everyone was shocked because Naruto could have killed Frieza but didn't. Frieza was about to speak when Reina disappeared in a blur and sliced Frieza in many bits. It happened so fast Frieza didn't even spill any blood. Perish. She glared before sending a key blast at Frieza killing him instantly. Cold watched in fear as his son was killed before his very eyes. Hell everyone was shocked besides Naruto. Reina flew back down to stand next to her lover. Feel better Rei chan Naruto asked. Tons. Thanks Naru kun Reina grinned before they turned to see Cold staring at them. Now what are we gonna do with you? Naruto grumbled. Who are you? To defend against my son's special move is quite a feat. Cold praised. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Oh really? It was so easy a baby could do it. But then again I'm not exactly normal. Naruto said. I can tell. I'm guessing you're both Saiyans then. Cold asked. Yes they are. A male voice said. Naruto glanced upward and watched as the boy he noticed fly down to stand next to him. Naruto could see now that the boy had pale white hair. His face was angular and his hair seemed framed his head like a bowel cut and two strands hovering over his forehead. He was pretty muscular but lean like him. He wore the same outfit he wore except the color schemes were different. His jacket was a medium high collar and was blue with the capsule corp. Symbol on his shoulders. The jacket stopped at his low back and wore a black tank top. Across his chest was a light blue strap that strapped his double-edged sword to his back. He wore an orange belt with black S and orange and black shoes. Reina took an interest in the kids because he seemed familiar. Naruto just wondered who the hell he was. But something in the back of his mind told him he knew the kid but didn't know why so he ignored it. Who are you? Cold asked the question everyone was thinking. My name is Trunks. And I am a Saiyan also. Trunks said as he turned Super Saiyan. Naruto and Reina's eyes widened. They knew Goku could become a Super Saiyan due to their Ka San, telling them his progress but this my Terrasis kid. Vegeta was seething two Super Saiyans. He probably knew Kakarot could go Super Saiyan and had a hunch that blonde kid could also but this new guy. Plus it seemed those two didn't even know who he was. How the hell can he go Super Saiyan? He must be the son of one of Saiyans then. Ray Chan and me. No his hair is almost silver and not quite. Vegeta. No guy seems too arrogant to want kids. Plus the kid is like 1516. This giving me a headache. Naruto inwardly groaned. Who is he? If he is a Saiyan then he must be Naru kun and me or Vegeta, Gohan or Goku but I doubt since he has Chi Chi. Could he be from another dimension? Reina thought, also forming a headache she gave up. Three Super Saiyans, what are the odds? Krillin said, you have lived long enough King Cold. Join your son, Trunks said before sending a ray beam at Cold's heart killing him. The body slammed against the ship. The three flew into the air while Naruto sent a key blast at the ship making it explode. The three then made their way over to the stunned Z fighters. Who the hell are you three? And you can't be Saiyans because only me, that idiot Kakarot and his half-breed son are Saiyans. Vegeta ranted. Man you're loud and arrogant. Naruto said picking his ear. Reina giggled while Trunks had a small smirk. Anyway, Reina chan and I are Saiyans. Half Saiyans to be precise. Our parents were sent to different planets when they were born and had us. They know nothing of their heritage well at least my father and mother don't. Naruto said. What? Who is the full Saiyan? Vegeta wondered. My father. My mother is half Saiyan. Naruto answered. What is the name of your planet? Vegeta asked. Elam. Our elemental nations as the inhabitants call it. It's an exact copy of Earth except the time is different and the gravity is higher there. Naruto shrugged. Elam, and you? Vegeta asked. Tarok. Reina answered. Vegeta was shocked those two planets were dangerous because the Saiyans they sent were never heard from again. But it was strange because his aunt who was supposed to be the ruler of Saiyans instead of his father was sent to Elam. And the woman they sent to Tarok was weak and they wanted to get rid of her. I'm sorry to interrupt but don't you guys want to see Goku? He should be landing soon. Trunks interrupted. All stared at him till Naruto nodded. Sure. Do you know where he'll land? Naruto asked politely. Yeah, follow me. Trunks grinned before flying off. The Z fighters started to fly off when Bulma shouted at them. 
Naruto didn't take off yet so he made his way over. I can take you Bulma. Naruto smiled. Bulma blushed at seeing Naruto. He was handsome. Chi thank you um, Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto smiled. Bulma smiled back before she eeped. Why? Because Naruto picked her up bridal style and flew off. Reina noticed Naruto and smirked. So he has spotted his prey hun. That Naruto. She shook her head before speeding off. Meanwhile Naruto and Bulma were making conversation. Once they landed he sat on a boulder with Bulma next to him. Under them was Trunks who took out a capsule and threw it. From the smoke was a mini fridge with sodas. Anyone want some sodas? Trunks asked. I'll take one. Naruto raised his hand. Trunks nodded and tossed one to Naruto and to Reina who leaned against the boulder Naruto was sitting on. Gohan and Krillin along with Purr and Shoutsu took a soda also while Piccolo and Vegeta stared stoically at Trunks and Reina. Vegeta was trying to solve the mystery behind the Saiyans while Piccolo was reading their power. Gohan and Krillin talked with Reina and Trunks. Well Gohan and Krillin talked with Reina as Trunks listened. So Naruto how do you know Goku? Bulma asked. Well Rei Chan and I trained with Goku when he was on King Kai's planet. We really connected with each other. When the Prince of Two, Prince of Two, who's that? Bulma wondered. Hum, Vegeta, you know how he claims he's the Prince of all Saiyans well he is the only Prince of Two Saiyans. Naruto said making her laugh. What about you and the other two? Bulma asked. No one rules me and Rei Chan is the same. I don't know about that Trunks kid though. I'm guessing no. Naruto shrugged. I see. So you wanted to help Goku? She asked. Oh yeah. I wanted to help Goku fight the Saiyans but King Kai didn't allow me to. Saying how I wasn't ready. But my Ka San bailed me and Rei Chan out allowing us to train somewhere for a while. We he he kinda cut the time short by one year instead of taking the full three years. No doubt Ka San will be mad at us. Naruto muttered making Bulma laugh once again. So Naruto, what is your connection with Reina? Bulma wondered. Hmm. Well Rei Chan is my wife. Naruto stated making her eyes widen. Why your wife? But aren't you like 16 or something? She asked. What month is it? Naruto asked. September why? She asked. Well my birthday is in October. But since time is different on my home planet I must be like 20 something. But I don't feel like being that old. So yeah I'm about 16. Naruto shrugged. So then why are you marrying young? Bulma asked. Well Bull Chan. On my planet we live a life of ninja and our lifestyle tends to make us die really early. So our teachers and elders tell us to live life to the fullest cause your village may be under attack tomorrow and you will die. Naruto shrugged. Bulma nodded and scooted away from him a little bit. Naruto frowned when he saw this and said, Bulma, I want you to know that I can take on more than one wife. I already have two. Rei Chan is actually my second wife. My first is not present at the moment though. I plan on taking more wives in the future anyway. So if you're worried about Reina don't be. Naruto shrugged. But I'm so much older than you. Bulma said. And. My first wife is way older than everyone here combined. Age is nothing but a number. And plus I can help you with your aging fear. Naruto smirked. Hun fear. She asked. Yeah. Goku told me how you hate it when people comment on your age. All women hate it but you take it to an extreme. If you want I can revert you to a young age but I can only do it once on a person. Naruto said. You would do that, for me? She asked. You betcha. Naruto grinned. Bulma was about to glomp him but there was an explosion causing everyone to turn their heads. Man I knew I shouldn't have made that left turn on Mars. A voice said. The smoke faded away to reveal Goku in some weird ass outfit. D daddy. Daddy. Gohan yelled and hugged his father. Hey Gohan. Man you've gotten bigger. Goku grinned. Hey old friend. Krillin smiled. Hey Krillin have you gotten taller? Goku asked. Well I have been eating my vegetables. Krillin smirked. Goku. Piccolo called. Hey Piccolo how ya doin? Goku grinned. Fine. Piccolo smirked. Kakarot. Vegeta smirked. Hey Vegeta. Nice shirt. Goku laughed making Vegeta glare at Bulma. It's her fault. Vegeta muttered. Hey men like pink. Bulma laughed. I don't. Naruto muttered making her laugh harder. Hey Naruto Reina. How are you guys? King Kai told me that you guys were training. 
Why are you out so early? Goku asked. We kinda broke out, Reina said sheepishly, more like you screamed in rage. She wanted to be the one to kill Frieza and when Ka San said he would land on Earth in a few days she went berserk. Naruto smirked while Reina sent him a glare then pouted. Goku can I talk to you for a minute? Trunks asked seriously. Hun, sure why not? Goku said. Alone, Trunks said. Goku turned serious and raised a brow before nodding behind him. Trunks nodded and both flew off while the others watched. Thanks Goku for doing this but first, Trunks turned Super Saiyan and drew his sword and attacked Goku who also turned Super Saiyan and blocked the sword with his forefinger. After giving a few strikes and Goku blocking with the same finger Trunks stepped back and powered down. Goku also powered down. So it's true what they say. You are powerful. Trunks smirked sheathing his sword. You're pretty good yourself. So who are you exactly? If you can go Super Saiyan then you must be the son of one of us but you're too old. Goku pondered. Well first off, I'm not from your timeline. I'm from the future. I dark future where only destruction and chaos lays. Trunks said in a cold tone. What happened? Goku wondered. In three years time two androids will be unleashed in the world. I was only a baby when it happened though. The androids were named 17 and 18. They destroyed everything in their path acting as if it were some kind of game. Trunks glared at the ground. Where were we during this time? Where was I? Goku asked. You were dead. Trunks said. Again. Goku asked with wide eyes. Yes. But you didn't die in action. You died from a virus. There was no cure for it and it took your life. Trunks said. And what of the others? Goku asked. They all died one by one. Krillin was the first, then Yamcha, Tien and Chiyatsu, Piccolo Vegeta, what about Naruto and Reina? Goku wondered. That was a little difficult. From what I heard from my mother Naruto and Reina were a little difficult for the androids but they killed Naruto first due to trickery. Soon after Reina fell from rage, she wasn't thinking straight and was killed by both with ease. Naruto's other wives also fell. Trunks said. Other wives? He has more than one. Goku asked. Yes. Naruto tried fighting them off but it was useless. When you died he trained Gohan to become a Super Saiyan. When Naruto and Reina died his other wives tried to avenge them but it wasn't possible. Gohan trained me when I was old enough but he eventually died also. Trunks glared. So who is left? Goku asked. It's just me. My father died before I was born though. Trunks said. Who are you parents? Goku wondered. I'll tell you but you can't tell them it might mess it up. But they way they're going now it will happen soon. Trunks smirked. Hoo hoo. Goku grinned. Trunks looked around to make sure no one was around and covered his cheek and whispered, Naruto and Bulma. Goku jumped and was about to yell when Trunks covered his mouth. Be quiet or they'll hear you. Trunks growled. Sorry it's just I don't believe it. I kinda expected Vegeta and Bulma. But, Goku looked over to see Bulma laughing at Naruto making fun of an irate Vegeta. Now I can see it. So I'm guessing she is one of his wives. Goku asked. Yes. His other wives are his sister, Reina, Kurana, and his childhood friend Sayuri. Trunks whispered. His sister. Goku asked. Yeah. Father made a wish with the Dragon Balls to become a full Saiyan so after that he really wasn't related to her. His other wives were like mothers to me besides Reina since she died with my father. They didn't die immediately but a few years after. Oh and Kurana died right when Naruto died if not a few seconds later. Trunks explained. Wow, some bond. Goku muttered. Yeah, but from what my mother said Kurana was always doting me when she was pregnant making a bet that I would be a boy instead of a girl which my mother wanted. Trunks said. But I don't get it. Naruto is blonde. Goku said. Trunks nodded. Kai. Trunks said. His image shimmered a bit before he had blonde and pale hair. It was kind of spike in the back. Mito Ka San and Sayuri Ka San taught me a few jutsu. Henge was one of them. Anyway we got off track here. Trunks said readjusting his henge and handed Goku a small vial. What's this? Goku asked. That's a medicine my mother created. It's supposed to fight against the virus once you become sick. Don't take it now as it would be useless and don't lose it. My mother thinks my father was suffering from the disease also that's why he lost. Trunks said. Okay thanks. 
Can you tell me what these androids look like? Goku asked after pocketing the vial. Yes. Trunks nodded and explained what they looked like. After they were done they both flew back over to the group. That took a long ass time. What the hell were you two talking about? Naruto asked. They were talking about the androids that are coming in three years. Piccolo said gaining weird looks from everyone and stunned looks from Goku and Trunks. Androids. Those things actually exist. Reina asked. Yes. From what I heard these two are dangerous and killed all of us except Goku. He died from a disease. Piccolo informed. Hold up even me. How the hell is that possible? Naruto asked. You were tricked by them and were already fighting some type of sickness. It was different from Goku as it wouldn't kill you unless you did major things. Trunks said. This is serious. Kira-chan can this happen? Naruto asked. I don't know Naruto-kun. You have never gotten sick before but if this kid is telling the truth then it could be possible. Kira replied. Naruto nodded. So we need to train for three years hun. Well then better get ready. Reina chan and I have an exam to take back on my planet. Naruto said getting a glance from Trunks. Is it that Chunin thing you were talking about? Goku asked. That's the one. Anyway I won't I'll be gone for a couple of months since time runs slowly there. By the way Goku and Gohan and even though I hate to admit it you also Vegeta. When I return I am gonna turn you two into a super saiyan. And Goku teach you how to maintain. Naruto said seriously. Me a super saiyan, are you sure? Gohan asked. You betcha buddy. Naruto grinned. Gohan grinned back. He was happy to gain a new friend who was willing to teach him. Vegeta snorted. I don't need your help clown. I am an elite. I don't need help from common trash. Vegeta said. Yeah whatever. If you don't want it not my problem. By the way Gokum you think you can search for the Dragon Balls. I want to make a wish when I return. Naruto said. Sure no problem. Goku shrugged. Thanks. Well we better go. Let's go Rei Chan. See ya Bulma Chan. Naruto waved while floating. Reina followed his lead. Bye Naruto kun. She waved while he flew away. I better head out too. I'll see you guys in three years. Trunks said before leaving. Goku walked over to Piccolo and the Namek guessed what he wanted to talk about. Don't worry I won't give up the kid's history. Not my business but I was surprised as you. When do you think it will happen? Piccolo asked while looking at Bulma who was staring off in Naruto's direction. I would have to say within the three years. Anyway, will you HLP with Gohan's training? Goku asked. Piccolo nodded before he left also. Hey Bulma I'll drop you off at home. Goku smiled getting a nod from Bulma. After that everyone left ready to train their asses off. Naruto and Reina stood on a mountain as they saw a portal open up. Hey Ka-san. Reina waved sheepishly and flinched under Rika's killer smile. Naruto also flinched but not as big. Naruto-kun, Reina-chan. The next time you two decide to cut my training, don't. Rika said in an overly sweet tone. Both nodded. Good. By the way I'm not mad at you two. I knew it was gonna happen. To tell you the truth I'm the one who opened the portal for you. Rika shrugged. Cool. Anyway can we go now? Naruto asked. Yeah, it's only two hours before the exam starts. Let's go. Rika said getting nods from both. The two half Saiyans followed her in the portal ready to begin. Literally standing on the air were two people. One had a long hooded black cloak that covered his whole body. Tensa Zanjetsu's cloak. The person next to him wore a white haori which had a hood. In the back of the Haori was the kanji for 12. These two figures were Naruto and Reina Uzumaki. Naruto's katana was strapped to his back under his cloak. While Reina was strapped to her side like all Shinigami did. The two were looking over the strongest village in the elemental nations. Kanahagakur. So how are we gonna do this Naru-kun? Because we both know one good key blast will level this place to the ground. Reina smirked. I'm thinking about it. And I wish this exam wasn't so long. I really wanted to hang out with Bulma so more. Naruto pouted. Oh don't worry. Do you think she will forget about you while we're gone? Who do you think she'll fall for, Vegeta? She asked. Naruto thought about it. Once this thing is over we are going back. Because I have a feeling that might happen. Naruto said before they both left in blurs. Team 7 appeared behind a crowd that was trying to get past two losers. 
What is going on here? Mito wondered. They won't let us pass. A ninja informed. What do you mean won't let us pass? Sayuri growled. Please just let us in. Ten ten. Shut up. Azumo said backhanding her. We're doing you guys a favor. Katetsu said. What the hell you mean? We're gonna be late. Another nin yelled. You guys aren't ready to take the test. Azumo shrugged. Well I am so move your ass. Naruto said. He walked past Team 7 with his hood still on. Reina was behind him. Who the hell do you think you are? Azumo glared. I'm the person who will wipe you off this planet if you don't move. Naruto glared back under his hood. You are all pathetic. We just got here and we know this is a genjutsu. Reina scoffed. Who are you? Sakura asked. Who we are is none of your concern. For now, leave. Naruto said. Underneath the genin's feet was a black hole. Team 7 and 9 saw it and jumped to the ceiling. The three other teams also noticed it and barely got away. The rest were sucked in along with the disguised Chunin. The only teams on the floor right now were 7, 9, Kiba's team, Sakura's team and Shikamaru's team. Well that cleared the room. Naruto smirked. Wait, who are you? Neji demanded. It's rude to ask for someone's name first without introducing yourself Hayuga. Naruto spat out the name. How did you do that? Shikamaru asked. Naruto ignored them all and continued walking till Mito asked. What happened to them? Naruto smirked and said, Somewhere far from the village. That way they won't make it in time, Naruto said. Elsewhere were the genin who were on the second floor. They were all groaning till one shot up and yelled, Where are we? The others looked at him then paled when they saw the leaf village gate. We're gonna be late, they all yelled and ran for the academy. Too bad it was on the other side of the village. Naruto and Reina were now sitting down watching as the group of genin entered the room. Naruto noticed that the kid with the freakish eyebrows had a bruise on his cheek while Sayuri had that Uchiha smirk. Shaking his head he sensed something was afoot. You shouldn't be too loud. Kabuto said walking from behind them. And who are you? Sayuri demanded. Hem grouchy. My name is Kabuto Yukushi. And this is my seventh time taking the test. Kabuto said shocking the group. What a loser, Naruto and Kiba thought. So if this is your seventh time taking it, that means you're experienced right Kabuto? Sakura asked while getting strange looks from her teammates. Yeah, in fact just to help you guys out I have information that could be useful to you. For example, he drew a deck of cards from his back making Naruto sweat drop. What was this Yu-Gi-Oh? Kabuto channeled Chakra into one card and revealed to be Sayuri. Sayuri Uchiha. Kunoichi of the year along with Mito Namikaze. Your teammates, Mito Namikaze and Sai. No surname. Sensei Kakashi Hitaki, better known as the Copy Ninja. Have done 57 D ranks, 3 C ranks and Wo, 1 A rank. Ninjutsu 7, Taijutsu 7 Genjutsu 5. Kabuto read. Sayuri looked shocked before saying, You got info on Rock Lee, Gara no Subaku and Naruto Namikaze. Kabuto looked at her before nodding. Since you have their names it would be easy. All right Rock Lee is first. Kabuto said. Rock Lee. Teammates Neji Hayuga rookie of his year in 1010 Harugashi. Sensei Might Guy. Has done 137 D ranks, 4 C ranks and 2 B ranks. Taijutsu 9. Ninjutsu 0. Genjutsu 0. Kabuto read. Sayuri and Mito nodded. Makes sense. They thought giving Lee a glance. Gara no Subaku. Teammates. Tamari and Konkuro no Subaku. Sensei is Baki, has done 20 D ranks, 6 C ranks, 34 B ranks and 4 A ranks. Skills unknown, and says here he's never been injured in a battle before. Not even a scratch, Kabuto read making the genin give wary looks at Gara who glared at them. Never hun. Well that is about to change. Naruto smirked evilly. Reina glanced at her husband and sighed. He has that bloodthirsty look again. She muttered inwardly. All right the last was Naruto Namikaze Hun. Let's see, Kabuto said. Once he channeled Chakra he raised a brow. I expected to have no info on him but this has been updated, Kabuto said. Updated? Mito asked while Sayuri was looking amongst the crowd. Yeah, it was just recently too. Right before the we got here. This is him right? Kabuto asked showing Naruto's picture. Mito and Sayuri looked at it in awe. 
It was recent because his whisker marks were gone and his hair was longer. Not to mention his canine teeth jetted out from his upper lip and his pupils were slit. Yeah that's him, but why does he look older? He should be around our age. Mito said, what do you have on him? Sai asked. Mito and Sayuri gave strange looks at Sai. He never spoke about Naruto again after Mito clocked his lights out. Well this is what I have. Naruto Namikaze, rookie of his year. Teammate Reina Uzumaki, sensei is Rika Shin, has done 0D ranks, 0C ranks and 0B ranks along with 0A ranks. Ninjutsu 10, Taijutsu 10 Genjutsu unknown, Kenjutsu 10. Kabuto was visibly shaking. No one was this good, not even his beloved master. And this kid was taking the exams. He needed to find Orochimaru and inform him of this. Well I'm flattered. I didn't think Rika Sensei would actually update. Naruto said walking up to the group. Everyone heard the information as they tried to listen about the son of the Red Death and Yandaimi Hokage. You. You're the one from before. Lee said. Naruto nodded. Yeah. Naruto said before taking his hood down. Everyone gasped as Naruto showed himself. Tell me Kabuto. Where did you get this info? I would guess only the Hokage would know about this. How did you? Naruto glared. Kabuto was gonna come up with some kind of lie when Naruto caught Sayuri's fist. The blonde glanced at her as he saw her trying to hold back tears while gritting her teeth. You, you jerk. She muttered. Naruto stared at her impassively before letting her hand go. We will talk later. Say Chan, Mito Chan. Reina, let's find our seat. Naruto said. The girl nodded and gave one more glance at them. All right you brats find your asses in your seats. Ibiki barked. The genin jumped a bit before sitting down randomly. Naruto found himself between two losers while Reina was between Tamari and Hinata. Sayuri was on in the left corner while Mito was in the front. All right first off, Anbu. Ibiki roared scaring the living shit out of everyone besides the Saiyans. Naruto glanced to his side to see two Anbu beside him and Reina. Taken to the Hokage. I think he would like to know where his son has been. Ibiki said, good I didn't to take this trickery ridden test anyway ya douche. Naruto yelled before he and Reina were taken away. Ridden test. The genin thought. Ibiki sighed. Damn that Namikaze. Alright let's get started. Ibiki said getting everyone's attention besides one. Mito was thinking about her brother and how they would be a family again. Naruto along with his wife entered the Hokage office where a surprised Minato was. Once he saw Naruto he was in shock. And Naruto. He gasped out. Minato. Naruto said in a cold voice. Reina winced at hearing that tone. That was the first time she heard that tone since he became a Super Saiyan 2. Minato frowned at Naruto before dismissing the Anbu. After they were gone Minato gained the nerve to speak. H how are you? He asked. Fine. Naruto replied simply, is there a reason why you came back? Minato asked, for the Chunin exams, Naruto said, the exams, so you plan on continuing your ninja career in Konoha? Minato asked, hell number, who said anything about me becoming a ninja again? I just wanted to see Mito-chan and Sayuri-chan. Oh and give these back, Naruto said pulling out a scroll. Within this scroll is all the missing scrolls in your library. I mastered them the second week. Naruto said tossing the scroll over to him. Where have you been? Minato asked. Why should I say it now when I'm gonna have to repeat myself? Can't I just take the stupid exams then answer your questions? Naruto asked. Minato was about to answer when the door opened. Minato I brought you some lunch. I'm sorry am I interrupting? Kashina asked noticing two others in the room. Then she saw another head of blonde spiky hair. Naruto turned his head to face her. Kashina, Naruto nodded, and Naruto-kun, she asked with wide eyes. Yes, Naruto said, Kashina was about to run and hug Naruto when she noticed Reina holding his hand. Calm Naru-kun, she whispered, Naruto gave a short nod before turning around. All right so I will return after the exams are over. Naruto said, all right but I wonder who she is. By the way she is holding your hand she must be close to you. Minato observed. Yes very close, she is my wife, Naruto stated shocking both to the core. Nani, your wife, Kashina yelled, yes his wife, 
Now if we may let's go Naru-kun, Reina said. Naruto gave a short bow to the Hokage and vanished with Reina. His what? Kashina screamed. Once the two stopped moving they were at the entrance for the forest of death. The second exam is here. This is not even gonna be a challenge. Naruto muttered. What do you mean? Reina asked. What I mean is that this is a pebble compared to what the survival training was. Naruto said. Oh, well let's hope something good happens. As you know we got married there. She smiled as did Naruto. Flashback. Gra, a giant ape roared into the night forest along with the other three apes. Man this is crazy, Naruto said before socking a Saiyan ape in the muzzle. Well we want to get strong right? Reina asked while dodging one of their swipes and countered with a barrage of key blasts. Naruto flipped when an ape was firing a ray beam. Ka mi ha mi ha, Naruto yelled. The blue ray blast tore through the giant monkey's chest killing it. Naru kun I think now is the time, Hira said. What, now, but this is not even romantic, Naruto said while slicing off an arm. Look at her Naru kun, she is enjoying this as much as you are. Hira said, Naruto sighed while dodging a fist. Okay then, Naruto grinned before jumping away. Now the two were back to back eyeing the Saiyan apes. This is fun isn't Naruto-kun? Reina asked. I guess, but I'm not really focused on them at the moment. Naruto said. Really? Then what are you focused on? Reina asked confused. Naruto flipped them around so they were facing each other. You Rei-chan? Would you marry me? He asked holding up a diamond ring. Reina's eyes bugged out of her head. Me? She asked. Of course you. I love you don't I? Naruto smiled. Reina now had tears spilling from her eyes. Of course, she yelled in joy claiming his lips. Another ape roared ready to charge. Naruto raised his left while Reina raised her right arm. With both palms open and facing the ape they fired a ray blast killing instantly. Not to mention their kiss never broke apart. Flashback end. Good times, good times. Naruto sighed in content while Reina giggled. All right you maggots, go line up and get your scrolls. Enko said before glancing at Naruto. She wanted to go talk to him but would do so later. Plus she needed to get her emotions in check. What scroll do we have? Reina asked. Earth, let's just hurry get heaven and get the fuck out of here. Naruto said. But don't you have to talk with the council after? She asked. Yeah, I said after the exams but I didn't say which. Naruto smirked. How cunning of you Naruto-kun. Just like a fox. Reina smiled. Naruto shrugged and both headed over to their gate. While they waited Reina looked over to Sayuri and Mito who looked deep in thought. Naruto, what are we gonna do about them? She asked. Naruto glanced over to them. Well usually after the second exam there is a month break before the finals start. I'll take them with me. Naruto said. Are you sure? You know the time scheme is different. She said. I know. They will be with me for over a year on earth while they will be gone for a month here. Plus I think something is stirring. Naruto said with narrowed eyes. I see. So are we gonna train them? She asked. Naruto nodded. I think it's time for the Hyogaku comes out. It's has done its job. Naruto said. What do you mean? Reina wondered. My sister. As you know before we left I gave her the Hyogaku. She is also part Saiyan. When I was born Ka San saw my hidden power and activated it so it would be easier for me to become a Super Saiyan without the Hyogaku but it would take longer. The night the Hyogaku was discovered by me and I became its host my tail grew. Naruto paused. If you look closely my sister has her tail wrapped around her waist as a belt. And she has a seal on her wrist so she can pull out her Zanpakuto. And I bet whatever Zanpakuto she has is the medium for Kira-chan's chakra. And it seems since my dear sister has been hanging around Sei-chan she also has a Zanpakuto. Naruto explained. I see. So you want to train Sayuri and Mito in how to use their Zanpakuto and focus on Mito's Saiyan powers? Reina concluded. Correct. Sayuri might not be a Saiyan but she can learn how to fight as well. They may have great help against the oncoming threat. Naruto said. The androids? Reina asked. Precisely. Naruto nodded with a serious tone. Begin. Enko yelled causing everyone to burst into the forest. Plan. Reina asked. We find a scroll, find my sister and her team and head to the tower. 
Once their contact Ka San so we can head back to Earth. Naruto said. Reina nodded. So what are gonna do? Sayuri asked as her team hopped from branch to branch. Find a scroll, head to the tower and talk to Naruto-kun. Mito said. Agreed. Sayuri nodded as Sai was thinking of a way to contact Danzo. So who should we steer clear of? Kiva asked as his team were hopping through trees as well. I say Naruto's team. What he did back on the second floor scared the hell out of me. Kiba said. No we have to find Naruto-kun, I have to talk to him. Hanada said. We don't have time for that Hanada. I'm sure you can talk to Naruto once we get to the tower. Shino who else? Kiba looked to his friend. Gara no Subaku. Shino said in that monotone voice. You got that right. Freak reeks of blood right Akamaru? Kiba grinned getting a bark from his friend. Zaker. A voice yelled. Team 8 dodged the wild yellow lightning that flew past their heads and hit a tree causing an explosion. Naruto Yubaka. What are you trying to do blow up the whole forest? Reina asked. Naruto sheepishly scratched the back of his head while his wife scolded him. Oi, what the hell was that for? Kiba glared at the duo who were standing on a tree. Hum, well if it isn't the mutt, and weak Hayuga. Hey Shino how's it going? Naruto waved with a smile. Naruto. I see you have been well, Shino nodded. Yeah, so how are those buds I sent you from Earth? Pretty weird hun. Naruto grinned. Yes they're very unusual, Shino said. And Naruto-kun, Hanada said shyly, you're still stuttering. God damn you won't change will you? Anyway hand over your scroll so I won't have to beat the living daylights out of you. Naruto said. What? No way, I don't believe you have gotten stronger at all. Kiba said while Naruto gave him a deadpan look. Kiba I beat you all the time in the academy. Even if I didn't get stronger I would still beat you. Naruto said. Oh yeah, well eat this. Fang over fang. Kiba yelled while two gray bullets shot at Naruto. Rash shield. Naruto said causing a yellow glowing wall to appear and block the attack. Shino and Hinata had to jump out of the way when Kiba and his dog were fired back at them. Once Kiba's head stopped spinning he glared at Naruto. What the hell was that? He growled. That was a shield stupid. But since you want to act like a fool like always, Reese. Naruto said. A black ball shot out of his hand and hit Kiba. Kiba yelled in pain as he was being pushed against the ground and couldn't get up. Ah, he screamed. Kiba-kun. Naruto-kun please stop this. Hanada begged. Give me the scroll. Naruto said. I'm sorry Naruto but we can't do that, Shino said. Naruto glanced behind him to see a swarm of bugs headed for them. I got it, Reina said as she turned around a blew out a fireball jutsu. Shino watched in comic horror as his bugs were scorched alive. Ah, Kiba screamed while Akamaru whimpered. The scroll, Naruto ordered. Fine here, Hanada said throwing the scroll at Naruto. Reina caught and observed. Heaven, just what we need, Reina smirked. Naruto nodded and released the gravity. Thanks see ya. Naruto smiled before he and Reina vanished in blurs. Kiba passed out once the gravity was released and Shino was shivering. Hanada sighed as she led her team to somewhere safe. Well that was easy. Naruto smirked while Reina nodded. So what now? She asked. Team. Naruto stopped hopping and closed his eyes. Once opening he glared. What? Reina asked. There was a large amount of wind blown. And I smell snake. Naruto growled before he flew off in a burst. Reina followed her husband's lead. The sight that greeted Naruto was a worn out Sayuri and Mito trying to hold back a pale skinned man. It's no use. You will be mine, Sayuri chan. Orochimaru smirked. Hell no. She yelled while her level 2 Sharingan morphed into a level 3, making the snake man's eyes gleam. I can see, Sayuri said and dodged Orochimaru's fist. Get away from her. Heaven kick of pain, Mito yelled slamming her heel down against the Sanin's head. Mito landed by Sayuri and Ed. Where the hell is Sai? Mito demanded. That weirdo is probably drawing somewhere while we are out here fighting for our lives. Sayuri grumbled. So you also train with Tsunade. You would also make for a perfect host. Your body is just wonderful. Orochimaru smirked. Zakerga, a yellow lightning bullet shot at Orochimaru making the snake jump back. There is no way you are touching my sister and friend. 
Naruto glared while floating above them all. Ah the damned sun returns. Kabuto warned me about you. Impressive. How would you like to train under me? Orochimaru asked. You're serious. Let me show you what happened when I left. Ga. Naruto yelled as his eyes turned teal and his hair turned golden and became spiky. His aura was surrounded around him like a flame. Everyone was shocked. Reina, get them the hell out of here. Naruto ordered. What about you? Reina asked from behind the girls who jumped in surprise. I'm gonna kill this bastard. Naruto said. Reina nodded and disappeared with the girls. Magnificent. What kind of power is this? Is it Kayubi's soul? Orochimaru wondered. This is a Super Saiyan. Naruto informed. A Super Saiyan? Then I must have this form. Orochimaru grinned. Impossible. Now, Naruto blurred out of sight and behind the snake. What the hell? Orochimaru gasped. This is the end for you. Naruto said while forming Zanjetsu. Getsuga Tensho. Naruto yelled and sliced the Sanin diagonally. Masenko. Ha. Naruto yelled firing off the key blast he learned from Goku who learned from Piccolo. Orochimaru didn't even get to scream as his body disintegrated. Naruto stared impassively till he heard a loud hiss. Looking up Naruto along with the whole forest stared at the giant eight-headed white snake. From the middle one's mouth was Orochimaru. You interest me, Naruto Namikaze. To have me use this form you must be strong. Now I will take your body. Orochimaru yelled. Naruto let Zanjetsu fade and flew into the sky. What the hell is that thing? The genin wondered. Naruto crouched a bit while having his hands back to his side in a cup. Super, ka, Naruto stared while Reina stared in awe. She knew Naruto had a more powerful form of the turtle destruction wave but never had the chance to see it. Me, he continued. Orochimaru noticed blue energy started to form in his hand and started to create his own variation of a bijudama. You can't beat me, Orochimaru yelled. Where is the Hokage? Some Anbu wondered. He should be on his way. Another Anbu said. Hey isn't that his son up there? Lion asked. Yeah, what do you think he's doing? Rat asked. Who knows? Lion shrugged. Minato and Kashina were rushing to the forest of death. He would have used Horishin but that was taxing and needed to be ready. We have to hurry. Mito and Naruto are in there. Kashina said. Ha. Huh. Naruto chanted as the energy grew. What is Naruto-kun doing? Mito asked. He's going to kill Orochimaru. Reina said shocking the two. But if we couldn't beat him how can Naruto? Sayuri asked. He's special. Reina smiled. Me. Ha. Huh. Naruto fired the ray as Orochimaru also fired his. Both clashed together but Naruto forced more energy into his causing it to expand and engulf Orochimaru and obliterate a quarter of the forest. Naruto powered down as he couldn't feel Orochimaru's chakra in the area. That should have done it. Naruto said before flying down next to his wife. Ray chan it's done. Let's go before trouble starts. Naruto said. Right. Reina nodded. Wait Aniki. Mito called. Yes Mito chan. Naruto asked. Where are you going? She asked. To the tower then my new home. Naruto said. But what about us? Are you gonna leave us again? Sayuri yelled. No you two will be coming with me very soon. That way I can get closer and train you. We will talk soon. Naruto smiled before grabbing Sayuri and claimed her lips something Mito was jealous of but didn't comment. Instead she glared at the ground. All I'll ever be is his little sister. She thought while Sayuri was melting into the kiss. After he pulled away she was in a daze. Naruto stepped up to his sister and lifted her chin up to see she was crying. Why are you crying aka Heim? Naruto asked. All I'll even be is your sister won't I? Is what you said in your journal even true? She asked as more tears spilled. Naruto laughed at her. Foolish little sister. Do you really think that way? Maybe this will prove it. Naruto said before kissing her lips surprising the hell out of her. By this time Minato and Kashina along with a few Anbu watched as Naruto kissed Mito. Minato and Kashina were appalled while the Anbu were wondering what the hell was going on. Naruto licked the bottom of her lip asking for entry. She gladly opened her mouth for him after getting out of our stupor and wrestled his tongue. He's kissing me, Naruto-kun is actually kissing me, she thought in glee. Naruto ended the kiss and smiled at her. I must go now, I will return, 
Naruto said and pecked her lips once more before turning to his birth parents. We passed the exam, we will be back in time for the preliminaries, Naruto said, snapping out of his stupor Minato said, you said you would talk with the council after the exam. Naruto smirked, I did, but did I say which exam? Loophole, Naruto said, Naruto Namikaze, as Hokage I, you are really gonna pull the Hokage card Minato. Can't you tell, I'm not a ninja of this retard village, I'm my own ninja, Naruto laughed. Kashina shivered at hearing that laugh. That wasn't a happy laugh. That was a, fuck with me and I'll kill you, laugh. Naruto looked to his left to see a portal open with Rika standing inside. Our ride is here, excuse me, I will see you two later, Mito chan Sayuri-chan. Rei-chan, Naruto called before he left with Reina following behind. The two disappeared as Rika stayed knowing Minato wanted to have a word. Who are you and what did you do to my son? Minato demanded, he's not your son anymore Minato. Well at least not yet. He will become a full Saiyan soon and then he won't even be related to you or your family. Instead he will be related to me, Minato Namikaze. And I gave him happiness something you two never gave. Farewell Minato and Kashina Namikaze. I will see you two soon. She smiled at the two girls who were woken from their days. Turning around she walked back into the portal as it closed behind her. Mito and Sayuri looked in confusion before grinning to themselves. Naruto kissed them. Minato and Kashina were in shock. Sayuri and Mito. You two are coming with us and will tell the council everything you saw. Minato said seriously. Both sighed with a nod before leaving with them. Not far watching the whole thing unfold was a team from Rain. One was a boy who looked 15. He was sitting on a branch while playing with his hands. He had long blonde hair tied into a ponytail that hung above his head while he had a big bang covering his right eye. Leaning against the tree the blonde was sitting on was a man with slicked back silver hair. He had purple eyes and wore a smirk. Stabbed in the ground next to him was a red three-bladed scythe. Standing away from them was a young man with messy light red hair. He had brown eyes and wore a frown. They all wore the same outfit. A short-sleeved black shirt with Anbu S well except the silver-haired man. Instead of wearing the shirt he chose to wear a black cloak with a high collar. The cloak was zipped down to the center of his torso. The three males each had a different ring placed on a different finger. So that was the fucking kid who had that damn Kyubi soul EH, the silver-haired man said. Yes, but he got away, we are going to have to report this to leader Sama. Also the fact that Orochimaru is dead, the redhead said. You worry too much Sasori my man. I say we finish these exams with a bang, hmm. The blonde smirked. Didera you are a fucking idiot. The fact that that bastard Orochimaru is dead and we don't have that shitty ring is a problem. Plus we don't know where the hell that white haired took the Jinchuriki. The silver haired man said. Hidan shouldn't we take the girl? I mean she does hold the chakra, hmm. Didera nodded. No we have been through this a hundred times. The girl is useless since she has the chakra. We need the soul of the Kyubi, Sasori said. But we could use that incest slut as bait to bring the Kyubi back. Hidan said, no need. The blonde boy said he would be back. We could take him then. Didera said, hell yeah, then we can take him to leader Sama. Hidan grinned. I don't think that is wise. The Jinchuriki killed Orochimaru who has also claimed to be immortal and one of the Sanin with an unknown technique. We must be cautious once he returns. But for now let's go report. Sasori said before the other two nodded and left with Sasori. Man it's good to be back on earth. Naruto grinned as he and Reina flew to West City. Shouldn't we go to Goku's house first? She asked. Yeah but I want to see Bulma and make sure that bastard Vegeta hasn't moved in on her. How long were we gone? Naruto asked. About three weeks or so. Do you want me to tell Goku we're back? Reina asked, could you please, I'll meet up with you later. Naruto said, okay then see y'all later. Reina said before pecking Naruto on the lips and heading the other direction. Naruto flew faster, once he found West City he looked for Capsule Corp. Seeing it he landed in front of the building and entered. It was so different from his planet. Yeah they had technology but not like this. He liked Earth much better. Once they arrived back on Earth Naruto put away his cloak so he wouldn't look like a weirdo. 
he walked to the front desk to see a blonde-haired woman filing her nails. Um excuse me, can you tell me where Bulma Briefs is? I'm a friend, Naruto said. The woman looked up at him blushed then looked back down. Name, she asked. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said. The woman looked through the book and nodded. Yes. Told me if you showed up to immediately tell you where she is. She should be on the third floor. The woman informed. Thank you. Naruto smiled making her blush harder. Naruto walked off and entered the elevator. Pushing the number three he made it to the third floor. Stepping out he looked around the room to see it looked like a research room. Bulma. Bulma you here. Naruto called. Naruto is that you? Bulma asked walking out of the closet. Naruto smiled at her and noticed her appearance. Instead of the puffy afro she had before her hair was pulled into a ponytail and she was wearing a long-sleeved pink shirt with white capris. Hey Bulma, Naruto grinned, what took you so long to get back? Bulma asked after pulling away from the hug he gave her. I tried my hardest to get back as fast as I could, but I should be staying for a year at least before returning. So what have you been up to? He asked. Nothing really. That jerk Vegeta has been staying with us and it's so hard dealing with him. Bulma rolled her eyes. He hasn't moved in on you has he? Naruto asked with narrowed eyes. Nope. Naruto, are you jealous? Bulma asked. A little bit. I just don't want my chance to be ruined. Naruto shrugged. Who said you were getting a chance? Bulma asked. Who said I wasn't? Naruto smirked. Touche. So when do you want this chance? She asked. Hum. How about tonight? Dinner good? Naruto asked. Dinner sounds perfect. Eight o'clock? She asked. No problem. See y'all later Bulma. Naruto smiled before kissing her cheek and walking off with a wave. Bulma blushed before smiling to herself. As Naruto was walking out he saw Vegeta who smirked at him. So you're finally back eh? How was your little vacation? He asked. It was fine. How is your quest on becoming a Super Saiyan? Naruto smirked making the man growl with a glare. I don't need your help well. I am an elite and prince of, too. Naruto smirked causing him to stumble. Why you little brat? Vegeta growled. Yeah whatever Vegeta. See y'all later buddy. Naruto waved. Vegeta glared at his back before huffing and walked off. When Naruto was out of the building he flew off to head over to Goku's. Once he got there he stopped in front of Goku's house and entered to see Reina having tea with Chi Chi. Oh Naruto kun, how is Bulma? Reina asked. Fine, we're going on a date later tonight. Hello, Naruto greeted. Hello Naruto, my Reina when you said he was handsome you weren't kidding. Chi Chi laughed while Reina scratched her head sheepishly. Hey do you know where Goku and Gohan are? Naruto asked. Chi Chi sighed, they're out in the mountains training. Boy I wish Goku would just let Gohan sit down and study. That way he can become the president. Chi Chi said with stars in her eyes. Naruto sweat dropped while Reina agreed. I agree. When Naruto kun and I have kids they are also gonna hit the books. Reina said while Naruto gave her a weird look. You're kidding right? Naruto asked. No I'm not Naruto. But they will also learn how to fight so they're not wimps. Reina smirked. Naruto sighed in relief. Anyway I'm gonna go, see y'all later. Naruto waved before walking out leaving the women to talk. Naruto hit the skies and found Gohan fighting off Goku and Piccolo. He was doing pretty well till Goku kneed him in the stomach and Piccolo smacked him away. That's kinda harsh guys, Naruto said floating down next to them. So you are back then. How was the Chunin thing? Goku asked. It was fine, got to scare some little kids and kill some snake bastard. How have things been here? Naruto wondered. Pretty well. I think Gohan is close to becoming a Super Saiyan. Piccolo said. Naruto nodded and watched as Gohan launched a Masenko as his father. Darn I nearly had you dad. Naruto. Gohan smiled. Hey squirt. Nice shot but you need to put more power into it. Naruto said getting a nod from Gohan. Oh Naruto we found the Dragon Balls for you. Goku informed. Thanks. Naruto nodded. Mind me asking Naruto but what do you need them for? Gohan wondered. I want to change my DNA. It won't be fully changed but this way I'll be distant relatives with my biological parents. To do that I need to become a full Saiyan, Naruto said. A full Saiyan? Piccolo asked. Yes, 
I believe for me to go past Super Saiyan 2 I must be a full Saiyan. I know Goku has the potential as Gohan can go as far as a Super Saiyan 2. Naruto said. What about Vegeta? Goku wondered. I don't know. To become a Super Saiyan you have to have something to drive you. Vegeta wants to become one for power. I became one out of rage and hate for my parents. Naruto said. And I became a Super Saiyan because I was angry at Frieza for killing Krillin and all the innocent Namics. Goku said. So how can Gohan become a Super Saiyan? Piccolo asked. Naruto looked at Gohan and put his hand on the boy's head. Closing his eyes Naruto saw all Gohan's memories. The training he had to go through when Goku died and what happened on Namek. Naruto found it and smiled. Okay I know what to do. Naruto said. Naruto moved away motioning for Piccolo and Goku to do the same. Gohan, Goku and I are gonna transform okay I want you to study us. Ready, Naruto asked. Goku nodded as Piccolo stepped back from them. Gah, Goku shouted as he transformed. Naruto just raised his power turning into a Super Saiyan. Gohan watched amazed as he only saw his father in Go Super Saiyan once. Alright as you know to transform you need to power up to the limit. Now watch me as I ascend. Naruto said as Goku stepped back. Naruto took a deep breath and started raising his ki. H H A A A A A A A A H H. Ah, Naruto yelled as his power rose faster. All three noticed how Naruto's body started turning bulkier and his veins popped. H H A A A A A A A A H H. Naruto yelled till his muscles stopped and his aura danced around him. His hair was more rigid and looked a little silver. But the things they noticed was how his muscles grew greatly making him look how Goku did when he first became a Super Saiyan. Both Goku and Piccolo figured it was because of his less muscled body, since it was more lean than bulky. This is the form between a Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2. I called it Ultra. I don't tend to use this form much when fighting due to his slowing down my speed. But my power increases greatly. I only use it when I need to pour more energy into an attack or pushing something back. Now this next form is my strongest of yet. Naruto said as he took a deep breath. Naruto powered down to a regular Super Saiyan and gripped his hands tighter. Piccolo and Goku felt his ki rising fast. Gra, ah, Naruto screamed louder than before as his power started to affect the climate. The sky turned dark and windy. Ah, Naruto yelled. This power. It's amazing. The androids won't stand a chance. Piccolo thought. So this is the power of a Super Saiyan. Incredible. I can't wait to get this strong. Goku grinned. Gohan was speechless as he watched Naruto transform. Naruto's head jerked to face the sky. H H A A A A A A A A H. Naruto's golden hair started to turn silver and more spiky. His muscles grew a little bit as he grew a little taller but not much. His aura was lighting up the night sky as red and black sparks of lightning danced around him. At the house Reina watched as her husband gave his demonstration. If this is the power he gave when being three quarters of a Saiyan, imagine how powerful he would be when becoming a full Saiyan. Aha, Gra, he yelled as the sky flashed. It faded as it revealed a silver-haired Naruto. He had golden spots here and there but it was mostly a glowing silver. This is Super Saiyan 2. The power I had as an ascended Saiyan has dramatically increased and my speed has also. Not to mention I can fire a whole amount of Super Kamehamehas. Naruto said in his serious voice but it wasn't like the first time. Can you control it? Goku asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow asking what he meant. When I fist became a Super Saiyan instead of killing Frieza I toyed with him till I was bored. It changes your personality and brings out your battle crazed side. Goku said. I can control it somewhat. The more I do it the quicker I can transform. Soon I will be able to turn it on with no effort. Once I have it fully under control I won't be as stoic. Now Gohan, Naruto said facing the boy who was in awe. To become a Super Saiyan isn't a desire but a response in need. Most become a Super Saiyan because of rage. But there might be some who become a Super Saiyan out of danger. Naruto said. Gohan looked down at his feet. Gohan I want you to try. Naruto said. The boy nodded and started to power up. Naruto watched as his aura started to dance around him. Ah, Gohan's hair flashed gold but turned black just as quick. After stopping Naruto said, you nearly had it. 
But something is holding you back. Don't hold back Gohan. Let it all out. Naruto said. Gohan then looked at Naruto. I think you should come at me at once. All three of you. Gohan said. All three raised a brow. Are you sure? Piccolo asked. Yes. Naruto said some might turn because of danger. That might be me. And if you three put me in a death-like situation then I might transform. Gohan explained his reasoning. What do you think Naruto? Goku asked. Let's do it. But if I shoot a super he will die. So I will use a powerful key blast. Naruto said as the three jumped away from Gohan. The boy took a deep breath and watched as his father readied a Kamehameha. Piccolo Imasenko and Naruto had a key blast. Kamehameha. Goku yelled. Masenko ha. Piccolo roared while Naruto sent a silent key blast. Instead of closing his eyes Gohan knocked away all the blasts surprising the hell out of them. Crouching down Gohan remembered how he couldn't help his father against Raditz, how he froze up when Nappa came at him and Piccolo sacrificed himself. He remembered turning into a great ape and nearly killed his father. Also what happened on Namek against Frieza and couldn't help Piccolo and saw Krillin and Den die. He was so weak. He so weak his friends had to save him to get out of danger. It made him so angry. Gra, Gohan yelled as his hair and eyes flashed golden and teal. This kept happening for about 10 seconds before his power exploded. The light faded revealing a long-haired Super Saiyan Gohan. Naruto saw this and gained a clue but stored it for later. Without words Gohan fired a Kamehameha at Naruto who knocked it away with ease. Naruto blinked at blocked Gohan's swipe from behind with his forearm. With a push of energy Gohan went flying back. You did it Gohan. You're a Super Saiyan. Naruto smiled. Gohan stopped his attack and looked confused. I am. He asked. You are son. You're a Super Saiyan. Goku grinned. Gohan looked at his hair and grinned before hugging Naruto. Thank you Naruto ni. Gohan cheered. No problem squirt. Now we can train you too in the arts of Super Saiyan. Naruto smirked. Both Saiyans got their full attention as Piccolo watched. This kid knew his stuff. Good thing he was on their side. You better hurry Naruto-kun or you'll be late. Reina said as Naruto straightened his tie. He was wearing a black suit with an orange tie. His hair was trimmed a bit thanks to Reina saying it was too wild. Ray chan what do you plan on doing? Naruto asked. I don't know. Watch some TV, why? She asked. Because I didn't want you to be alone so. Naruto smirked before starting some hand signs and slapping his hand onto the ground. Before she knew it Kira was standing beside him. Hey Kira-chan. Naruto smiled. Kira looked stunned before seeing Naruto and not in his mindscape. I'm outside. She asked. Yup. Rei-chan can you put a seal on her so she can stay outside permanently unless she wants. I got to go. See ya. Naruto kissed both girls before heading out and flying away. While he and Reina were out training Rika was nice enough to form them their own island and build them a mansion and other things for fun. It was close enough next to West City and Goku's house. When Naruto asked why she built something so big all she said was for the future. Shrugging he let it go. Naruto landed in front of the capsule corp. Building and headed inside. Going to the fifth floor where Bulma lived Naruto was greeted by. Oh hello there. Are you here for Bulma? She asked. Yes. Naruto nodded. Oh okay she should be ready. The blonde said. I'm right here mom. Hi Naruto. Bulma smiled. Naruto's eyes bugged out of his head once he saw her. She was wearing strapless light blue dress that matched her hair which was let down falling to her mid back with a bang framing the right side of her face. Anyway back to the dress. It framed her nice curves and gave Naruto an idea of her D cup S. The dress stopped at her knees and had a little opening for her to move a little more. She wore black high heels making her to be at Naruto's height. What do you think Naruto-kun? Bulma asked. You're beautiful Bulma. Naruto finally said after picking up his jaw. Thank you. You look pretty good yourself. Bulma smiled till they were blinded by a flash. Looking to the side was Bulma's mother with a camera. Mom. Bulma whined. Oh you two just look so cute together. Her mother replied. Naruto chuckled before holding his arm out for Bulma to take. Are you ready? Naruto asked. Yup. Bulma smiled gladly taking Naruto's arm. Alright I'll be back soon mom, don't wait up. 
Bulma said before Naruto put his middle and index fingers to his forehead and concentrated. All right hold on tight, Naruto warned before they disappeared, opened her eyes in disbelief before shaking her head. Naruto and Bulma reappeared in front of a restaurant. The Golden Leaf. Bulma looked around to see they weren't in West City or any of the cities for that matter. She noticed the people looked less modern than the people in the city. Naruto where are we? She asked the blonde as they were walking. We're on my planet, in the village I was born in. Konoha. This is the best restaurant in the whole village beside Ichiraku. And the place we're going will have a great view. Naruto smiled. They stopped in front of the desk to see a man in a suit writing down names. Can I help you sir? He asked. Yes I have a reservation for two. Naruto said. Name. He asked. Uzumaki. Arashi Uzumaki. Naruto said getting a raised eyebrow from Bulma. Ah yes. Do you have the golden ticket sir? The man asked. Naruto nodded and handed him a gold ticket. Thank you very much sir. Right this way. The waiter said. Naruto nodded and followed him. Bulma noticed the glances Naruto was getting as they wondered where he was headed. This is the bronze level. Where all the local people have dinner. The waiter informed as they walked up some stairs and into another room with laughing people. This is the silver area. This is where the higher classmen eat. Here they have entertainment. Since today is Wednesday we have a comedian. The waiter informed. Bulma laughed lightly at the comedian while Naruto smiled. Going higher but not that far the waiter opened up two gold painted double doors that had a Konoha symbol on each door while the knobs were leaves. Pulling both doors open the two were greeted by a smaller room than the others. It was decorated with red carpet and gold painted walls and tables with crimson tablecloths. This is the public gold level. As you can see barely anybody comes here for dinner. Only the wealthiest of men can afford such luxury. The waiter said. I'm guessing the gold tickets are expensive then. Bulma asked. Yes they are. The waiter nodded. So are we eating here? Bulma asked. Naruto smirked making her look at him while the waiter said. Oh no. Uzumaki-sama had a shiny gold ticket something only the Hokage or his guest can afford. The only people who have been here in recent years have been the Yandaimi Hokage and his family. But sadly ever since the oldest of the Namikaze family vanished they have been coming less and less. The waiter said sadly while Naruto remained impassive as they walked. The waiter pushed open one more door to reveal a small room with one table. Behind the table was a couch and the room was decorated with paintings. The thing Bulma noticed the most was the window that showed all of Konoha. The only places you could get a view of that was the Hokage Monument, here in the Hokage office. Wow it's beautiful, Bulma said. Naruto shrugged. Eh, hey, I've seen better. Naruto said. Oh let me guess Reina. Bulma smirked. Her, Hira-chan and you. Naruto smiled making Bulma blush but sit down across from him. The waiter picked up the menus and handed them to both. I will be back to take your orders. Will you like anything to drink? The waiter asked. I'll have a coke. Bulma said. Water. Naruto said. He nodded and went to fetch their drinks. So how did you get a ticket for this place? She asked. Well I visited my family bank. I took all my money along with the Senju account since I am the rightful heir. Naruto said. I see. You went all out for a first date. Bulma teased. Hey first date. First impressions. So tell me about you. Naruto said. What? No fair. I talked about myself last time. Let's hear about you. She said. There isn't much to know and I really don't like talking about it. Naruto said before smiling. But I'll tell you what I can. Let's see my biological parents are the most dangerous people in the village along with my godparents. I have a twin sister who I love very much. Um I am the most strongest person in the village, meaning I'm able to beat my parents and godparents at the same time. Naruto smirked. Well duh, you can become a super saiyan. Bulma grinned. Yeah but even without it I can still beat them. Anyway that's pretty much it. Naruto shrugged. Oh come on there has to be more. She said. Like what? Naruto asked. What's your favorite color? Orange. Food. Ramen and orange chicken. Dream. To be separated from my parents blood as far as possible. Become strong to protect my precious people and have a big family. Like I said Bulma Chan. Nothing much. Naruto smirked. Well I think that last part was nice. 
So tell me why are you on Earth instead of your planet? Bulma asked. My past. I wasn't happy here at all. The only thing that made me stay for so long were my sister and best friend along with her family. When I had enough power to hold my own and find a way to visit them I left. Once I did I met Reina and fell in love with her during training. Naruto said. Bulma nodded before asking, Hey what do you think of that kid from the future? I don't know about you but he seems familiar. Bulma said. Naruto nodded. I don't know what to think. All I know the fact he can become a Super Saiyan means someone is his father or mother and it can't be Reina. But I just don't know. Naruto shrugged. Hum. Anyway what do you plan on doing for the next three three years? She asked. No clue. Train to get stronger, and let my family grow. Here on this planet I'm 13 but on Earth since going there I'm about 17. My birthday is in a few days. Naruto shrugged. Bulma nodded when their waiter came in with their drinks. Here ya go, are you ready to order? He asked. Yes, but I'll let you go first. Naruto said. Thank you, I'll have your ribeye steak, well well done, with mashed potatoes and green beans. Bulma said as the waiter got it all down. And you sir? He asked. I'll have a large bowl of miso pork ramen with a large plate of kung pao chicken and white rice. Naruto said. The waiter nodded before walking off with their menus. I expected you to get a whole buffet since you Saiyans eat like pigs. Bulma laughed. I would have but then it would be rude and ruin the mood. Plus I don't eat that much like Goku. I only eat like that when I haven't eaten for days or trained really hard and worked up an appetite. Naruto said. Well good. One time I caught Vegeta stuffing his face so fast I thought he would explode. I'm mad he didn't. Bulma pouted while Naruto laughed. You really don't like Vegeta hun. Naruto said, no it's just that when runs around calling you woman all the time instead of your name and acts all arrogant it's hard not to get irritated. She said, Naruto nodded in agreement, he's just like an Uchiha. Anyway what about you Bulma? Naruto asked, hun, what about me? She asked, what are things you like? For example your favorite color and hobbies. You know things like that. Naruto smiled, Bulma grinned at him. The last time she spoke about herself was when Yamcha took her out on a date. But even then she only got a little out before the dude started running his mouth about herself. Well as you know my favorite color is sky blue, she started. The whole night Naruto learned everything he could about her. She told him her adventures with Goku when he was a kid and how she dated Yamcha for a while before she broke up with him. What she went through after. And all kinds of things. Naruto in turn told her about his sister and their adventures when they were kids. 20 years of training in the other dimension with Reina. His Ka San Rika and others. Both were walking out the restaurant with smiles on their faces. Man I'm full. Naruto grinned. Me too. Dinner was magnificent Naruto kun. Bulma smiled. Good. I'm happy you enjoyed dinner. But the date isn't over Bulma. Naruto said. It's not. She asked confused. Nope. We have one more place to stop before heading back to Earth. Hold on to me, Naruto ordered. Bulma did gladly not that she would tell him that and felt her feet lift from the ground. Naruto what is going on? She asked before she noticed they were at least 50 feet off the ground. She was about to start flailing around when Naruto's grip tightened. Relax Bulma, I won't let you fall. That's a promise of a lifetime. Naruto smiled gently. Bulma blushed with a nod as they flew to the Hokage Monument at a nice pace. While flying Bulma enjoyed the night lights Konoha had and wondered why such a beautiful village would dislike someone as great as Naruto. They landed on the first head which Naruto informed her is his great-grandfather on his mother's side since his great-grandmother is Mito Uzumaki who his sister is named after. Well how do you like the view? Naruto asked. It's beautiful, but the fact this village treated you badly takes it away. It's just a cover, Bulma said. Naruto nodded in agreement. So what did you think of the date overall? Naruto asked. It was great. I had lots of fun spending time with you. For someone so young you're very wise. Bulma teased. I guess. I think it's because I was forced to grow up at five years old. Once you see your home and family in a dark place you have no choice. Naruto shrugged. Bulma noticed the hint of sadness Naruto had even it was really 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 small, she still saw it. 
So she scooted closer to him grabbed his arm and laid her head on his shoulder much to his joy. I would like to do this more often. You're the most fun I had since Yamcha and he wasn't that much fun. Bulma said, well you're not the only one who had fun. I also had a fantastic time. And I would love to take you on more dates in the future. Naruto grinned. I would like that. She smiled. They were quiet for a while just enjoying each other's company when Naruto surprised her by saying, you know I meant what I said right. About making you younger again. I would do it if you wanted me to. Bulma looked up at him. Even if we didn't go on more dates. She asked. Yeah, I realized you became someone special to me Bulma and I would do anything for you. Naruto smiled down at her. Bulma looked at him with awestruck eyes. Her already high respect level for him just went higher. Leaning forward she claimed his lips. Naruto smiled and kissed her back causing her to smile. At first the kiss was slow and passionate but Bulma heated it up by licking his lip for entrance. The blonde smirked and opened his mouth allowing her tongue to explore. After a few seconds Naruto wrestled her tongue in one making her inwardly pout. The blonde chuckled before exploring her mouth. After five minutes of making out he pulled away and smiled at her. You're a good kisser Bulma. Naruto smirked. Bulma just giggled before engaging into another round with the blonde, something he was happy to do. One year later, that's it Gohan keep it going, Naruto said as he watched his little brother trying to access his power. Ah, Gohan yelled as flashes of sparks started. Naruto watched as Gohan's hair started to spike more. Come on son you can do it. Goku cheered his son on, standing next to Naruto. Gohan screamed louder as his power burst but before he could hit the next level passed out from exhaustion. Well that sucks, he almost had it too. What do you think is wrong? Goku asked. Well to achieve Super Saiyan 2 you need to gone through something intense. Something that has angered you more than the original reason. For me it was remembering how my mother left me alone and forgot about me. Naruto said as Goku laid Gohan down on a blanket. Now that I think about it more I think that was my real first time becoming a Super Saiyan but it felt different than it does now. Naruto frowned as he tried recalling the feeling. Different how? Goku asked. Like I didn't have control of myself. As if the power wanted to consume me and destroy everything in my path. Naruto said. Weird. Goku muttered. So how is being a full Saiyan? Goku asked. It's fine. But lately when I try training in anything above Super Saiyan I get tired. I don't know why though. I asked Kira-chan if there was any problem but she said she couldn't detect anything. Naruto said. After Naruto's first date with Bulma Naruto summoned Shenron for his wish. When he saw the dragon he broke into a cold sweat. Man that was something he would never forget. Flashback. Naruto along with Reina and Kira stood in their backyard with the dragon balls in front of them. So how is this supposed to work? Kira asked. Beats me. Rei chan Naruto asked. Well Goku said we needed to try and call the dragon out. I think its name is Shenron or something. Reina muttered. Man I wish he was here right now. Damn Chi Chi and her driver's ed. Naruto muttered remembering why Goku couldn't help him. Chi Chi was complaining about why Goku couldn't drive so she got him and Piccolo to take driving ed class. Bulma and Reina threatened the same thing. Sometimes they didn't want to fly all the time. All right let's get this started. Shenron, come out and grant me my wish. Naruto yelled. After a few seconds they all sweat dropped as nothing happened. Turning back to them he asked. Did I say it right? Right on QS boom was heard as something shot out of the orb scaring the shit out of Naruto as he jumped behind Kira. Both of his wives sweat dropped grew as they thought, wow how brave. The sky darkened and thunder was heard. Before they knew it a long gigantic green dragon was above them staring at them with sharp teeth and red piercing eyes. Who has woken me from my slumber? Step forward and state your wish. I will only grant one. Shenron said in a booming voice. Naruto would have hid behind both his wives when he heard the statement. One. That's a fucking rip off. Do you know how long I searched for these? Naruto yelled at the dragon making all three sweat drop. But Naruto you didn't look for them. Goku and Gohan did. Kira said. Now Naruto sweat dropped. Oh well that's beside the point. I wish that I get two more wishes. Naruto grinned. His wife's face faulted before Reina stood and bonked him on the head. 
Baka, don't lose track of your main wish, she scolded. But Ray Chan if Shenron can give me two more wishes I can wish to become a full Saiyan and ask for his awesome dragon summoning contract. Do you know how cool I will be? Naruto grinned at the thought while his wives sighed. Why did they marry him? I cannot grant that wish. My creator only designed me for one wish. Shenron informed giving Naruo a tick mark on his head. What the hell you mean your creator designed you for one wish? Who is it? Naruto demanded making sure it didn't sound like a wish. The guardian of Earth Kami. Now state your wish, Shenron ordered. Naruto waved him off before sighing. Fine, I wish that I be turned into a full-blooded Saiyan. Naruto informed seriously. Your wish is within my power. It will be granted, Shenron said while his eyes glowed. Naruto felt the changes immediately. The black in his hair grew a little more but made sure not to override his blonde locks. He felt his tail grow a little longer but not much. Last was his power he immediately felt as if he was a super saiyan right now but wasn't. Your wish has been granted. Farewell, Shenron said not caring as he saw Naruto create 70 clones to catch the dragon balls. Ten each caught the stone balls making them not go anywhere. There now we won't have to search for them later. Naruto said, why not let them go? Reina asked, because, he said turning to them. I'm gonna make Kami redo that wish thing. One wish, rip, off. Naruto stated getting bonks on the head from both his wives. Flashback end. Naruto rubbed his head as remembered the memory. With much persuasion from him Kami redid the wish numbers. Or it could be that Naruto wouldn't stop begging him and Rika allowed it. He asked Reina if she wanted to become a full Saiyan but she stated she didn't and she was fine. And how are things with Bulma? Goku snickered. Naruto gave his friend a strange look but answered anyway. Pretty good. We've been hanging out a lot lately. Reina and Kira get along with her just fine. Naruto paused. And. Goku pressed on. Why are you so interested in this? Naruto asked. Well it's been a while since Bulma has been with anyone. And anytime we mention you around her she gets this gleam in her eyes. Goku said while Naruto sighed in defeat. And I'm gonna ask her to marry me soon. Naruto said getting Goku to grin madly. When? He asked. Soon. Before my sister comes. That is gonna be total weirdness. Naruto muttered while Goku nodded. So do you have a ring? Goku asked. Does Chi Chi have a ring? Naruto countered. Good point. But Reina and Kira have rings. Goku pointed out. Yeah I know. So what? Yes I have a ring. Naruto chuckled. So are you gonna have a big wedding or? Goku. Naruto yelled at him making Goku laugh and tell him to be quiet because Gohan was asleep. Naruto muttered about nosy friends before he asked. So how is your training with Super Saiyan 2? Naruto asked. Goku sighed. Difficult. It seems I can't find the right drive either. I think it will become harder for me. Maybe I just need to train. And you. How is trying to go to the next level? Goku smirked. Fucking hard. Naruto grumbled. I mean it's taxing on my body just trying to raise my power that high. Plus every time I try at home a hurricane or some natural disaster is trying to happen. Naruto explained. Well do you think being in other world would help? I mean you barely got tired there and it seemed you had tons of energy left. Goku reminded. True, but I don't know how to get there. Naruto said. Do you remember when I taught you instant transmission so you could go to your planet with ease? Goku asked, yeah, wait are you saying I can go to other world like that? But don't you have to be dead? Naruto asked. Nope, King Kai calls me there from time to time. Oh and he told me the other world tournament would be starting soon. Goku grinned, really, hum, can't wait for that to start. Anyway let's. Naruto-kun, a voice called. Naruto looked to the left to see his mother standing there. Hey Ka-san what's up? Naruto asked. It's time for the prelims to start. She said. What? Do I really have to? Naruto asked. Yes Naruto-kun. Rika said. Naruto groaned in annoyance. Fine fine. I'll let Rei-chan know. Bye Ka-san. Naruto said kissing her cheek. She smiled and left while Naruto groaned. I swear if Mito and Sayuri weren't there I wouldn't care what happened. Maybe it was a mistake going back. Naruto muttered. Anyway I'll be gone for about a week or so. Make sure Gohan keeps his training up. 
Naruto said getting a nod from Goku. Naruto waved before leaving, via instant transmission. Naruto appeared right on top of the dinner table scaring the hell out of Reina. Damn it Naruto, you can't just be popping out of nowhere. I curse the day Goku taught you that. She growled. Sorry Rei chan Anyway Ka San said it's time for us to go. Naruto said. Ugh. Again. She groaned. That's what I said. We'll just make this really fast and get the hell out. Naruto said. Reina sighed with a nod and went to get ready not that she needed to. Hey Naruto. Bulma grinned walking in the room. Bulma how long have you been here? He asked while she gave him a kiss. I just got here. So what's up? Bulma asked as she wrapped her arms around his neck and he wrapped his around her waist. I'm gonna be gone about a week. I need to head back to my planet for the prelims they're holding. Naruto informed getting a frown from her. A week hun? She asked. Yeah, but don't worry I'll be back before you know it. Naruto smiled. Oh yeah prove it, she said. Well this is one reason I will come back fast. Naruto smirked giving her a long kiss she was happy to get in return. They broke apart when Reina cleared her throat. If you two are done sucking off each other's faces then we should go. She said. That's not what you were saying last night Rei chan Naruto said in a sing-song voice making her blush and Bulma laugh. Anyway I'll be back soon. Naruto pecked her lips one more time before turning around to catch Kira and kiss her also. Sorry Kira-chan, can't sneak up on me like that. See ya, Narutipi waved as he and Reina left. Kira pouted, and I almost had him. She muttered while Bulma laughed. Naruto and Reina appeared in front of a double door and made their way inside once and they were greeted by the genin who passed the second exam. Team 7 were among them. Minato gazed at his son as did his wife and daughter. Hell everyone was staring at him which made him smirk. Do I have something on my face? He asked. No just glad you could join us. Now line up. Anko said in demanding voice. Naruto rolled his eyes and stood beside Team 8. Kiba was glaring at him and oogling Reina who caught his gaze and scoffed before grabbing her husband's hand. Hanada was seething as she watched what Reina did and how Naruto didn't push her away. Maybe if I can stand next to him he will come to me. Hanada hoped but was immediately shot down when Naruto glared at her from the corner of his eye. I'm surprised weaklings like you and Kiba made it. Shino must have pulled all the weight. Pathetic. Naruto scoffed enraging Kiba and hurting Hanada. While Minato was going over the rules and crap Naruto stared impassively as he thought about Bulma. Enough of this. When can we get fighting? Reina asked gaining tick marks on the Jonin and Hokage's head. Watch your tone brat. You're speaking to the Hokage. You should be happy he let you in here. A Jonin yelled. So what? I can kick all of your asses at the same time by myself. Reina scoffed. Another Jonin was about to retort when Naruto said. Calm down Rei chan Naruto said getting a pout from his wife. But I do agree. Instead of running your mouth about useless things tell us about the preliminaries you are gonna hold. Naruto said getting confused looks from the genin. Minato sighed. He speaks the truth. There are way too many of you to pass you all to the finals. So we are having a preliminary round. The winners pass to the finals. Hayate. Minato called causing the man to step forward. Thank you Lord Hokage. So let me explain the rules. Hayate started explaining the rules. Two people gave up. Kabuto and someone not important. Okay so everyone besides the two on the screen go upstairs. The first match is. Everyone watched as the screen went through random names before stopping on. Mito Namikaze vs Kinsuchi. Hayate said. Naruto and Reina made their way upstairs but Naruto went in Mito's direction. Good luck Mito-chan. Naruto smiled before kissing her cheek making her blush. After that he went upstairs and leaned against the rail watching his sister. Reina was beside him while Rika in disguise as their sensei stood behind them. On their left was team 7 and on the right was team 10. Sayuri wanted to stand next to Naruto but decided to watch her best friend. However Kakashi was staring at Naruto and his teammate along with his sensei trying to see the connection. Sai glanced at Naruto and met the blonde's eyes who smirked then turned his eyes back to his sister. Shikamaru and Choji were watching Mito while Ino was trying to figure out who Reina was and why she was so close to her Naruto-kun. Asuma was eyeing Rika then Kurenai. Alright begin, 
Hayate said jumping back, I don't have time to play with you. Nito said before charging at Kin. Kin threw some Sanban at her making Nito whip out a kunai and deflect them. You're trapped. Kin smirked. Am I? Nito asked behind her with the kunai at Kin's throat. Kin eyes widened as she saw the first Nito charging at her. Naruto watched with amused eyes. So she mastered the shadow clone Jutsu A. Eh? Naruto muttered making Reina raise a brow. Concede. The Mito said. I give. Kin yelled as Mito was close to her. Mito Namikaze. Winner. Hayate said. The Mito in front of Kin dispelled getting confused looks from the genin while the Jonin had a small smile. The next match is. Hayate paused as the name spun. Once it stopped Hanada's pale eyes widened. Hanada Hayuga vs Neji Hayuga. Hayate said. Naruto scoffed as Mito stood next to Sayuri and looked worried. Neji walked down with a stoic expression while Hanada was shaking. This was it. This was her chance to prove Naruto she wasn't weak and could beat her. You should give up Lady Hanada. You're fated to lose to me. Neji sneered. And no. Hanada said getting a raised eyebrow from Neji. Why do you stay? You are not fighting material because you're too soft. So leave because if you stay you will lose. Neji said. And no Neji. IW will win. Hanada said. Give up. Once a loser always a loser there is no. Stop it. Mito roared causing Naruto and Neji to glance at her. Naruto frowned because he was enjoying Neji put Hanada down. Even though he thought fate was bullshit he was right. Hanada was not fighting material and needed to know that before she got herself killed. Hanada, show him what a low class can do. Mito said. Naruto's eyes widened. Even if Hanada is a main branch she can never beat an elite. Neji said. Bull. With enough hard work and dedication even a weakling can beat the best. Mito said making Naruto growl. Enough of this. Hanada I'm giving you one more chance. Give up. You are fated to lose. Neji said. Hanada shook her head. She hoped Naruto would have defended her but that was wiped out when he said. Give up Hanada. If you fight Neji you will die. You are not strong enough to fight him now. Know your place. Naruto yelled making everyone including Reina and Rika frown. Naruto what are you? Reina's eyes widened once she saw her husband's eyes. His pupils were red while his sclea was turning black. Bone started to form over his eye. No. I won't give up, Proctor, Hanada said now ignoring Naruto who was smashed against the wall by Reina. Rika frowned when Naruto started to thrash. Reina take him out of here, she ordered. Reina nodded and vanished making the Jonin's eyes widened. That wasn't even a shushin. Calm down, Reina said as she threw Naruto against a mountain not far from the village. Naruto growled as he stood. Why defend her? Naruto wondered. This isn't about Hanada. You need to calm down. Your hollow mask is spreading. Reina said. Naruto froze. His mask was halfway across his face. Taking a deep breath he turned and fired a key blast at the mountain. Ah. Naruto screamed as he fired a barrage of key blasts. Reina watched as Naruto was relieving stress. For ten minutes he was firing off as Reina watched once he was done his mask was broken and his eyes were normal. It won't go away. It's been held up for too long. I need to let loose and soon. Naruto said. Reina sighed. They tried to avoid this. The last time he needed to relieve himself was during their survival training. He took down six dragons, ten Saiyan apes and three Manos. He just needed to let go a little bit. Okay, let's get back. She said as he nodded and they disappeared. Once they came back Rika walked over to Naruto. Are you okay? She asked. Yes Ka-san. I need to let loose. It's overflowing, Naruto said. Rika nodded. Okay, Rika said. Next match, Naruto Namikaze vs Gara no Subaku. Hayate announced. Naruto nodded and hopped over the rail without his black cloak. Instead he was wearing his normal wear without his jacket. The women blushed as they saw his muscles. Rei Chan. Naruto called throwing her his Shinryu, or dragon sword. Reina grabbed it and tucked to her side. The Jonin along with the Hokage wondered what the sword was but shrugged it off as Gara appeared. Naruto Namikaze. Mother wants your blood. Gara said. Well tell Shukaku he can suck my dick. Naruto declared as the San Shinobi and everyone else eyes widened. Let's go. Naruto said as he charged at Gara without the go ahead from Hayate. 
Fine, the man muttered. The sand crept out of the gourd as Naruto tried punching Gara. It blocked the punch as Naruto leapt to the side and tried kicking which it blocked. Is that all? Gara asked. You have seen nothing yet. Naruto smirked before Gara was punched into the air. Sure you can. The clone yelled. Tamari eyes bugged out of her head as Konkuro's jaw dropped. He hit Gara. She exclaimed. Perfect defense my ass. Naruto muttered as Gara dropped down but the sand cushioned his fall. Your sand is impressive but it can't deck at pure speed. For example, Naruto charged forward at Gara as he stood back up. The sand tried blocking Naruto. Suddenly Naruto blurred on Gara's left readying a mid-air round kick. Leaf Hurricane. Naruto yelled as he kicked Gara's face nearly snapping his neck. The red-headed boy was sent flying and crashed against the wall. He went so fast not even the sand could keep up. How the hell did he do that? Guy asked with wide eyes. He is as fast as me without my weights. Lee gaped. No, Kakashi said with Sharingan out. Hun, Lee asked. Naruto is as fast as Guy without his weights. Maybe even faster. He is just holding back. Kakashi said as he could barely keep up. Is that all? I'm bored little Shukaku. Naruto mocked. Gara was in pain. No one ever laid a hit on him. He needed to hurry and give his blood to mother. You are strong Namikaze. Gara muttered. Uzumaki. I'm no longer a Namikaze. More like a distant relative. Naruto said shocking Minato and Kashina who was silent the whole time. I don't care what you call yourself. Your blood is mother's. Gara yelled as the sand shot at Naruto. The blonde smirked as he easily dodged the sand tendrils and edged his fist back. As he got closer Naruto punched towards Gara but wasn't even close to the boy. Gara smirked before he felt a strong fist punched his jaw and send him flying deeper into the wall. What the hell happened? Sayuri asked. He wasn't using chakra, Kakashi said. Was that Kumite? But Naruto didn't sign the contract did he? Minato thought as he had seen that technique before. Who is this guy? He is owning Gara. Konkuro gaped. Come on. Get the hell up. Naruto barked. Naruto tensed as the sand snatched his leg and swung him in the air and slammed him against the wall above Minato. Naruto. Kashina called out. Naruto couldn't even speak as the sand smashed him against the ground and threw him away. Naruto. Mito cried. Ha 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 ha. How is that Uzumaki? Gara screamed manancholy as the sand covered the left side his face making to look like a Shukaku Herbert. What is wrong with him? Sayuri asked. He is a Jinchuriki of Shukaku no Aikibi. He is transforming. Reina spoke. Will Naruto be okay? Mito asked. Please that probably didn't even hurt. Naruto-kun has had much worse than that. Naru-kun is just toying with him. Reina said. So you came out to play eh? Naruto asked as he dust himself off. Gara looked in disbelief as Naruto looked unharmed. You're going crazy hun. Well let's see who is the craziest. Naruto grinned crazily making Minato and Kashina shiver. Oh no. Reina muttered. What? Sayuri asked. He's gonna cut loose. Gara is a dead man. Reina said getting looks from Team 7. Rika watched with an impassive face as Naruto laughed manically. His hollow mask started to cover the left side of his face making him look even more crazy. Ready. Good. Naruto said in a crazy voice before blurring out of sight. Gara's eyes widened as Naruto appeared in front of him in mid-air with a head back fist. Naruto punched Gara's face making it cave in and sent him flying. As the boy went flying Naruto blurred again as he appeared on Gara's side. With an upward kick Gara was sent into the air. Naruto vanished and reappeared above Gara and kicked his stomach making the boy cough out saliva. While this was happening Naruto was laughing like a maniac. Everyone was shocked at what they were seeing. Was this the silent and broody Naruto they all knew before? Gara crashed against the ground in pain as Naruto appeared by him his foot crushing in his chest. Get up. I'm not done yet. Show me what a demon really is. Come on. Naruto screamed as he kept stomping on Gara's chest pushing the boy into the ground while making a crater. Stop it. Leave Gara alone. Tamari screamed. Naruto ignored her as he kept stomping. Before he knew it he was thrown into the air and smashed into the ceiling. Stop. Gara screamed as he glared back up as Naruto. Trying to stand he was halfway up when Naruto appeared in front of him and kicked his chin making his fly upward. Now I can kick your ass even more. 
Naruto howled before blurring in front of Gara. Naruto snatched his neck and flew down to the ground crashing. Dust flew everywhere as it faded everyone watched as Naruto was laughing crazily while repeatedly caving in Gara's face. Naruto stop you win, Hayate said but Naruto ignored him and kept punching him. Minato shook from his shock and appeared in front of Naruto and was about to pull him away when Naruto batted his hand away and glared at Minato. The Hokage froze in shock as Naruto's mask now covered his face. I would step away if I were you Hokage. Naruto rasped out but was thrown against the wall by Reina. Snap out of it, she yelled as she punched Naruto's mask. It shattered in small bits. Ray chan what happened? Naruto asked in confusion. Reina had tears in her eyes she hugged Naruto. Baka, you said let loose not cut loose. You nearly transformed, she said. I did, I don't remember anything after getting slammed into that wall. Naruto muttered. Naruto. Minato called getting a raised eyebrow from the boy. Can I help you? Naruto asked. What was that? Minato wondered with narrowed eyes. H.N. Naruto grunted as he stood and looked around the damage. Whistling. Naruto said, wow. Must have been some fight. Reina scoffed. More like one-sided. You beat that Gara kid to the ground. Literally. She pointed. Naruto looked to see a crater and within it was a bloody and knocked out Gara. Well I guess I won hun. Naruto said sheepishly getting sweat drops from his wife Enrika. Someone get a medic and take Gara away. Let's continue the fights. Minato said while glancing at Naruto who walked back up to his spot and sat against the wall. What was that? Sayuri asked standing in front of Naruto. Hum, that was my hollow mask. I sorta didn't have control. Naruto said sheepishly. Ya think. Sayuri shouted. Next match Sayuri Uchiha versus Zaku Abumi. Hayate said. Sayuri sighed as she left but not before Naruto pulled her down and kissed her cheek making her blush harder than Mito did. Good luck, he smiled. I don't need luck. Sayuri waved him off before jumping off and landed where Gara was. Wow he really did some damage. Sayuri observed before turning to Zaku who was smirking at her. So I get to fight an Uchiha hun. Maybe after I win we can go for some lunch. Zaku said. Sorry but there is only one boy I would let take me to lunch. Sayuri glared. Well then I guess I'll have to kick his ass. Zaku smirked. Begin. Hayate said. Air slicer. Zaku yelled shooting air blades at her. Sayuri dodged easily and charged for Zaku who kept shooting air at her. You're weak. Sayuri growled as she fixed her stance and kicked his chin. Yash. Sayuri show your youth. Guy yelled. Yeah. Lee cheered with flames in his eyes. Sayuri sweat dropped as she appeared behind Zaku. Since I can't do the primary lotus like Lee and Guy Sensei I'll do my own version. She said as she started punching and kicking. Zaku blocked everyone while having a smirk. Is that it? Weak. Zaku taunted before grunted in pain as Sayuri punched his arm. Ow you. Zaku yelled before Sayuri kicked him down to crash against the ground. Sayuri roared as she came down with a kick to Zaku's stomach. Lion's barrage. She yelled out. Zaku coughed up blood as his eyes lost focused and passed out. Winner Sayuri Uchiha. Hayate declared. Sayuri smirked as she leaned down to his ear. Oh and the person who would take me out is no one other than Naruto Uzumaki. See if you can kick his ass. Sayuri whispered making Zaku tense. She walked away as the medics took Zaku away. Once she was next to her team Kakashi I smiled at her which she returned with a smirk. Mito grinned while Sai was impassive. Next up is Reina Uzumaki versus Rock Lee. Hayate informed. Reina nodded and left with Naruto smirking behind her. Lee roared in glee. Go Lee. Guy yelled. Yeah. Lee yelled as he jumped over the rail and stood in his Goken stance. You're Rock Lee correct? The kid with the impressive Taijutsu? Reina asked getting a nod from the bowl cut boy. Yash. I train under the greatest Taijutsu master in the village. Might Guy. Lee grinned. Reina nodded as she glanced at Hayate. Begin he said. Lee nodded as he blurred above Reina who just looked at him. Leaf Hurricane. He yelled. Reina blocked the kicks with one arm before gripping his leg and throwing him away. Lee flipped in the air and landed safely. That was impressive. This will be a great battle. Lee smirked as he charged once more. 
Reyna dodged the punches he sent at her and gave a round kick to Lee's side making him grunt in pain and go skidding. Lee tried again and jumped in the air before landing on the ground in a crouch. Leaf whirlwind, he yelled. Reyna jumped over him and dodged the barrage of kicks he gave her. Seeing as she was gonna dodge he leapt back. Why are you not fighting back? He asked. I'm not fighting back cause I'm testing you. Reyna said. Testing me? He asked. Yes testing if I want to be like Naru kun and have some fun or end this quick so I can go home. Reyna answered. Well then I won't disappoint you. Lee yelled as he charged her. Reyna blocked his attacks before punching his solar plexus and round kicked his jaw making him crash against a wall. That was fast. Kakashi muttered. Nice hit. Lee grumbled as he picked himself off the ground. Reyna remained impassive. I'm gonna end this. She said before charging at him. Lee snapped his head towards her and jumped over the punch she threw and stood on the shinobi statue's fingers. Take them off Lee. Guy ordered. What, are you sure Guy sensei? Lee asked. Crystal. Guy grinned in a nice guy pose. Lee giggled in glee as he took off his weights. Reyna raised an eyebrow before Lee dropped the weights causing an explosion shocking the genin and surprising Naruto and Reyna. Go Lee. Guy barked with flames in his eyes. Yash sir. Lee yelled in glee before disappearing. Reyna would have been hit if she didn't train with Naruto. So she barely blocked the punch Lee sent at her but she skidded back. Guy was shocked as was everyone else while Naruto smirked. Kakashi noticed the boy and looked at Rika who also had a smirk on her face. Your speed is impressive but, Reyna glared at him before her eyes turned teal and her hair turned golden. Mine is better, she said as her key rose and exploded making Lee fly back. Wonder why she did that? Naruto muttered, because she feels she also must show off since you used your mask. Rika said, but it was an accident. Naruto whined, yes but still, Rika smiled. Everyone was in awe as Reyna was now in her Super Saiyan form. Get ready. Cause this ends now, she said in cold voice. Before Lee knew it she was gone and in front of him, with an uppercut he was gone. Reyna grunted before appearing in front of him once more and kicked him against the ground and flew down and punched Lee's chest breaking four rips and making him cough out blood. As she held her fist there her hair turned back to silver. Sorry Lee. You'll be fine, she said to an unconscious Lee. Winner Reina Uzumaki. Hayate declared. Reina nodded as medics took away Lee. Minato and Kashina stared at Naruto's small team. They needed to find out what was going on with both of them. So we won. Naruto muttered. Yeah but I bet the world tournament against Goku and the others would be more fun. Reina pouted. Nah. I just can't wait for the androids to show up. Then it would be fun, Naruto grinned. Reina sighed and shook her head. Rika giggled at her son's antics. The matches were quite pathetic but after an hour they finished. The winners were currently on the arena as the Hokage congratulated them. Congrats guys. You are the winners of this exam and will go to the finals in a month. Now pick your numbers and we will announce your opponent, Minato said. All the winners picked their numbers and said them out loud as Anko wrote them down. She handed it to Ibiki who read the matches. First match, Mito Namikaze vs Neji Hayuga Second match Shikamaru Nara vs Tamari Subaku Third match Naruto Namikaze vs Reina Uzumaki Fourth match Shino Aburame vs Konkuro no Subaku Fifth match Sayuri Uchiha vs Sai Shimura Naruto and Reina smirked at each other. That would be fun. Mito glared at Neji who looked indifferent. Sayuri glanced at Sai who was also indifferent. Shikamaru sighed a troublesome while Tamari fumed at his attitude. Shino was silent while Konkuro glanced at him wearily. Alright those are the matches. Go to the exam stadium in one month. Use this time to rest and train to counter your opponent. Good luck, dismissed. Naruto and Reina you two stay, Minato ordered. I'll see you two later. Naruto told Mito and Sayuri who nodded and left as Kashina and Rika walked over to them. Rika stood behind her, children, while Kashina stood by Minato. Is there a reason why you need to see my students Hokage? Rika asked. Yes. We are to have a council meeting and they are needed. You won't need to be there. Minato said. She comes where we go. If you don't like it deal with it Hokage. Naruto said getting a frown from him. It's okay. 
You two can handle yourselves right? Rika asked. Of course sensei. Reina nodded. Good. I'll catch you two later. I need to deal with a certain snake. Rika smiled getting wide eyes from Naruto. He looked at her demanding he be told later. She nodded and walked off but not before giving the Hokage and his wife one more glance. Shall we go? I have places to be. Naruto said in his impassive tone. Minato sighed as they all walked off. The whole way was quiet with Kashina giving glances to Naruto who was wearing his impassive face. She gave a glance to Reina who also wore an impassive face then looked forward. So how long have you two been, married? She asked. The two were caught by surprise before Naruto answered. Here, we have been married for about five months. But where we currently live about three years. Naruto said. And where is this place? Minato asked trying to dig out information. Somewhere you can't reach unless I, Rei-chan or Rika-ka-san take you there. Naruto said noticing Kashina wins. I'm guessing you had an Anbu call this meeting before we got here correct? Naruto guessed as he heard some muttering in the other room. Yes, Minato said before walking in. Reina grabbed Naruto's hand and gripped it. Only known to him she had a small fear of being around a council. The council on her planet were ruthless and always wanted her dead because of her tale saying she wasn't normal. But from what Naruto told her this council were made of civilians and weren't that ruthless unless they really wanted you dead, he just said watch out for the three old farts. Why have you called us here Hokage-sama? Danzo asked. I have called the council because Naruto has returned. Minato said getting wild looks from the council. Minato sat down in his seat with Kashina by his side. Naruto and Reina walked in and stood in the middle of the round room. To the side was the civilian council. On the left side of the Hokage were his advisors and on the right were the Shinobi council. And all around behind the council were ninja. And Naruto counted at least ten Anbu in the room. Naruto Namikaze. You have returned. Kaharu said gaining Naruto's cold gaze. She slightly flinched while he stared at her. I prefer you call me Naruto Uzumaki as I changed my heritage. Naruto said getting weird looks from the council. What do you mean Naruto? You are and always be the son of the great Minato Namikaze. A civilian said getting Naruto's glance. Whatever, he muttered. He had no time to argue with an idiot. Let's get back on track. The first question is why did you leave Naruto? Homura asked. I left because I hate it here, Naruto said now staring at Homura. Hate it here? But Konoha is your home. Kaharu said getting Naruto's eye to twitch. My home is Earth. Naruto said. Earth? Is that some kind of backwater village? Danzo asked. Fool. Earth is another planet. Filled with fighter way stronger than this pathetic waste. Naruto said getting angry looks from the council. No one is better than Konoha, Ajanin yelled. Naruto glanced at him. Oh I would concur. You see since I left I trained on earth becoming more powerful than I ever could hear. If I wanted to I could level this village with just a powerful key blast. Naruto said getting confused looks. Impossible. No one could ever destroy Konoha by themselves. You must need a whole army, Kaharu said. Naruto smirked. Okay then I will give you a demonstration. Reina. Naruto called. Yes Naruto? She asked. Transform. Naruto ordered. Yes Naruto. She nodded and turned to a Super Saiyan getting wild looks from the council. That was so much chakra. What is this? How can someone one have so much chakra? Ajanin yelled. It's not chakra it's energy. And that is called a Super Saiyan or SSJ for short. Naruto said with a smirk. How can you achieve this much power? Homura asked still blinded by the light she was emitting. This is incredible. I must have her. To be able become this Super Saiyan thing is a gift from Kami. If I can get her under my control then I would definitely become Hokage. Danzo said as he tried activating his Sharingan. Reina felt a pull on her and tried focusing in on it. After glancing around the room she found the source. Whispering into Naruto's ear he raised an eyebrow. Is there a reason why you're trying to control my wife Danzo? Naruto asked with a glare shocking the man. I have no clue what you're talking about young Naruto. Danzo said trying to play it off. I hate being lied to old man. Naruto glared harder as his ki was rising. Wait did you say wife? Sumei asked. Yes. 
Reina-chan along with Kirikitsune are my wives. Naruto answered shocking the council including his parents. He had two wives, can we meet your second wife? Homura asked, hell number, besides she is on earth. Now I bet some of you are wondering what I did when I left. I trained my ass off, and achieved this. Naruto smirked as he also transformed into a Super Saiyan shocking the hell out of everyone. And I could go a step further than Rei Chan. This is called Super Saiyan 2. Naruto smirked as he concentrated and raised his power. The aura around him grew as his hair turned silver and more spiky. Now the whole room was a bright light and everyone was nearly having a heart attack. Minato now believed their words at the beginning. If they wanted to they could destroy Konoha. He needed to get Naruto back and Reina. They could be very valuable to Konoha. The council were thinking the same thing besides Kashina. Naruto Namikaze we as the council order you to return to the village. Your absence can be erased if you, ha ha ha. Do you honestly think I want to come back to this shithole? Naruto asked cutting off Homura. The only reason you all aren't 10 feet under right now is because Mito and Sayuri still live here. I could have killed you all when I arrived and you wouldn't have known what hit you. Konoha destroyed by some mysterious force. Maybe it was Kami. Naruto grinned evilly. If you don't return calmly then we will have two by force. Danzo warned. Fuck you. Naruto smirked. Root. Anbu. Danzo yelled causing Danzo's root agents and Anbu to corner the two Saiyans. Naruto and Reina stared impassively as Minato and Kashina were to stun to do anything. Naruto seemed to notice this and didn't hold this against them. Let me show you the power of a Saiyan. Naruto said as he started to fly with Reina shocking the hell out everyone even more. Only the Nindam and Sandame Suchikage had the power to fly. Naruto pointed his finger at the Anbu on the ground. Death beam scatter. Naruto said as a black beam shot out of his finger but then multiple split from the one and shot through each and everyone's hearts killing them all. And you. Naruto glared at Danzo. No one tries to control my loved ones and play it off like it's nothing. Naruto said as he powered a key blast and shot it at Danzo killing the man and sent him crashing through the building. Know this Konoha. I hold the power to destroy the village. It's your own fault that you let me slip. But I am grateful that you did. Now I have power and happiness from leaving, Naruto said. Everyone was silent as they saw Danzo and the Anbu just die. Minato and Kashina Namikaze, and Fugaku Uchiha. Naruto called getting their attention. Your daughters Mito Namikaze and Sayuri Uchiha will be training with me for the month. I won't let Konoha hold back their power. Tell them I will come for them in two days. They will have to pack their things. Relay that message to them. Later, weaklings. Naruto smirked before he and Reina disappeared. Naruto appeared in front of the Uchiha clan head's house. Why are we here Naruto-kun? Reina asked. I want to see Makoto-chan and Itachi-ni. Naruto said as he walked in. Sayuri is that you? Makoto asked walking to the door to gasp. Hey Miko-ka-san. Naruto grinned. Baka. She yelled as she started to squeeze the life out of him. Miko-chan, can't breathe. Naruto gasped out. Makoto pulled away and smiled at him. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, I'm just so happy to see you. Where have you been, and why did you leave without saying goodbye? Makoto glared. Sorry Miko-chan. I meant to to say goodbye but Mito and Sayuri were already trailing me down. Anyway where is Itachi-ni? Naruto asked looking around. He is out on a long-term mission. He should be back when the finals start. Who is this? She asked looking at Reina. Oh this is Reina, she is my wife. Naruto grinned making Reina blush a bit while Makoto glared. How come I wasn't invited to the wedding? She asked. But Miko-chan we didn't have a wedding, Rei-chan isn't really into that kind of stuff. Plus when I proposed to her we were in middle of battle. Naruto said. Oh, well hello Reina, I am Makoto Uchiha. Makoto bowed while Reina bowed also. Hello. Naruto-kun tells a lot about you. Reina smiled. Good things I hope. Makoto smiled overly sweet which made Naruto step back a bit with a sheepish expression. Of course Miko-chan. Naruto said. He tells the truth. He told me how you were his mother figure when Kashina wasn't. Reina said. Makoto nodded. So how was the exams? I'm guessing you took them, she said. Yup. 
It was insanely easy. Sayuri and Mito passed easily also. By the way I'm taking Mito and Sayuri away for the month. I'm gonna train them, Naruto informed. Okay. Where are you taking her? Makoto wondered. Earth. It's my new home. Another planet similar to this planet but much better. Naruto smiled. Makoto nodded with a smile. I can tell you're happy since you left. Makoto said getting a nod from Naruto. Yes. In fact one day I'm gonna bring you to Earth so you can see it. Anyway I must go Kaosan. But I'll visit you soon. Naruto kissed her cheek and gave her one more hug before using instant transmission to go back to Earth. Naruto and Reina appeared by Goku's house to see a worried Chi Chi. Chi Chi what's wrong? Reina asked. Gohan and Goku left to go fight someone named Cooler. I'm worried about them, she said. Cooler? Who the hell is that? Reina asked. Doesn't matter we need to see if they need help. Naruto said as he and Reina blasted off. As they were flying Naruto stopped as he saw Goku using a Kamehameha against a big ass looking son he could tell his friend was losing so he and Reina used instant transmission to appear behind him. Naruto, Reina, Goku said with gritted teeth. Hey buddy, Kami, Naruto started as he transformed into Super Saiyan 2. Hami, Reina continued as she was also Super Saiyan. Ha! The two yelled as Naruto fired a Super Kamehameha. The two ray beams merged with the first making it bigger and push back the sunblast. What is this? More Saiyans? No, I am cooler, I will not lose, cooler yelled as his attack was being pushed back towards him. He screamed in pain as it engulfed him and shot him into space. As soon as he was gone Goku transformed back to normal as he fell down to his knees, thanks guys that was tough, he ed. No problem, I'm just happy we got here in time. Naruto said as he and Reina reverted back to normal. Where is Gohan? Reina asked. He should be with Ikarouse. He and Piccolo tried their best in fighting off his henchmen but they were no match for Cooler. I was barely a match, Goku said. Naruto nodded. This just means we need to train harder. Reina smiled. Goku laughed with a nod before passing out. I'll take him home. You go find Gohan. Naruto ordered picking up his friend. Reina nodded as she flew off to find her, little brother, Naruto flew off towards Goku's house and ran into Chi Chi. Is he okay? And where is Gohan? She asked. He's fine. Reina went to go find Gohan they should be back soon. Naruto said getting a nod from Chi Chi. Naruto laid Goku down and headed home. He cursed as he flew home. If strong opponents like Cooler showed up out of nowhere then they would need to train harder. He just hoped these next five months on Earth would be uneventful. Sighing to himself he made his way home to see his first wife. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.